welcome to a very special event brought to you by Sonar Sport. I hope you're all enjoying Coronation Weekend, but it's time to find out who's going to be king and queen of the court, as it is the 2023 Rebound All-Stars. All the best men and women from Division One of England Basketball are here to ready to showcase their skills. At the Solon Sports Complex in Southampton, it's getting busy in what is going to be a sellout. The players have been arriving from all over the country, as far as Newcastle and Manchester, but for some All-Stars, it's a chance to go to work on their home court, like this year's most valuable player, Faye and Dean. Coaches, captains and players all put rivalries to one side today as they're ready to go and put on a show. The teams have been drafted together by the captains and nominated players for the skills and are ready to get this crowd going. We're going to be spoiled for content all afternoon. So strap in, it's going to be a spectacle. First up at 1.30, we are going to be starting with the women's skills contest, which will be a test of their dribbling, speed and shooting. At 2.30, we start the three-point contest, the men and women going against each other in a test of their long shot. At 3.30, the women's games kicked off. Team Shabri versus Team Cleary. At 5, we move on to the men's dunk contest, a stage of power and skill by some magnificent athletes. Finally, at six, we finish off with the men's game, Team Whelan versus Team Johnson. Well, hello and welcome to Rebound All-Stars 2023. My name is Kim McIntosh, here with Perrin Phillips at the Solon University Sports Complex, where very shortly we are going to have all of the best players from the NBL First Division across both the men's and women's leagues here in Southampton, England. Perrin, how excited are you today and how are you doing as well? Yeah, good, thank you. It's going to be pretty awesome. The crowd's starting to fill up and we've got some magnificent players here and they're going to really put on a good event today. It's going to be a great afternoon going on into the evening. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned right there, you know, the crowd is already getting pretty loud. I think they've had some, you know, people out on the uh, court just now as well, getting ready for the skills contest, which is going to be happening very shortly with the NBL women's players. Uh, which players are you looking forward to seeing in the women's all-star game in general today? I think it's a no-brainer. You're going to start off with Faye and Dean. She's the league MVP, playoff final MVP. She was champions with the Solent Kestrels this year for the women's. She's been incredible all season long. She's got really put her foot wrong, incredibly efficient, a great point scorer, and the best assister in the league. She, she passes the ball around like no other. So she's going to be the one to watch, and she's going to make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And we've just seen uh, Ben Stanley, the coach uh, of one of the uh, women's teams as well, and also the men's team walk uh, behind us. And yeah, he's going to be a big factor for Faye and Dean and Megan Dorney, uh, who, you know, both his players at Soden. I mean, we could spend all day, you know, talking about Faye and Dean's accolades this season, couldn't we? You know, team of the year, you know, young player of the year. Uh, you know, you know, so much going on. Finals MVP, as I think you quite rightly mentioned. So, yeah, it's pretty good today. A yeah. lot of great players. Yeah, it's going to be, it's gonna be a real, real great test to see what goes on because a lot of these players haven't actually played together they're, some of them are big rivals so but they've all got to come together we got for the game later on with the women we got one team which has a few Kestrels players and they've got Ben Stanley their coach coaching them and on the other team we got some of the best shooters in the league Olivia Forster she's second in the league to shoot in. she's on the other team I think, I think the I think Shabri's team has the three best shooters in the league for the women. So they can put up points. It's just going to be see whether they can dish the ball out to get the points. Because if you've got all the best shooters, you're still going to have someone to give them the ball to get there. So it's going to be interesting to see how that one works out. Yeah, and you, and you just mentioned Olivia Forster as well. Olivia Forster recently turned 18. On her 18th birthday, put up 30 points in the under-18 final for Ipswich. So she's going to be feeling good. She's going to be, she's going to be hot coming into this game. Yeah, she's going to be on fire. Oh, yeah. 100%. But there's amazing talent out here, and one of the best things is it's all young talent. Like, a 
lot of these women, they are young stars and it's looking really good for women's basketball. And an event like this, it just showcases how good they really are and they get to show out in a minute their skills and it's going to be good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so many players can be feeling good. Like I mentioned, Olivia Forster coming off that under-18 final to win. Then we got, uh, as, as you mentioned, the Sterling Kestrels uh, women coming off of a big win in the NBL. Of course, they won the regular season title and as well as uh, the playoff final title, uh, uh, title. Yeah. So you know, a lot of these players are going to be coming into this game feeling really good. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of rivalries. As much as you know, this is an exhibition game. It's a bit of fun. We've got a contest and everything. But they're going to come here and they're going to want to show off their skills against the best players, aren't they? Yeah. These guys are athletes. They're competitors. They're not just going to go and settle to just have a bit of fun. They're going to go out and want to show that they're the best because they have a chance right now to show that they're the best to the whole league. The whole league's watching. The whole league is here. So they want to go out and say, hey, look, I'm the best. And Faye and Dean, she's the, an ultimate competitor. She's going to really want to go and do that. She's going to want to go and prove like that I am the MVP of this league. I'm going to go out and show you all today why I'm the MVP. And I expect her to go do that. And then as well as that, um, another team worth mentioning, the London Lions uh, seconds, you know, Barton Abbey Lions. They've got three players in this, uh, in this All-Star game today, in the women's All-Star game. And one of those is uh, Fat Martin Jenner, who is going to be heading over to the United States later this year to play, I think, Division One basketball at St. Peter's University. So it's a huge occasion to really show off all of the great talent in Britain. Oh, 100%, yeah, she's an incredible player. She led the league, I think, in points, average per game. So there's incredible players all across the pitch. She's one of them. There's so, you could almost just go and name every single player out of this list and just say how good each one of them are. Because that's the great thing about this. Because we are at the All-Stars event. Everyone here is a star and they are all incredible players and it's what they do and it's what they're great at. Absolutely, and for that reason, I really think that we're going to see, you know, a lot of a lot of well, great skin, obviously, but maybe a little bit of tension on the court. I think maybe they're going to get a bit competitive. What do you think? Maybe, yeah. I think they'll they'll, make, they'll get competitive, but and hopefully, none of these guys should almost feel any pressure because this is fair. The season isn't on the line. The season's done and all that. So hopefully they'll feel no pressure, and with that. They may play even better. They may be the best game that they could put out. So hopefully that's the case and we'll see what goes on. We will see what goes on. And then later on today, we'll just take a little bit of a look right now at the men's all-star game as well. Um, which players are you looking at there and you know who do you, which team do you think might have the edge? It's really tough. I think the teams are quite evenly split. Um, we, I think Team Whelan, they look strong. I, I think Whelan's team, his, his teammate is Bardo Kramer. Um, is it Amazon? He's is at Amazon, isn't he? So they, I think he dropped out Johnson. Um, that would have been a great asset for the game later on, those two pairing up. But we'll, we'll see. I think the defense is going to be hard to call. It's going to be hard to call. I'm not too sure. Who's going to come out on top of that? It's, yeah. it's going to be tough. Well, my, my money is on Team Johnson, I think. I mean, obviously great players across the board, but, you know, Team Johnson, they've got, what, uh, two players from the Hemel Storm coming off an unbelievable, you know, I think record-tying season, because I think there was another season before where a team won every game. But absolutely fantastic season. Johnson himself, what, three, uh, three MVPs yeah. this season? Looking to add another yeah. one tonight. I, I think we saw in the programme, they're probably favourite him to be the MVP again today. Because, I mean, he's pretty awesome. Hamill Storm unbeaten in the regular season. So, they've quite rightly got quite a few players there. They're all going to be looking pretty good. Absolutely, yeah. And I think, as well as that, not only Hemel Storm players, they've also then got, I think, three Worthing Thunder players. Uh, and a lot uh, among them is Orlan Jackman as well. So, yeah, they've got... You know, they're represented by NBL playoff finalists. You know, I mean, all over the board. Like, that's it. that's going to be that's going to be huge for them, I think. Yeah, 100. Chemistry is going to play a big part because a lot of these players haven't played with each other. So, if, if they're able to team up, 
that adds a huge difference when it comes to the game. And we, I think we will see that come into play. The coaches are going to have a job on their hands to go, oh, do we get some game time to everyone or are we going to go and go out and win? I think we're going to see how competitive these guys are and it's going to be great to see. Yeah, absolutely. And like you say, you know, a lot of them haven't played together, you know, at the same time. But that's kind of why they're here because these are the people the, the, you know, the players we're going to see today in both the men's and women's game, they're the players that turn up in big games. And, you know, this is a big game, very star-studded, all the best players only, you know? Yeah, 100%, 100%. It's, it's all the big players, it's all right, all. And you can see, I think they are start pulling the out and getting ready for all the skills contest. So, the women are going to go in a minute, we'll just wait to see how, how close we are. But, yeah, it's going to be... It's going to be all, it's going to be great to see because we've got all the best players in the league. Yeah. Like I said, I said it, we said in the intro, we've got players from Newcastle, Manchester, they're from all over the country. Yeah, the whole country's so, represented today. Yeah. So, you know, if you're coming down from Newcastle, you don't want that big drive and then not put on a good show for everyone. You want to come down and go, oh yeah. On the best here. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, didn't come, they didn't come all this way just to mess about, have a bit of fun. No. They, they want to win today. They want to get that MVP. They want to go home, you know, with yeah. a, a little bit of hardware as well, you know. 100%, and, yeah. Yeah. 100%. And I know the fans, we can hear them getting a bit loud as well. There's music in here, obviously. Really great atmosphere today. And of course, Solon University, uh, the, sorry, Solon Kestrels, who play here at the Solon University Sports Complex, of course, did win. The, uh, you know, award for the women's uh, best game day experience in the women's division, and I think that's being put on show today. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of great fans here representing. Oh yeah, and it's the Kestrels that have done a great job of hosting this event. There's full credit to Southern University for that as well, and the crowd's showing up. It's getting busier as we've seen. Yeah, it's starting to fill up. And, uh, I think we did hear there's only, there was only a couple of tickets left on pre-order, them, so it's, it's pretty sold out in here. And the crowd's not going to be disappointed. No, definitely yeah, but, not. Yeah. Not with all these names, not with yeah, all these names. Yeah, taking the we today. kick off at half one, and the final game isn't until six, so it'll be a big afternoon, and I don't think we're, gonna, we're not going to get bored at all. Well, a long day, but it's very much worth it. Yeah, 100%. But it's just, just waiting to see how long it's going to be taking because we do want to get this we do want to get this going I can see Jerry's over there with the mic getting ready yeah it's getting a bit real now it's getting a bit real yeah 100% 100% and these players That's will be raring to go they've been warming up all day yeah. but now the music is coming down so Jerry is definitely get, getting ready to come on okay everybody Contest for amazingly talented players from WNBL Division 1 featuring this afternoon in the first matchup from Barking Abbey, we've got Rouché Walton! And from the Worcester Wolves, Carolina Marquez! Okay, have we got a hooter or something to start them off? Have we got a buzzer or something? No? Okay, I'll just say go. Right. That wasn't it. Okay. Okay, so it's, a, it's, it's okay, so here we go. Everybody knows. the walls. And how this goes is they will go round ah, the uh, cones and pass it to the hoop. They get three attempts each. And Rache Walton 
will then go for the layup. She missed her three attempts, so she goes straight for the layup. And now straight away, will go round. I think she missed exactly what she was meant to do. Go round the cones. There you go, round the cones. And now she'll go for three, as will Marquez, who did the same. And Carolina Marquez hits the three at the first attempt. And she dances her way into the final. I thought you had him. I didn't understand the drill. Not me neither. So Carolina Marquez beats the challenge of Rache Walton of the BA London Lions. And up next will be the league MVP, Faye Endine of the hometown Solent Kestrels against Alia Al Shabri of the Loughborough Riders. Of course, Alia Al Shabri announcing that she has uh, left the Loughborough Riders, of course, after completing her studies. And both El Shabri and Ending will be mic'd up by our camera crew team, headed by Sonar TV. So Endine and Al Shabri going at it, and they will go straight to and ending straight away the first attempt. And now she'll go round the cones and go for the layup. So Al Shabri trailing here, so she is going to have to make up some ground. Ending now going round the cones, and a three-pointer for Endine is good. She didn't miss at all. Al Shabri is eliminated. So it's Carolina Marquez against Faye Endine in the final. Of course, last year, Taylor Gaffney of the Kestrels won this competition. So Solent going for back-to-back -back victories here in this rebound All-Stars event. Carolina Marquez will be mic'd up as she makes her way back onto the court for the final. And Faye Endine, after her perfect semi-final win over Alia Al Shabri, will head to the floor for the final. Of course, one of many incredible contests here today, including a three-point contest and dunk contest. This skills challenge is sponsored by Kent Baller, who are who have a store out on courtside selling the best sneakers in the game. Of course, a number of players playing today have bought their uh, sneakers from Kent Baller. So here we go, Marquez against Endine. Endine in pink, Marquez in blue. So straight away, and ending this is the first attempt, as does Marquez. So they both get three attempts, they both missed their attempts, and now they're pretty much neck and neck as Endine gets her layup first, and here comes Marquez very close behind. And now the three-point attempt, no good. Marquez hits though, and Carolina Marquez of the Worcester Wolves wins the skills contest sponsored by Kent Baller. Congratulations to Carolina Marquez. And much like she did last season, Alia Al Shabli giving some love to Team Blue. So Carolina Marquez wins this year's skills contest. Congratulations to the Worcester Wolves guard. And it starts off a fantastic day of basketball here at the Solent Sports Complex. You've seen the skills contest 
And of course, the main event of today, the WNBL All-Star Game. And then, of course, the final contest of the day, the Men's All-Star Game. All coming to you live on the Rebound YouTube Basketball Channel. So that ends the Skills Challenge, 2.30. We will have the three-point contest featuring three NBL players and three WNBL players. They are Andre Gale, Seth Hall, and Jordan May. And Sewa San Francisco, Fatmanta Jana, and Liv Forster. And then, of course, it will be the women's all-star game. Then the dunk contest. And then the men's all-star game will be the final event tipping off at 6 p.m tonight the three-point contest starts at 4 30 women's all-star game will tip at 3 30 the dunk contest will follow at five so good afternoon everyone from the solent sports complex john hobbs keeping you company here all day long i will have Annie Scanlon and Christina Karpova for the women's all-star game. And I will have Michael Darlow and Tozan Oyelisi for the men's all-star game at six o'clock tonight. And hopefully for the dunk contest, I'll be joined by Worthing Thunder's Hafiz Abdul as a whole host of stars from the NBL and WNBL here today on the South Coast. It's a beautiful day here in Southampton. The sun is shining and you can just feel the end of the basketball season coming, but this is really, truly the start of the summer season. A near full house here today at Solent Sports Complex.
How did it feel to be part of the challenge? Yeah, I'm really happy. I think it was a good opportunity. It was a good challenge. Uh, I'm happy that I've been paid. She's the MVP of the league, obviously. So I, I'm really happy and I'm enjoying this so far. How did it feel to be a winner, though? It's really good, you know. I think, like, it's a little bit of luck as well. But I think it, it makes me happy to know that I, I'm able to compete at the same level as Faye. Yeah, how did it feel like knowing that, you know, that the whole crowd is written for Faye and everything? Did it add to the nerves or anything like that? A little, was bit, it like... a little bit, but I know I have my people as well. It's less people, but they count as well. So, yeah, I'm really happy. Yeah? yeah. And shooting that first shot. How did that feel? Talk me through that. I waited for her to shoot. I was like, if she bangs it, like, it's, that's it. And then when she shot it, I was like, oh, wait. And, like, <laughs> I had my shot. That was good. <laughs> Awesome, and congratulations again on being one of the winners. Hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Carolina Marquez, an expert three-point shooter, and she used that to win the Skills Challenge, our first contest of this afternoon's festivities here on the... Uh, <laughs> and Ray and um, one of the uh, members of the media having a little uh, rumble there, everything Chris here today. But either way, the festivities here at the Solent Sports Complex have begun. As you see on your screen, the kids shooting around, having some fun. And at the top end there, you see some of the uh, select players from the women's all-star game playing later on, having a quick two-on-two -two at the other side of the court. So the festivities have begun here at Solent Sports Complex. And I must say, before we get to our dunk contest, it was a very, very special week for Sonar TV, as they were recognized for their outstanding media productions here that you see. Of course, they produce, they stream nearly all of the Solent Kestrels home games here at Solent Sports Complex. Their Div 1, Div, well, their WNBL Div 1, their NBL Division 1 and Division 2 teams are normally live streamed here thanks to Sonar TV. And they picked up a directing award and the Sport Award at the Student TV, National Student Television Associations Awards. So congratulations to them. And we have a short clip of their week in pictures. Oh, God. Oh. The pressure's on today. Why, what's happening today? So we're up for an award. For today's game? Yes, for the board cup. So we're kind of making sure everything's... everything's How are we doing, Nasta? Okay, 
the next award is the Sport Award. Now, this award is given to the station with the best coverage of a sporting event. Interesting fact, a Premier League game has nine camera sport typically. Sonar, Trumpet, and they have uh, double digits, I think it's about 10 or 11. In about 45 seconds, um, it's going to be half time. So we've got this 10 minute half time coming up in literally 20 seconds to get up and do the hoop cams and just hope to God that they work. So I hope so. I, I really, I think we've done it to be honest. I don't want to get too confident. No, But no, if we, if we but look at our competition. Yeah, I think what they're producing yeah, we're, compared to what you're producing. Yeah, I think we're, you know we're I mean? ahead, so. And the winner for best sports. Sonar Events. <laughs> This is Sonar's first ever, like, proper NASA. Proper NASA. So, yeah, wow. Thank you very much. All the crew have put in so much work, so well done to all of the crew. You've all truly earned this. Wow. The next award is the Directing Award. Oh, yeah. Now, this is awarded to an individual and a station that showed an outstanding piece of directing in a single production or episode. Now to present this award is the creative director for BBC News. He's a big deal. It's Chris Cook. Hello everyone. And the gold award goes to Sonar Event. No, seriously, I, I wouldn't have done it without everyone over there. To look at where we've come in a year, it's been incredible, and um, I'm shaking, I hate this, but oh my god, um, yeah, no, genuinely thank you to every single person over there, everyone at the Kestrels, um, everyone at the uni, thank you, no. and people are genuinely surprised. That is the best. You're totally clear. We're up there. So there we are. There's some clips of what happened over the past couple of weeks from the, the NASA winning broadcast, and that's what Sonar TV did. It's pretty awesome, it, and we got to be part of it, we got to be the presenters for it as well, and that was pretty awesome. But what we just saw, the skills contest, well, it was what we spoke about before. We said some of these girls are going to deliver, and first time up, well, Bay had an incredible <laughs> semi-final, but couldn't quite put it together in the final. No, not quite, but yeah, semi-final was brilliant. She hit that, uh, uh, the pass to the ring first time and then hit the three-pointer as well. So, I mean, having watched that, I'm very much looking forward to the All-Star game later, uh, just a bit later on. Yeah. That she's still cooking up a bit, of, you know, a bit of action for them as well. 100%, 100%. She just on that semi-final pass straight through the hoop first time, three-pointer first time. That's why she's one of the most efficient players in the, in the league. She did it there again, and then in the final, that was just beaten by Carolina Marquez. And that's just how it is. You've got to put it together every time if you get a win, Carolina. Yeah. Put it together. Okay, Carolina Marquez, first in the league uh, for points per, points per game, isn't she? So, you know, it, sh it should be, uh, should, should have been expected. Yeah, yeah, first, yeah. She's the best three point shooter in the league. Oh, three point shooter, yeah, she's the best three point shooter in the league, right, percentage wise. So, yeah, and, and the time mattered, and she had to put it in. She got it, she took the first victory of the day. Well, when it, when it mattered, she got the ball in and she took the first victory of the day. Yeah, so. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And, you know, she's, she's going to be, you know, maybe she didn't win that, that award, but she'll be looking for the MVP later on, no doubt about it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And we saw as well Al Shabri straight in there congratulating her new teammate for, for today. And that's going to, just stuff like that's going to be so important for today because a lot of these players don't play together, so just being a good teammate and building that chemistry early on and celebrating like that is yeah, going to go a long way, yeah, I think. Saw, uh, you know, we saw El Shabri um, congratulating Marquez on our victory, which was nice to see. You know, obviously, El Shabri got unlucky you know, in the skills contest, but clearly not bitter about it. She's very happy <laughs> for Carolina Marquez. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure it'll make Faye and Dean even more hungrier and... 
Come on, even more next time. Bring the, bring the beast out. Hopefully, we're going to see Faye and Dean at our peak today. Hopefully. See, Brent. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. And we just got some. Oh, we're just hearing some stuff. A couple of the kids they're getting at it right now. They're going in for a signed ball. I'm not sure if we can get any footage of this. Oh, you what though? I saw some of the kids shooting shooting their three pointers just after that skills contest, and I think some of them could probably be uh, playing in the ah, game yeah. as well. Yeah, a lot of these kids definitely young stars. I hope they may be at the yeah. All Stars game in the future. They're <laughs> shooting better than we could shoot, I'll tell you that. Definitely some future ballers in the crowd. So let's see, they're going for some free throws when it gets the signed ball. <laughs> let's see how these kids go. I wouldn't mind a sign ball myself. We'll make sure that put in on the line. Maybe I can take part. Oh! <laughs> one for one for the free throws. Surely not. Surely not both of these kids can make it first time. Surely. Oh, oh he's nice. just missed it. Just missed out. No way. Oh my. Sign the kid up to the All Stars game there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Get him shooting these free throws. Look at him, he's spinning around as well. He's doing tricks. He knows, he knows well, that he's, he's got just, us in the he's bag. He's into the crowd right now. Oh. Off the rim that time. Oh, third shot counts double. There we go. The pressure's on now. No way. Oh, oh, it's a bit oh he's just missed it. Yeah. Okay. All right. But this two, is two from three. That's three not bad. Points. That's not bad yeah. at all. Two from three. That's better than most players in the league. <laughs> no way. He's gonna put it back. Oh, it's tied. No <laughs> Third shot meant double, so now it's tied. It's two. That all. must be a tiebreaker. It is. Let's Sudden listen death. to what's happening. There we go. For the sign ball. Oh, he's oh, hit it. Oh, that's a very good free throw. Oh, wow. There we go. Another great free throw. Oh. These kids are hitting them. Not sure if our commentator John can hear us. John, are you watching those free throws then? We saw some good free throws from the youth. today not just on the court but off the court as well a number of the WNBL players are actually uh, being volunteers for the day as well which is really cool to see and yeah just all part of the fun here at the Solent Sports Complex
So we are back here at the Solent Sports Complex for Rebound All-Stars 2023. And I'm delighted to be joined by London Elite's All-Star forward, I guess, and, um, <laughs> and courtside reporter for today, Ray at the Fury Way. Welcome. And first off, congratulations are in order for promotion from Division 2 to Division 1. Fingers crossed, it all goes through. Obviously, you know, we must say that, that it has to meet Basketball England standards before, you know, it is confirmed, but more or less already there. How has the season gone for you? my basketball I just really wanted to get back into enjoying playing again it just felt awesome to be playing with those guys and doing what we did being unfancied and everything yeah, yeah. you know absolutely and we're here today you know you, even though the British Basketball League season is still a week away from completion yeah. the National League season uh, is over obviously we had the playoff finals a couple of weeks ago in Manchester across all divisions and this all-star event hosted by Chris Hughes of Rebound culminates what has been a fantastic season across all levels. And this all-star event so needed in the British basketball community and it just shows the best of the best in British hoops. Oh of course like like not many opportunities that you get to you know, have some of the best basketballers in Division One in under one roof and competing against each other. Like, look at this place; it's completely packed. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and, and more people are streaming in. It just goes to show the popularity that the popularity that's that's surrounding like English basketball and National Basketball League at the moment. Um, obviously, we wanted to continue. I'm really looking forward to the game as you see the guys warming up. There's a lot of guys I want to see up close and personal because I didn't get to see them last year or anything like that, but. Like, this is just a fantastic atmosphere. I, I, as soon as I walk in, the energy is just completely different. Um, I'm enjoying seeing the kids having a great time. I'm enjoying seeing, you know, some of the some, some people I haven't seen in so long. And, you know, Chris has done a fantastic job putting all of this together. Absolutely. And, you know, we prepare now for the three point contest coming up in just a bit. Andre Gale, Seth Paul, Jordan May, Sale, San Francisco, Fat Manta Jana, and Liv Forster are going to be competing in that. Mm. Who's your eye on? Is it the hometown girl for you, Fat Manta Jana, or are you thinking someone else? I mean, I've, I've known I've known Fat Manta since she didn't know how to shoot and now <laughs> and now I'm seeing her shoot the basketball I'm like well I'm, I'm, I'm very very close to rooting, rooting for the London girl but it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting you know? it's gonna yeah. be really interesting a lot of these guys a lot of, a lot of people you know just flat out shooters and yeah, scouting reports where they say don't leave them open, and now they've got all the time to hit open threes. Well, they don't have be, all the time. Not, not, they've not got all a the minute. time, not all the time, but you know. <laughs> like, they just, have a minute. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they have as many open threes as they can in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Just, they're gonna make more than they miss. <laughs> so it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I think this is what this is what British basketball needs. You know? Absolutely. Just, uh, just watching our best shooters in the league compete against each other, seeing who's the best of the best. You know. Absolutely. And the uh, three-point contest, we must say, will now start not at two thirty. We'll now start at 2.15, that's so due to the skills challenge. I mean, the players on show in the skills challenge were so good and so skillful, it actually ended quicker than what most people were thinking, <laughs> the planners were thinking. Of course, uh, Carolina Marquez of the Worcester Wolves getting the job done, beating Faye Enddean in the final. Alia al Shabri and Rache Walton were the other contestants, but four very skillful WNBL stars there, getting the job done in, in record time. <laughs> <laughs> record time indeed. You know, I, I mean, I was I was thinking Faye and Dean, you know, home court advantage yeah. and, you know, the home crowd on her side and everything would maybe pull it out the bag. But shout out to Carolina. She did really, 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 really well, you know, held her own, kept her composure. You know, talking to her afterwards, the first thing she said to me was, I was so scared. <laughs> you know, um, taking that first shot, she said her legs were shaking. She didn't want to airball in front of everybody, but credit to her. She held it down. She did what she needed to do. And yeah. Well Absolute, deserved. Absolutely, a contest that was actually founded and organised um, by former Solent forward Molly Danielson, who of course now is back home in Oregon working for the Portland Trailblazers as well. Hopefully she'll uh, be watching 
at some point. It's probably a bit too late or a bit too early in the, in the day Still for her. I'm, I'm pretty sure over West Coast time. But uh, she was a player who actually organised the whole event last year, the skills contest. And um, of course, last season, Solent Kestrel's guard Taylor Gaffney won it then. And uh, almost a double, you know, back to back wins for Solent. But unfortunately, Faye Indy coming just short. But what a season! Faye Endine yeah. has had MVP, yeah. um, not just in the league, but in the playoff final. Yeah. What a performance she put together yeah. against Cola. And she highlights a phenomenal plethora of talent in the WNBL All-Star Game coming on later on today. Yes, indeed. I mean, um, Faye, Faye is a brilliant basketball player. Um, even as someone that, you know, didn't really know too much about the women's game a couple of years ago, seeing what she did last year, seeing how she's grown this year, MVP. Um, she's one of my favorite basketball players in the WNBL to watch. Um, even players like Rocky, um, Rochelle Davis, is like seeing what she's done at Bren and just, um, and Helen, Helen trailing from uh, Thames Valley, just seeing how they've just, you know, rounded themselves together for the season. I've known the two of them for years, so it's just nice to see you know, see, obviously I'm biased, you know, London guys do well <laughs> and everything like that, but even players like um, Al Sabrawi, like, I really love watching her, her watching yeah. her excitement, she plays basketball with a smile on her face, and it's just beautiful to watch, it's beautiful to see, so I'm really looking forward to it, I'm really looking forward to the game, and obviously Fatmata's just a mutant of a basketball player as well. Absolutely. She's and something different. One final uh, thing, we'll talk about the men's game in just a second, but one thing, uh, there was a last minute alteration to the lineups today, as Cole Iberia Berica, who had such an incredible game in the uh, playoff final a couple of weeks ago against Solent, 32.6 rebounds. She has uh, had to pull out due to a last-minute injury, so Anna Neverson of the Kestrels will be taking her place today. So Anna, it was her final game in the country in Manchester, but uh, that's been put off. She's still here today, and she will be competing in her final game uh, before she heads to the University of Alaska in the rebound all-star game and just finally before you head back down courtside to hopefully grab the winner of the three-point contest yes the men's all-star game what a game that will be oh my god yes and indeed yeah that's one that you're most looking forward yeah. to and yeah. an early preview for you to see who you'll be playing against maybe next season in Div yeah. one yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, you know, a lot of the familiar names, you know, Victor Lorerin, Josh Kademi, uh, Raheem's going to be around, Reese is going to be around, Jordan May, Jordan Wheeler, just guys that, you know, deserve to be in. Seeing, you know, Taylor Johnson again close up after playing against him last year, it's going to be fun to see what, what, what he's, you know, he's got a score to settle with this thing. Yeah. He, wants to, he wants a clean sweep of accolades. He wants to be on the winning, the winning All-Star team. He wants to be MVP. It's just what he's about. Um, you know, players like Ronald Blaine, here it's just nice to see like the best of the best you know Elias is Elias, Elias is out down there warming up with everybody and um, it's just nice to see everybody her feast is going to be around it's just it's just a great celebration Absolutely, of British yeah. basketball you know of National League and it's just fun to be a part of you know hopefully Hafiz Abdul will be joining us for what the dunk contest uh, a bit later on but what's really cool is pretty much all the men's team here supporting the uh, event from the very start. Taylor Johnson has been here pretty much from the very beginning. She wa He wanted to watch the women's game, but he also wanted to check out the, the contests going on as well as we are quite close now to the three-point contest. So, Ray, I'm going to let you head back to yes. your your spot down on the court side, getting the winner of whoever wins this three-point contest. And what an exciting three-point contest we have to come. Pleasure, Ray, as always. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. So we are moments away from the three-point contest here at Solent Sports Complex. As Andre Gale, Seth Hall, Jordan May of Manchester Magic, Nottingham Brooks and Team Newcastle respectively will go up against Sayawa San Francisco of Reading, Fatman Tajana of BA London Lions and Liv Forster of Ipswich. 
of course, this three-point contest as well, sponsored by Kent Baller, who have got a stall right below me here on the commentary box, as many people are actually checking out the, uh, the sneakers on show. I believe there's a few checking out the Kobe 6 Grinch shoes as well. But uh, just a fantastic occasion here at Solent Sports Complex. And t-shirt supplies. As we get set for the three-point contest in just a moment. Of course, for this contest, the male players in this uh, competition will be using the size 7 Wilson balls as per, and the women will be using their size 6 basketballs. It's good to see an intergender contest here at the Rebound All-Stars Classic. Of course, last year, Zaire Taylor of the Worthing Thunder won the event in what was his final event as a player before turning to head coach duties with the Worthing Thunder as the players will now be ready to set up. And Liv Forster of Ipswich will be first up, a 26% three-point shooter this past season with Ipswich, of course, recently won the under-18 women's title with the team against Kola on her 18th birthday. So quite the 18th wow, birthday. I don't know, I don't know what my heart's racing. She had her mum and her dad, Sam and Jim, in attendance as well here today. So Liv Forster will have two minutes. And here she goes. This is the first, gets the second to go. Of course, Liv Forster using these size six balls as she misses her first there. She currently has two made three pointers oh, at the moment. Man. Make that three, in fact five, excuse me, as that was oh, the money ball. The last ball is the money ball. And that is worth two points. So she hits one there. She now moves on to six. She has one minute and 20 left, so a lot of time for Liv Forster. She's, as she uh, now takes her time with these next shots, she now moves on to seven. As said, a 26% three-point shooter for the season under Nick Drain and Ipswich Basketball Club. Nick Drain calls her his nuclear weapon. And she has one more shot. This to make it 10, and she doesn't get it to go. Well, she has one more, excuse me. One of the volunteers was in the way. And she misses the money ball, so she ends with eight points. She still had 40 seconds left on the clock. So eight to beat so far. Liv Forster for Ipswich. And Seth Hall from the Nottingham Hoods is up next. Seth Hall, who led the team in points this season, 20 points a game, but actually wasn't second, wasn't even first in uh, three-point percentage for his team. Actually came behind Isaac Thorpe, who hit 50%. Hey. 37 Can I get it on the right side? Three point yeah. shooter for yeah. the season. Seth Hall, as the uh, volunteers just get the size seven balls hey, so onto the rack. The yeah. And volunteers three, getting ready. Two, Seth getting ready. Eight one, to beat here at the two. moment. Set by Liv Forster. Seth Hall makes the first, gets the second, so two or three so far, and Seth Hall is feeling it. Nearly halfway to Liv Forster's total already, Seth Hall. Rattles in that one, he now moves on to four. 
gets it to go. And that's the money ball. So Settle already two behind. Liv Forster gets another one. And he's now tied with Forster at eight. And he still has two more rounds left. Gets it to go. He now moves on to ten. Ah! Well, excuse me, nine. That was the money ball he missed. And now Seth Hall from the wing. Already in the lead with another round to go. An area, though, that he struggles from from deep. He's more of a corner or top three-point shooter, Seth Hall. Has really struggled. Banks in the last money ball of that round and now moves on to the final one. So, so far, Seth Hall is on 12. Make that 13. Gets another one. And that is Seth Hall on 15 points. So, Seth Hall leads the three-point contest with 15 points to Liv Forster's eight. She's already won the skills contest. Can she take home the three-point trophy, Carolina Marquez? And a last-minute addition to the three-point contest. We were told very last minute, in, um, actually, uh, Carolina Marquez <laughs> will take part in this three-point contest. Carolina Marquez, who actually led the WNBL in three-point percentage, 37%, as the volunteers just get the size six balls back okay. on the rack. Carolina Marquez, who led the Worcester Wolves in points at 15 points a game. A last minute replacement. Marquez drains the first straight away. So far, 15 to beat. Set by Seth Hall. Liv Forster had eight. And straight away, Marquez is on two. So now she switches to the wing, gets the first one to go. So she moves on to three. Marquez struggling from there, but makes the money ball, so she moves on to five. And now at the top, a place where a lot of players do feel comfortable with, alongside in the corner. Marquez currently on six points at the moment. Marquez now at the wing again. Two more rounds left for the Worcester Wolves guard, who has already won the skills contest. And gets that one to go. This is the money ball. Gets it to go. She now moves on to 10, just five behind. Seth Hall, who's currently in the lead. Gets another one. Just three left. Nails that. This to take the lead. And agonizingly in and out. So, Carolina Marquez with 13 points. So, so far, Liv Forster of Ipswich has eight. Seth Hall of the Nottingham Hoods, 15. Currently in the lead. And Carolina Marquez with 13 and next up for the Manchester Magic is Andre Gale who of course will be participating in the men's all-star game later on today that will be should be due to tip off at around six o'clock Andre Gale led the Magic in three-point percentage at 33 percent in fact, was the only Magic player to shoot more than 100 three-pointers at 176. So, 
plenty of in-game practice for Andre Gale. Will it be Dre Day here in Solent for Andre Gale? So Gale misses the first and the second. Andre Gale struggling here, zero for three so far, zero for four. This is the money ball, needs that to go and gets it, gets it to go. So Andre Gale off the mark. Two minutes and five rounds of shots, including a money ball, which is worth two points. Gets that one to go, so he now moves on to three. And now Andre Gale starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm. He's on four. Gale makes that one. Andre Gale at the top, he's feeling it. But he's off right with that attempt. So Andre Gale currently on six points. And makes that one and Seth Hall still in the lead with 15. 15 is the score to beat. Gale now moves on to nine. Gets another one. Gale feeling it at the wing, gets it to go. He now moves on to 12 to pass Carolina Marquez. Struggling though in his final round. Gets that one, this to tie. Well, he's tied Carolina Marquez, this to pass. No, he doesn't. So Andre Gale. Finishes on 13. So Gale and Marquez tied at 13. Seth Hall still the man to beat with 15. Liv Forster, who went first, got eight. And Fat Manta Jana. Now will be up next, led the league in scoring at just under 23 points a game this season. Of course, will be moving on following this to St. Peter's University, where of course, Jen Leadham is the head coach and former London Lions star, Joe Leadham Warner is the assistant coach there. So Fat Manta Jana, of the Barking Abbey London Lions. A 26% three-point shooter for the season, but so far struggling, needs this one to go and gets it. So Fat Man to Janna off the board and has two points. Gets that one to go. And now Janna's in a, in a groove, gets another one, three in a row. Make that four in a row. Gets the money ball. She now moves on to seven. Big round there for Fatmanta Jana. Struggling from the top, though, is the London Lions star. And Fatmanta Jana, who has said 26% three point shooter for the season, gets that to go. 27 out of 105 attempts this season as she now moves on to 10. Still has 50 seconds left. So all the time in the world really. Gets that one, she now moves on to 12. A chance to tie Marquez. The money ball, all the time in the world, gets it to go. So Fat Manta Jana has 14 points, so she now moves into second place behind Nottingham Hood's Seth Hall. So Fat Manta Jana now leads all the women. Another latecomer to this lineup. <laughs> oh, 
As now Dremel Martin gets his mic set up. So Martin of the hometown Solent Kestrels misses the first. It was a very smooth release, but at the moment it's not doing him any favours. He hasn't hit one just yet. Here comes the money ball to get off the mark. So Martin's still looking for his first three-pointer. Struggling at the moment, gets that one to go. So he's off the mark. The score to beat right now is 15, set by Nottingham Hood's set ball. Martin currently on four points. Rattles in that one at the top. Come on, baby. Let's go. And gets that one to go as well. So Martin now on eight points. Rattles in. I need that. The I first need attempt. That. Now he moves on to Here ten. There we go. Just long on that penultimate attempt, gets the money ball, so he moves on to 12. Chance to tie Carolina Marquez, which he does, and now to pass Fat Man to Jano, which he does. And he ties Seth Hall, this to take the lead. In and out. The money ball with 30 seconds left, gets it. Now in the lead with 17 points. So Seth Hall of the Nottingham Hoods has been dethroned. Okay, competition heated up now, shooting seven from the Reading Rockets. So, San and now Francisco. representing the Reading Rockets, Iowa San Francisco, 30% from deep this season for the Rockets. Made the top 10 overall, as the balls now just quickly get switched over to size six. So Tyler Martin has 17 points and has set the bar in this three-point contest. Seth Hall, the previous leader on 15, sits in second. Fat Mantajana in third with 14, Carolina Marquez 13, and Liv Forster with eight. So at San Francisco for the Rockets. This is her first, and it's long on the second. As said, a 30% three point shooter this season. Gets that money ball to go, and that's a big shot. San Francisco, who averaged 12 points for the Rockets this season, had 13 points, four assists in the National Cup final defeat to Thames Valley back in January in Manchester. An absolute warrior of a player, the type of player that every coach loves to have on their roster gets all the dirty work done but can shoot the ball as well San Francisco and she currently is on seven points 17 is the score to beat San Francisco makes the money ball so she now moves on to nine last two racks for San Francisco currently on nine points still got 48 seconds left out of the two minutes. Gets that one, so she now moves into double figures. And short with her money ball attempt. So last rack for Sayo San Francisco in the corner. Gets one to go there. She now moves on to 11. Make that 12. Still got 20 seconds left, gets that one to go. She moves on to 13, make that 15. So Sayoa San Francisco is tied with Seth Hall on 15. She now moves into joint second place. In 
the three-point shootout from Newcastle, Jordan so now May. Jordan May from Team Newcastle is up next. So Jordan May averaging 21 points a game, a near 40% three-point shooter for the season. So, so far, Kyron Martin leads everyone with 17. So far, Jordan May on fire straight away with six. Gets the money ball to go. Looking to beat Kyron Martins. There it is. 17 point haul. Oh, I got time, I got time. May currently on eight points. Make that nine. Now he's on 10. Jordan May feeling it now. On to 12 bit, in the bit, penultimate bit. rack. Banks in the first. He's banking them in. He's on 14. Kyron Martin on 17 is the player to beat. Gets it to go. He's one behind Kyron Martin. Gets it to go, he's now tied with Martin. Gets it to go, he's now in the lead. The money ball. Gets it to go, 21 for Jordan May. So Jordan May and Kyron Martin will be in the final. Liv Forster's gonna get another go. And Liv Forster is... <laughs> Just been told by the PA announcer that half of the balls used in Liv Forster's three-point attempt were actually size sevens. So Liv Forster is going to go again. So far, 21 is the score to beat from Jordan May. Caron Martin had 17. He is in second place. So Liv Forster will go again. She went first in the uh, first round, had eight points. She makes her first there. Liv Forster going again as half of the, uh, the rack was size seven balls. So Liv Forster on two at the moment. Looking to beat Jordan Mays, 21 points in second place, Kyron Martin with 17. And Liv Forster currently on six points. Makes that one now, the money ball for nine, gets it to go. So Liv Forster on nine points at the moment has now bettered her previous score of eight. Oh. Liv Forster a 26% three-point shooter for the season. Still has 45 seconds left, so has a lot of time. She's currently on nine. Gets that one, so she moves on to double digits. And the money ball for Liv Forster is good, so she ends on 13 well, points. So Jordan May is the player to beat with 21. And Kyron Martin has 17 in second place for the Kestrels. 
In fact, Liv Forster's score is now 14 points. They were just counting the last one. So 14 points. So the final will be between Silent Kestrels is Chiron Martin, who had 17 points, and Jordan May, who had 21. Jordan May leads everyone at the moment. There's just some debate as to what is going on. So Liv Forster with 14 points, beating her previous score of eight in the first round, but that uh, score was taken away. Half of the balls that were used were size seven balls. So we are now gonna have a shootout between Jordan May and Kyron Martin. I believe there's just still a bit of debate going as Chrissy Carpover has now joined me in the uh, commentary booth. Hello. Hello, Chrissy. And um, there's a bit of debate as to what is going on here in the final round of this three point contest. But uh, great to have you on board and looking forward to the women's all star game. Thank Kick you. tipping off in just a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, oh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> It's an exciting weekend. Absolutely, an exciting day of basketball here at the Solent Sports Complex. And here is Kyron Martin, who was on 17 points, ended up in second place as a last minute replacement. And uh, as you've joined me, uh, Chrissy, a player who knows all about shooting three pointers and, and this competition as well, as you were in it last season. How dare Zaire Taylor win it all, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, our final will be between Kyron Martin and Jordan May. Three, two, one, go! So, Kyron Martin misses the first. He had a slow start in the first round, but got it together and ended with 17, was previous best until Jordan May came to the floor. He now is on five in this final round. Strings another. He's now on seven. Make that eight. Moneyball coming up for 11. Oh, he's on fire. On fire at the moment, but currently on nine points. Now at the top. He's got a beautiful shot. The form is really, just I was going to say, a really good shot release yeah. for Kyron Martin. The form is just amazing. And he's not even jumping. He's not even jumping at the moment, no. These are set shots, and the majority of the players in this section here were actually hitting it like bank shots as well. He now is on 15 points. Kyron he's Martin. On, he's on it now. He's on it. He's got it. Final rack for Martin. Strings one. Gets another. That's his corner. Currently on 19 points. Ooh. So final one for Kyron Martin. So 19 is the score for Jordan May to beat Kyron Martin with 19. So that's a total from his first round to this is a total of 36 points. And now Team Newcastle's Jordan May will come to the floor, who led everyone with 21 points in the first round. And Jordan May, who started hot and kept on going in the first round, finishing up with 21. And I'm also joined in the commentary box by Annie Scanlon, who will be joining us for the women's game alongside Chrissy Carpover and Kyron Martin 
with 36 in total, the player to beat. And Jordan May with 21 has a good chance of catching him, but you never know in these final rounds. No, you don't. I think Jordan in that first round, I was sat down the bottom for it and he couldn't miss. That first rack seems to be his lucky rack. Absolutely, and here he is again. Oh. Has 13 to beat in total. Karen Martin with 36 in his two rounds. For some reason I accidentally called Kyron Tyler earlier. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind. An honest mistake. <laughs> so, so far, Jordan May on 27 altogether. 11 to beat. In this three point contest. And Jordan May, as you said at the top, the corner was his was his spot. And he's cooled down a little bit, but now at the wing where he was banking in his three pointers, and he's doing the same thing here. I think he banked in everyone in the first round. Pretty much. <laughs> and he's doing the same here as well. Banks in another 34 for Jordan May, representing Team Newcastle. This is going to be a close Absolutely, one. a near 40% three-point shooter for the season. This to tie, and he gets it to go for the win. Gets it. Jordan May with the final three-pointer at last, Kyron Martin, and wins the three-point contest sponsored by Kent Baller. He's traveled nearly 300 odd miles to get here and he gets the job done in the three-point contest. Congratulations to Jordan May. And hopefully, Rayat Pafuri will be getting Jordan May very quickly courtside for a chat. So Zaire Taylor won last year in his final playing day before turning to coach and now Jordan May of Team Newcastle gets the job done and congratulations him but congratulations as well to Kyron Martin who came in second place and representing the hometown Solon Kestrels. Yeah, one point, one point between them. <laughs> Just one. So now the focus will now turn to the women's all-star game which will be tipping off, I believe, in under half an hour's time. It was originally scheduled for 3.30, but because of the very quick skills contest, play is just being moved forward a little bit as the women, as Team Pink will uh, is warming up right now, set up by Lindsay Clary, the team captain. And Ray is somewhere <laughs> lost amongst the sea of uh, of the other players that are here today. Can't miss him in his hat. <laughs> I know. That is quite a hat, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we'll get Jordan May in just a bit. But Chrissy, good to have you on board here today for the Women's All-Star Game. And, you know, what an occasion the Rebound All-Star event is becoming now in its second year. You were heavily part of it last year, and you know, it seems to be going from strength to strength, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, it seems like there's loads of more people last time as well. Like, um, the arena's getting packed, so it's nice to see. And um, obviously, like, the new design on the, on the things, and like, just changing a little bit. So it's a good night out. Hopefully, yeah.
So Ray is courtside now with the three-point champion, Jordan May. And Ray, it's all yours. Here with Newcastle's very own Mr. Jordan May. Talk to me, man. How you doing? I'm living life. I'm living life. Happy yeah? to be here. Happy to be here. Winner of the three point contest. Just talk me through what talk me through that final round. You know, the final round, I was sweating on the last shot. You know, I had, had to get three. The money ball came down to the end. But like I was telling the rest of the guys, that's the most open three pointers I shot all year. <laughs> all the coaches know that, all the players know that. I don't get open shots, but today I get open shots. Well, did you have a specific spot or anything? Because that corner three was looking spicy as soon as you started, like. The corner three, but we talked about me and Seth Holmes. We said we were going to bank on the wing. We were doing bank shots only on the wing. So that's yeah, why you, you saw a little bit on You're the a wing. real taker. Yeah. making the wing yeah. though but yeah. whatever works works man if it goes in it goes in right yeah so you know all-star game coming up tell me about what's going what's going out what your, what your plans are uh, all-star game we're gonna shoot just as many threes i promise that we're gonna get up and down we're gonna have a good time uh, yeah everyone's boys out here we all like each other it's a great league i really enjoyed my time out here getting to know everybody so yeah it's gonna be a fun game what about we're gonna see any bank threes from you in the all-star game yeah uh, that or i like pull up from the logo <laughs> one, one or the other but i can't do both and I can't wait to see you, man. Congratulations hey, again, boy. So Jordan May take a bow, three point contest, that was pretty awesome. He got it on the last shot on that double pointer. How good was that? Yeah, I mean, you just really couldn't even script that, could you? You know, it's just absolutely, you know, what, what, what we want to see at an event like this. Oh, yeah. Someone winning a three point contest with the very last one, tying it with the one before that. I mean, yeah, it's just... It's just absolutely brilliant. Oh, I know, yeah. The whole crowd went nuts with having to be. Beat the hometown boy, Kyron Martin. Kyron, he, on his second go, on the last few shots, just hit them all. He really, both players really went well. I think both of them here, they had the highest three-point percentage coming into this out of all the boys here. And both of them proved that. They blew away the competition. Yeah, Kyron Martin, you know, you mentioned him. He's unfortunate to be runner-up because he was really on fire towards the end of that. You know, he was, I mean, he, he couldn't miss almost. You know, he started off, you know, you know, you know I think he missed the I think first four or five. And then after that, straight in, no questions asked. And yeah, really unfortunate to come up a bit short. Yeah, 100%. And the other thing, the girls, the girls weren't too far behind the boys. The boys only just narrowly beat them. So this girls game that's coming up now, they're going to be probably hitting the three-pointers as well. We've got a few balls coming towards us. But I think you've got Olivia Forster, Carolina. They're on the same team, and they were really well in those three-pointers. And I'm sure they're going to be hitting a few more in a minute. Yeah, you know, I've been really especially impressed by Carolina because obviously earlier she won the uh, the skills contest in spectacular fashion and now and now in the in the three point contest I mean yeah she's really showed up as well yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing her trying to attempt those three pointers yeah. uh, in the game later on Fast went to Jenna as well she deserves a mention off to America soon and she did amazing as well all three of them on the same team it's going to be scary they could put up some good points there it could be a big point for that team yeah Absolutely, I don't think you know. I think I don't think you could have made a better selection of players to take part in that three-point contest. I mean, yeah. they were all just on it today. Like, like I say, some of them started off a little bit slowly, but they got there in the end. Yeah, really fantastic stuff to see. Yeah, I think for this girls' competition game, this girls' game that's coming up, when you've got those three long-range shooters that are coming in, three, some of the best shooters in the league, it's going to take a lot to stop them. But on the other side of the court, they are going up against the MVP. Bay and Dean, so it's almost, you know, those three, they've got to go up against the MVP. Who's going to get it? Who, who do you think is going to have this one? Which, which, I mean, which team? Yeah, you mentioned Bay and Dean there, you know, got that home court advantage, like we say, and yeah, the season that she's had. It's tough to see it being someone else. I think Olivia Forster, though, as well, she, she deserves a really big mention because, you know, we mentioned earlier she's, she's going to be feeling good coming off that 30-point game in the under-18 finals. And she comes here today. She had to, 
you know, poor Olivia, she had to retake her, uh, yeah. you know, her, her go because the first time they gave her the wrong balls. Yeah, you were given the, <laughs> you were given the larger, larger size balls, and I mean, even credit to her when she had the larger size balls, she was still hitting them in. So, you know, she's shown that she can put it up against the men. Absolutely, yeah. And and you know, later on, she'll be playing the All-Star game. She will have the correct size balls, <laughs> and I'm sure she's going to be, she's going to be draining a few uh, three pointers yeah. maybe then as well. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how these girls go about it. Are they going to go for the three-pointers, go for the flashy shots, or are they going to be going and just trying to get it in and on the two-pointers? Who knows? But I expect the viewers, they're going to be trying to have a bit of fun out there. Yeah, yeah. They, they, you know, I've, I've seen them walking around, talking to each other, talking amongst themselves, and yeah, they, they're having a really fun time. You know, they're congratulating uh, each other after each of the contests, you know. Even, even the, the, the the ones that are kind of you know not get not having things go their way in the contest, even there they're showing really good sportsmanship. Yeah. Uh, like like you know one of our commentators said uh, earlier on, you know it's just a really great show of, of basketball today and what British basketball, 100%. you know what it what it's developed into. Hundred percent. Yeah, with Jordan and he just wants people in the contest. He said how such a good vibe it is here because it is a great vibe. Everyone's just getting to know each other. Everyone's having fun. And there's no pressure on anyone. Everyone's here just to show off their skills. These guys go to work day in, day out, show off their skills, and they're great at it. And I can't wait to see how this goes. I think we've got about the clock saying 15 minutes until the game goes ahead. So it's going to be interesting to see. There's so much to talk about because all these girls, some of them, we haven't even seen some of them yet. We haven't even seen uh, Cleary take the, take the court yet. She's the captain. She's part of the Red Reading Rockets, second most efficient player in the league. We haven't even seen her come to the court yet. She's going to come out and probably, let's say, boss it about. She's going to choose the, she's the captain. So she was, and she's the captain ahead of Bay and Dean as well. So she's going to be out here and showing why you know, she wants to be a star of that team. Absolutely. And, and someone else that we haven't mentioned, another person with the home court advantage today, Megan Dorney. Obviously, you know, didn't take part in the three-point contest, but I saw her knocking down a lot of three-pointers uh, earlier on in the day. So I think she's going to be really excited to watch as well. Yeah, Amer she's American. Great defender. Gets a lot of rebounds. With, if these girls on the opposite, opposite side of the court are taking so many shots trying to get out the points, she could be crucial in trying to get those rebounds. Because, you know, their three point percentage, you know, it's still, wow, it's amazing. It's under 50%. So if Megan Dorney can get those rebounds, get it up, to, up the other end of the court to her teammate, Bay and Dean, that could prove crucial to get that side victory. Absolutely. And then again, as we mentioned earlier on, some of the, the line, the London Lions, rather, uh, women's players at the event as well. Three in total, two on one team, one on the other, including Vamata Jenner, who we've seen as well, has been knocking down three pointers just now in the, in the contest. So, yeah, they're going to be excited to watch as well. And as you mentioned, yeah, Jenner uh, going over to the States very soon, St. Peter's University. So it's another, you know, as, as I mentioned, you know, it all comes to back to being just a great show of British basketball and showing, you know, what the Brits are all about, as well as some of the Americans sprinkled in between as well. Yeah, and they're all just doing their team warm-ups now. They're all getting together. They're all trying to gel as a team, get that chemistry going. That's really going to help. Yeah. Such fantastic players. They're going to be able to need to gel together pretty soon. Make it work pretty quick. Right. Just see they're all doing laps. It's going to be pretty awesome. So we're still 15 minutes away from going down to the start. The boys are all at the top watching, some of them are in the crowd. I'm sure they're going to be having a good time watching these girls go to work. So we're just going to go... Sorry about that. So I believe that we are going to go to a VT now, but we will be back with you very soon. Oh god, oh, the pressure's on today. Like, what's happening today? So we're up for a minute. Yes, for the board cup, so we're kind of making sure everything's... everything's How are we doing, Nasta?
Okay, the next award is the Sport Award. Now, this award is given to the station with the best coverage of a sporting event. Interesting fact, a Premier League game has nine camera sport typically. Sonar, Trumpet, and they have uh, double digits, I think it's about 10 or 11. In about 45 seconds, um, it's going to be half time. So we've got this 10 minute half time coming up in literally 20 seconds to get up and do the hoop cams and just hope to God that they work. So I hope so. I, I really, I think we've done it to be honest. I don't want to get too confident. No, But no, if we, if we but look at our competition. Yeah. I think and what they're producing. Yeah, we're. Compared to what you're producing. Yeah, I think we're, you know we're I mean? ahead, so. And the winner for best sports. Sonar Events. <laughs> This is Sonar's first ever, like, proper NASA. Proper NASA. So, yeah, wow. Thank you very much. All the crew have put in so much work, so well done to all of the crew. You've all truly earned this. Wow. The next award is the Directing Award. Oh, yeah. Now, this is awarded to an individual and a station that showed an outstanding piece of directing in a single production or episode. Now to present this award is the creative director for BBC News. He's a big deal. It's Chris Cook. Hello everyone. And the gold award goes to Sonar Event. No, seriously, I, I wouldn't have done it without everyone over there. Look at where we've come in a year. It's been incredible, and um, I'm shaking. I hate this, but oh my god. Um, yeah, no, genuinely, thank you to every single person over there, everyone at the Kestrels, um, everyone at the uni. Thank you. No. and people are genuinely surprised. That is the best. You're totally clear. We're off it. There you go. There's some footage of our recent Sonar events trip to the Nasters. But here are the lineups. So, for Team Cleary coach Ben Stanley. You've got Lindsay Cleary, the captain. Faye and Dean, Megan Dorney. Plenty of names on there to put on a show. on the other side of the court. Coaching team Shabri is coach Lauren Milligan from the London Lions. Alia Al Shabri, she'll be captaining ahead of Leah Forster, back to Asajana and Roche Walton. It's a loaded lineup on both sides of the court. Just under 10 minutes to tip off. It's getting exciting. It's getting, a, we're getting a good feel. It's, God, I can't wait for the first game to go. It's, it's, it's yeah, you can really feel it in the air that the game's, you know, about to begin. Everyone's waiting in anticipation. You know, they really just want to get this game going and see, see these, you know, these NBL stars. Um, you know, just doing their thing on the hardwood today and, you know, just balling out. 100%. One person I can't wait, and we haven't mentioned her enough, is Al Shabri from Egypt. She's been injured the last two, the last couple times that the rebound all stars has happened. She gets her chance to captain her in team today. She was an MVP candidate. She's going to go out there and wants to show that she should have been the MVP. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to go see her. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing her as well. You know, as you mentioned, she was supposed to be an all-star captain last year, but unfortunately, yeah, was injured, couldn't take part in the actual game. So she'll be, should have been waiting for this game, you know, twice as long as any other player has been waiting yeah. for this game. And, you know, she'll be really looking forward to it. You know, she's third, third in efficiency in the uh, WNBL. She's, a, she, as you mentioned, an MVP candidate. She was in the team of the year. Yeah. So, yeah, she's really a player to, to watch out for. And yeah, said, yeah. Excited. Great leader from Loughborough. She's been up for it all day. She took part in the skills contest earlier, got beaten by Bay and Dean on the other side, who we should be going up against today, but she's been she's been loving it today. She's been running around energetically, giving her teammates love. So 
she's going to be enjoying it. She's going to go out there and real try and show what she's made of, I think. Yeah, absolutely. You, you mentioned it there. You know, she's really been taking on that leadership role today. We have seen her, you know, showing that sportsmanship and, you know, you know, cheering on her uh, her teammates. And as you mentioned, she did bow out of the uh, earlier skills contest to Bay and Dean. But hey, that's not easy competition with Bay and Dean, so that's nothing on her. Uh, but, you know, I have no doubts about it that she will be coming into this uh, this All-Star game. And, you know, she's going to put things right and she, she's going to well, she's gonna do her thing, she's going to ball out. Yeah, it's going to be good. I think Al Shabri could be a crucial point in almost assisting her teammates. She's going to be that leader and I think she's going to take charge and probably be handing the ball off a lot to the likes of Olivia Forster or perhaps Manta Jenner because they are some of the best shooters in the league and Shabri is a great assister so I think she will almost be that sort of midfield player sitting back offloading the ball about. So I think, I think that may be her role even though she is an incredible shooter herself. I think we, we could see her racking up a lot of assists today. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, again, Al Shabri, uh, her, her biggest performances this season, twice. <laughs> nearly getting taken We're out. We're too nearly. close to the action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it just shows how hard they're playing, how, how hard they're training. Yeah. You know, I can't wait to see it. But I will make sure that I'm stood at a much safer distance when the game begins. Yeah. But as I was saying about Al Shabri, she twice this season posted 25 points in a game. So yeah, yeah. She, she's somebody who turns up to big occasions and she's definitely going to be licking yeah, her lips definitely. at this today. It's going to be interesting to see. I, I do wonder with that team, with so many of the best shooters, are they going to be selfish? Obviously, we get, uh, everyone's going to show, but it's that, it's that team of Shab Shabri is going to be a bit selfish and get for too many shots. And then you can have the likes of Megan Dorney on the other side, get the rebound, fry it up the other end of teammate Bay and Dean. And that's how <laughs> team clear, clearly they're going to win. So, uh, you know, is that going to happen? I'm not sure. Wait to find out. Yeah, we can't be sure, but what we can be sure of is it's going to be entertaining. And hey, I'm not going to complain if they want to start throwing up some three-pointers for long range. So I think we can throw up to our commentator, John. John, I'm not sure if you can hear us. We are about five minutes away from kickoff. I'm not sure if they can hear us. John and the rest of the crew in the commentator box. We've got five minutes to kick off. What are your thoughts ahead? Five minutes to tip off, sorry. What's, what's your thoughts of uh, getting, what's, what's going to well, be happening? I'll tell you one thing, it's going to be an absolutely fantastic spectacle, the second annual women's all-star game here at the Solent Sports Complex team, Al Shabri against Team Clary. And I'm joined by Annie Scanlon and Chrissy Carpover, two all-stars in their own right. Of course, Chrissy Carpover took part here last season and a three-time medal winner this year in Annie Scanlon playing a total of 55 seconds that takes some beating that does but Chrissy we'll start with you first and you know a great great day so far we've you know had the skills challenge we've had the three-point challenge now we move on to the uh, all-star game and the WNBL's finest of course as well as you it, you know, here today. You know, what are your early thoughts going into this contest? You're all about it. Absolutely, and uh, Annie, you know, a few solar players in there as well that you're going to keep your eye on and support as well. So it's safe to say that if Chrissy is Team Pink, obviously, then you're rooting for Al Shabri and Team Blue, no? Well, you say that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was trying my best. <laughs> If she switches on and goes off, I think that's where a big threat will come from for the blue team. And pink just needs to lock her down really early. Absolutely. So starting fives. Team El Shabri going with 
Kat Goldsby, Fat Man Tajana, and of course Elia Al Shabli, who else will be in that starting five? Rochelle Walton and Jess Davis, and Rochelle Davids, Lindsay Clary, Faye Endine, Rian Wallins, and Elan Thrillian will be in the starting five for Team Pink as the introductions get underway. And Team Blue looking for the, their first win of the Rebound All-Stars game. Of course, it was a really close encounter last season. It went to overtime. Chrissy and Team Hulme got the job done. And of course, Katrin Hulme in her final ever appearance as a player. Now, you know, a, a, a fitness fanatic, shall we say, getting the uh, MVP awards with 17 points, 12 boards. But what a game that was and you know, went all the way to overtime and in the final possessions. So Absolutely. I think she's going all in today and it'll be interesting to see the matchup between her and Faye Indy. Definitely, and one of the more energetic personalities, Alia Al Shabli, saying goodbye to Loughborough Riders this season after four years. And not only was she enthusiastic last year, she almost broke the, the chairs here on the commentary <laughs> box during the skills challenge, but she was a very, very uh, hyped up coach as well on the day. Yeah, I think I think on the day she she brings it. She brings that energy, whatever game it is, whether she's playing, coaching, or just spectating. I think Loughborough have made a massive loss there when she does leave this season, um, and it will be hard shoes to fill. Absolutely, as uh, Team Pink, led by Lindsay Clary, will uh, now head to the floor, and so are San Francisco. What a season she's had alongside yourself, Chrissy, and. What a, a National Cup final she had. She's averaged 12 points a game, had 13 points in that uh, National Cup final, but a tremendous season for uh, Sayoa San Francisco. Oh, definitely, like from last season as well. Mm. She was injured quite a lot last yeah. season and the fact that she's like come back and um, kept herself quite healthy and and just smashed it this season. It was, she was probably on everyone's scouting list to stop her and yeah she smashed it she's doing well and um, I look forward to what she's going to do like next year as well so yeah, absolutely it's, it's, she's doing well and of course all the solar players <laughs> on the team pink Faye Endine Megan Dorney being uh, introduced there and it's going to be a very interesting game this one isn't it, it you know it always starts off in a a fun, almost high octane scrimmage, doesn't it? And then it gets a little bit serious, doesn't it? In the uh, in the latter stages, as Elan Trillian, the uh, National Cup final MVP, being introduced, Ben Stanley and Lauren Milligan, the two head coaches, Milligan for Team Blue and Stanley for Team Pink. A near sellout crowd here at the Solent Sports Complex waiting for this women's all star game. And one positive from the women's all star game or from the women's season, the WNBL season, that must be said was the rise in attendances, the rise in engagement for the season. Of course, WNBL Live, more exposure from the club's social media accounts for the women's team, you know, especially with the Reading Rockets and with the Solent Kestrels, and hopefully next season, bigger and better. Yeah, I think, especially at Solent, um, I know the playoff game against Reading was probably the biggest women's Ooh. crowd we've had here this whole season, and credit to Reading because they brought, play like, they brought spectators down as well. But actually, all of our junior girls' programme, they love coming and watching the women's game as people who they aspire to be, and I think that's the same for clubs all over at the minute. Yeah, for sure, and you know, just going on that, Chrissy, with, with Reading Rockets now playing out of Loddon Valley, you know, moving away from River Mead, a much easier venue to get to as well, and, you know, a lot, a lot of improvement with the crowd at Loddon Valley. Obviously, there's an increased attendance there. Oh yeah, definitely. And um, 
the club is doing yeah, we can have their a lot best to try and get it. people to we come play and, really watch and, and I mean, Lindsay is for a coach, um, never played she coaches, me, so her girls are always trying to come in and support, and it's so nice to see, like, they're always there, and they always want to do pictures and, like, sign, sign, like, little notes and something like this. It's always, it's so nice to see the girls, there's a lot of girls coming in for the men's games as well. It's a show, it's it's nice to be there, and I remember, like, our last home game, well, our last, um, season game we played against the Kestrels and I mean it was a show it was great it was so good to be there and like uh, yeah. I think it's yeah, getting better and better and, and they're they're trying to get better even next year and we'll just we'll see what like what other ideas they come up with about like we're trying to get more and more younger players to come and watch for sure yeah absolutely and of Helene, course it was nice for you to actually finally play on the uh, home floor even though it was an All opposition right. team of course you missed out on the league game due to illness okay so Lynn, after you yeah, said no, this that was a shame. Yeah, I <laughs> look forward to that game right. you were there right. yeah i remember that well that was one of our WNBL live games uh, of the season and was told last minute that you uh you had taken ill but was still there in spirit which was good to know and we go to the starting fives again for team al shabri it's cat goldsby fat manta Jana. al shabri starts at five roche walton and jess davis for team cleary in pink rochelle davids of the brent balls lindsay cleary of the rockets faye ending of the kestrels Rian rawlings of angular roskin and elan Thelian of the Thames Valley Cavaliers. Thank you everyone for joining us on the Rebound Basketball channel here on YouTube as we give you exclusive coverage of the Rebound All-Stars event all day here on YouTube from Solent Sports Complex. You are watching the women's All-Star game which is due to tip off any second now. John Hobbs, Annie Scanlon and Chrissy Karpova keeping you company for today, Ray Aquafuri will be on the sidelines checking in as well. As we get set for the second annual All-Star Game. Of course, Team Blue looking for their first All-Star win. And El Shabri has le led the team on both occasions. She was coaching Last season, of course, couldn't play due to injury, but she is on the court for her, technically her first All-Star game here. And uh, Team Blue get the first possession after a bit of a scrap. Here is Goldsby. Goldsby loses the ball. Rollings has it, but Goldsby comes up with it and scores. There's the first field goal. Goldsby's a threat there. She'll she'll turn the ball over, but she, like all of these players out here, they have heart. They'll leave it out there, so she's not going to want to mess that up. And you, we quite we, we spoke about this play, this game being a high Ooh, octane. Nice pass inside to Endine, who scores. We talk about this being a high octane scrimmage match, but with these players, ultra competitive, we might not actually see that. As Clary comes up with it off the steal, and here is Rawlings from Angela Ruskin. Foul has been called as... A way to execute that Michelle first Davis one, ladies. was going nice. to the hoop. Right, we got two points, I'm done. Oh, nice! Davis inside to Endine, and that's Endine's second field goal of the day. She didn't come to, she didn't come to mess around. She's <laughs> come here to play and show everyone why she's the MVP. And she was another it. one. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Goldsby, and there's Davis who misses the short jumper, and here is Rawlings. Cross-court pass to Clary. Ball batted around a bit, and it will stay with Team Pink. So far though, you know, pace of the game is as you'd expect, and both teams just feeling each other out as Rawlings at the top for three, rattles one in, and that's the first three-pointer. Is Al Shabri. Jana a three. Jana strings a three. Back to back threes from both teams. They need to stop her from shooting that three. She's got one now. <laughs> she won't stop. And there she is at the other end with a block. A foul is called. 
I don't think she can believe that one herself. <laughs> a <laughs> foul call? Coach, Coach Milligan to see if it was or not. <laughs> a foul call in the early stages of an all-star game. Who'd have thought it? That's two, actually, as well. Second team foul two for, for Team, team Blue. Blue. <laughs> team Blue, what are you doing to us as Ryan Rawlings goes to the line for the first time today. And Ryan Rawlings, what a season she's had for Angela Ruskin. Of course, big shoes to fill with the departure of... Uh, Catherine Hjorn, but you know, 13 points, four assists, three steals, and led the team in most categories actually this season, Rian Rawlings, as Jenna passes out. Goldsby for three is in and out. I think that's Team Blue, yeah, Team Blue. Early stages of the women's all-star game here at the Rebound All-Stars event. Almost like the unofficial start of the off-season, the summer, this, uh, this event. Of course, we still have a week of the British Basketball League season to go, along with the Women's British Basketball League. Of course, the playoff final will be played at the O2 Arena next Sunday. Thurian misses everything with her mid-range jumper, and here is Rochet Walton. Rache Walton lays it in, and a player who had such an incredible season, and one particular performance that stood out to me was her performance against Cardiff back in February, who you know, 41 points and 11, 11 rebounds. Yeah, she went off in that game. I don't, I don't yeah. think Cardiff quite knew how to stop her. Well, they definitely didn't, but um, <laughs> that's one thing that Coach Milligan will want. Mm. Of course, coached by Milligan is uh, Rache Walton as Fat Manta Jenna will now go to the line and for an all-star event, three team fouls so far. Yeah, in, in two and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And these referees are going to be on it today, I think. Not here to muck about, I'll tell you that right now, as Fat Manta Jenna will go to the foul line. And again, an incredible season for... Fat man to Jana and we'll head to St. Peter's, of course, Jen Leadham and Joe Leadham Warner, the, the two coaches of St. Peter's. So you know, Fat Manta will be in very good hands when she heads over to St. Peter's. Yeah, definitely. It'll be nice to see. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's a Division 1. Division 1 school, yeah. yeah. Division 1 school, so it'll be nice to see her um, balling out there. Absolutely, a former Great Britain junior. Trillian, great link up play with her Rawlings. Beautiful basketball from Team Clary. I enjoy this more because this time they've had a little time with their teams and they get to like play together before they actually play this game. Actually, oh, just yeah, just after the skills challenge, they were actually having a two on two <laughs> while the kids were playing as uh, Rochelle Davids almost went for the layup but instead decided to pass it inside to Al Shabri and Al Shabri will go to the line. Second on and that is two fouls on the National Cup Finals MVP, Elan Trillian, as Liv Forster will check into the game for the first time. And also checking in is Sol Lamange of Cardiff Met Archers. Liv Forster, of course, taking part in the three-point contest earlier on. And on her 18th birthday, 30 points, nine steals, and MVP as Ipswich finally dethroned Cola in the under-18s final. What a game that was. What a birthday to remember. Absolutely. I mean, if it wasn't just their 18th, she yeah. went and got MVP and won, won the championship. Absolutely, and uh, after the, uh, the cup final, Liv's parents, who are here today, Jim and Sam, organized a nice little party for Liv at uh, her dad's rugby ground over in Oldham. Of course, Aww. not too far away from Manchester where the final was held. As Rache Walton misses the layup and El Shabli. There she is with the rebound. Collects that rebound, yeah. Walton a three. And Andre Arasol watching courtside, celebrating that as well. Of course, he'll take part in the men's all-star game due to tip off at six. There might be a, a subject to change coming on that as Bedoya with a fancy pass, but doesn't get anyone but Sol Lamange. And here is El Shabri, stops on the dime. 
looks for Walton, finds her, and nails a three. Team Pink need to stop her. This is what <laughs> she did against Cardiff Met. Absolutely, 16 to 13, and there is Endy. This is her move. She likes her little layup. She sees a slight gap and she's gone. She's taking it. Al Shabri looking to answer. Here is Dorney into the game for the first time for Team Pink. Endine looking to dance on Al Shabri and the ball goes out of bounds and it will go the other way as Al Shabri leads 16 to 15 with 5-12 remaining in the first as Carolina Marquez of the Worcester Wolves and Saruna Goodzer of Ipswich will check into the game. Al Shabri and Kat Goldsby will take a seat. Here is Goodzer. Forster loves the three on the catch and shoot but missed it on that occasion. And Goodzer couldn't respond either and Bedoya with the rebound. Here is Endy. Endine looking for options, finds it in Dorney. Nice cut and one. Oh, that's the Kestrel's link up there. <laughs> and that's what she likes to do, you know. This is this was in our, uh, that, uh, we had to stop that when we played against Kestrel's and this is what she does. She's so smart with her little back door, so it's nice to see her doing it again. And another substitution coming in. Looks like Anna Isabel Anderson coming in. Yeah, she did. Yeah. We got two more subs. And the team pink. Anna Neverson and Sayawa San Francisco come into the game, and obviously a bit of favouritism for Chrissy as San Francisco takes the floor alongside Lindsay Clary. Physical under the basket there, but uh, Goodson misses the short attempt. Here is Dorney. And a two point attempt is no good, but Team Pink come up with it again. San Francisco to Neverson. Inside to Clary, that's easy. And there's your Reading link up. <laughs> so we go from Solent to Reading. <laughs> that's Team Pink for you. <laughs> Marquez, Marquez looking oh, for move. a bit of room, couldn't get it nice. on the follow, Lamorge, and Lamorge couldn't get it either. And here is Bedoya. Bedoya to Neverson. Thought about the three, oh, but she didn't take yeah, that one. decided not to go for it. San Francisco falls to the floor and under the basket, Lamorge comes up with it and Liv Forster can break for Team Blue, the runner. And Liv Forster is long with her runner. Lindsay's just picking up her rebounds. <laughs> Bedoya, what a oh, pass nice. to Dorney! And Janessa Bedoya, probably one of the more underrated point guards in WNBL Division One, showing her skills here as Anna Isabel Anderson of Cola misses the layup. Here is Bedoya again at the foul line. There Neverson, a catch and shoot three, yeah. gets it to go. Nothing bad <laughs> she learned from that first one, not taking it. Yeah, absolutely. Coach Stanley probably shouted her for that one. As Forster misses everything and shares a joke with Neverson, who was defending a 25 to 16 to Team Clary. Well, give it to her again. Neverson. Clary. Inside again to Dorney. Oh. Timeout has been called by Coach Milligan, who has seen enough, and Team Lindsay Clary, Team Pink, is doing the business right now, 27 to 16 to the good. Um, 
Like we said though, Meg, so Meg loves those backdoor cuts. I think you said it on your yeah, wedding scout. That's what you had to try and stop her from hey, doing. They, I know, Team like, Blue haven't quite like recognised that yet. She just hides behind the players and she's always there. So that's literally what was on that scout and she's doing it again. Absolutely. So Lindsay wide open hole, we're coming down. We're not even matched up. Her team getting the job done at the moment. Six points, eight rebounds, three steals last year in this rebound all-star game. And so far has four points. Is you know playing well but right now the, the the team basketball you've got to say is coming from team clary right now because al shabri's uh, team team blue are a bit all over the place yeah i agree i'd say like like we said there's the link ups between the players that play for the same team mm. but you can also see it from like Anna passing into Lindsay in the paint, like they're all looking for each other on Team Pink. I just don't think it's quite there on Team Blue yet. Absolutely, five for 19 from the field so far for Team Al Shabri, shooting 26%. But on the flip side, Team Claria Sublime, 11 of 15 from the field, and they've hit both their three pointers as well for good measure. But it's. All competitive, but all in good spirit in this rebound all-star game, celebrating the best of the WNBL. And delighted to be joined by two winners as well, alongside me and Annie and Chrissy. Had to get that in there. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and me. Anyway, back to the action. Kat Goldsby back into the game, misses the Annie elbow jumper. Her shot though, so I'm surprised she missed that one. Mm. Culminated a role with the Thames Valley Cavaliers with an assistant coach's role as well alongside Coach Banks this season. Shot clock winding down. San Francisco a three at short. And Anna Isabel Anderson bringing it up for Team Al Shabri. Coming Nearly. with speed there. Absolutely. Of course, Jackson Gibbons likes a methodical game from his players, but Anna Isabel Anderson really going for it there as Anna Neverson misses the three from the top. Of course, this will be her final game. We, you know, we spoke about her being, this will be her final game in Manchester at the playoff finals, but drafted here last minute in the absence of Barry Eberica, who is uh, missing due to an 11th hour injury. We sure hope that Eberica is recovering well. What a playoff final she had for Kona, oh. 32.6 rebounds, and you know you had a front row seat to that as well, even though Solon got the job done. Uh, do you know amazing what? performance And we kept from her. saying it, coach, coach kept saying it, he was like, that is a player we have to look out for, that's the player you have to stop. And it's almost like she's a silent player. You don't realize how many points she scores until you look at the scoreboard, because she just, she does the right things. And uh, Kat Goldsby on the steal and the score. And Al Shabri with a much needed basket, and it's now a nine point game. But absolutely, Iberica, what a performance! So unlucky you know, not to get the win for Cola that day. And it just you know, shows a lot of improvement from the uh, season before, where she was only really playing around 10 minutes a game, averaging three or so points, and then growing to 14 points a game this season. I think Lena Marcus just showing that she's a three-point shooter. And the gap is now six points. So Al Shabri has narrowed the gap, but Doya a two, and that's good. Oh. And Goods's pass asking a little too much of Goldsby and the uh, pass nearly running into DJW8, who is providing the entertainment here at Solent Sports Complex. Well, he is wearing a blue jersey, so he wouldn't have minded that, I guess. No. <laughs> Neverson, tough take. move. She likes her trick shots as well. Oh, you should see her when she coaches the kids. <laughs> Every El time we get a break. El Shabri at the other end misses the layup. Saruna Goodser on the follow. It's a ten-point game now. Ten-point game and. Here we go, we see the hustle But Doya, again, yeah, the, hu the competitive nature coming out oh. early on. I'm not sure if it actually will be their ball unless it was the eight second violation. Doesn't... They, they are calling it for Team Clary. Oh. 
Neverson. There we go, there's Neverson's cleverness. Find San Francisco, Ooh. blocked by Goldsby. <laughs> Oh, she didn't like that one. She thought that was clean, but she had a smile on her face as uh, referee Pete Terrell calling the foul. And Megan Dorney will go to the foul line. A good first season for Solent. 14 points, 11 boards in the playoff final win over Kola. And another one of these players, like, like you said with the barrier, Berica, just silently gets the job done. Oh, yeah, she does massively. She's been a, a massive asset to Solent this year. Unfortunately, we, we only have her for one season. She was on a Masters, um, so we do lose Meg after this game, probably. I think she's going to stick around for some summer stuff, but she will be a massive loss to Solent. Yeah. It's, it's her energy on off the court as well that she brings. Solent have a, a, a history as we run down the final seconds of the first. Kat Goldsby wanted a foul on... Al Shabli, but nothing doing. That ends the first quarter, and Team Cleary leads 33-23 over Team Al Shabli in a really entertaining first quarter. Everything you really want in an All-Star game. Of course, there were fouls in there uh, as well, but um, a competitive start to this game. Something you don't usually see traditionally in All-Star games. Going you know, in, in like, NBA All-Star games, in because it's probably a guard in BBL anyway. ones from very Just stay the behind past the ball. years. So it's competitive, but the referees are yeah, we'll still we'll calling we'll their fouls and still uh, capitalising on players. Yeah, I think they will. My fair black is an old NBA game, so I think we're quite fortunate in that sense that we've got some, some referees that will do it like that. And actually, the players will adapt to how the referees are refereeing the game. And Megan Dorney leading all scorers at the moment with nine points and three rebounds on three for four shooting. And for Team Al Shabli, Ruche Walton with eight points at the moment on three for five. So, as you were really, as you would expect, the leading scorers of um, these teams. And eight of the ten players featuring in this game, of course are in the top 10 for scoring for WNBL, so points will not be hard to come by. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Helen's back on on with her two fouls, so I'm just looking forward to her and see how she's going to now step down. up and, and show that yeah. why she was in the team of the year. So it'll be nice to see how she picks it up now with two fouls. And so with San Francisco yet to get off the mark. Lindsay Clary, though, on four points. if. Uh, Chrissy, your Reading, uh, Reading meter is on. <laughs> Megan Dorney on nine, of course. Faye Indeen on six for Solon. And here we go for the second quarter. Al Shabri bringing it up. And the ball goes straight out of bounds. A bit of a miscommunication between Marquez and Al Shabri. Team Blue is now pressing. And Forster oh, nearly came up with the steal, but uh, ball goes out of bounds and Team Pink will reclaim. There she goes. There and she here goes. is San Francisco to Neverson. Fakes Goldby, puts up a three and it's long. And here is Al Shabri. Al Shabri with the spin. the spin. Kicks it out to Goldsby, wide open for three. And that's short. The ball gets tipped she out. She almost got the, the rebound as well <laughs> against Helen. El, Elan Trillian and the uh, much smaller Alia Al Shabri <laughs> going for the uh, rebound there. And a foul has been called on Al Shabri. That's her first. She does fight for those rebounds, though. Oh, yeah. The smallest, probably one of the smallest players on the court, but she will out rebound the biggest. And nearly averaged 10 rebounds uh, this season. It was 9.8 rebounds, along with 16 points a game for Al Shabri. And yeah, for her size, what an incredible stat line that Ooh. is, as Elan Trillian will go to the foul line. Jess Davis will pick up her first foul. Of course, Jess Davis, who averaged 10 points, 10 rebounds for. Brent Balls in a great first season for the Brent Balls uh, in Division One. Looking to, they were looking to step up to WBBL yeah. action. Of course, the, the BBL have 
halted um, applications for now, so more than likely Brent will stay in WNBL Division One next season. But what a first season they've had, marked by a playoff -er, play Def place. No, definitely, yeah. The, they started off really good as well. I think our first game was against them and just having that so physical and just completely different game that we used to play in WNBL and they just, yeah, they've had a good season. Absolutely. Came here in November and lost out to the Kestrels as Liv Forster with her first three pointer of the game. Liv Forster who averaged 20 points a game this season, second in the WNBL behind Fatmanta Janera's Bedoya for a mid range jumper is no good. Lamange comes up with the board and it's two on one here if. Liv Forster wants to kick it out to Marquez, who does. And Marquez's three is no good. And Rochelle Davids of Brent Balls has it against Al Shabri. Gets bumped, misses the layup, and a foul is called. Ooh. I think it's a very late whistle if it was. Ooh, oh, they've called it on Helen, so yeah. Unlucky. They called a pushing foul. foul. That's three fouls on Elan Trillian. So Bedoya and San Francisco are coming out. I don't think Coach Stanley Coach is uh, Stanley. very happy with that no. call there. Not at all. I think he needs to now think of a substitution for Trillian. Trillian is actually staying on the floor on three fouls at the moment. So she has to be careful as Team Cleary leads by eight. It's tough because she's just a big body and she's just doing doing her thing and going Absolutely, for a rebound yeah. and she gets caught as a foul. Like, that's really tough. Davids puts Ooh, in a short two. Her. Ten point game, two minutes gone in the second. Here is Al Shabri to Jana, a three pointer. And Rawlings, who's back into the game, gets the rebound and is now pushing it, but it's one on five. Here is Endy. Rawlings in the corner. And Janna with the loose ball, and away come Team Blue again. Nice fake oh. from Janna and a foul called. Neverson straight away puts her hands up, and it will be on Neverson. And that's her first foul. Everson does know when she fouls. She's normally quite she's normally quite honest about it. I'm surprised I'm that she didn't flop on that one. I'm not gonna lie. She won't mind me saying that either. <laughs> it's an ongoing joke. Um, normally when she has someone running at her, she likes to be a little bit dramatic, but again, it is an ongoing joke and on we, the Kestrels team. And we won't tell you the joke they've uh, they've made about her when she goes to Alaska. Oh no, we won't <laughs> say that one. She knows that one though. Oh. <laughs> I thought Alaska was quite nice the one time I've been, but either way, the ball goes out of bounds. <laughs> of course, but you know, in all seriousness, as Anna Neverson takes a seat, you know, a fantastic program at Alaska that she will be part of, and no doubt she'll excel when she is there. Yeah, I think she will. I think she's she's made for the American lifestyle. She's made for that athlete program. Um, I think if they can get her into coaching as well. She's shone with coaching this year oh. and last year. Um, she's been an absolute asset to the club. We will miss her. Ending inside to Trillian, who missed it. Still the shot clock winding down as blocked Clary gets her shot blocked. Jess Here is Davis. Walton. Walton to Al Shabli. Al Shabli a three, no good. Body's on the floor. Walton nearly banked in the three. Al Shabri and Clary were fighting for it. And here is Davids to Endine. Endine in the corner misses everything. And Jess Davis comes up with the loose ball. Here is Al Shabri. It looks like a shooting contest now. Everyone's just shooting threes. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? That's what Shanna. you expect for an all-star game. <laughs> Davis on the floor, shot clock down to eight. Walton misses nearly everything with her three-point attempt, and Rawlings comes up with it. And here is Clary, sees a bit of daylight and banks it home. That's Lindsay, That's Lindsay Cle Cleary, you two guys. Yeah. That's just Lindsay Cleary. That's what she does. She's going for a double-double again today. <laughs> Al Shabri. Forster. Lots the catch and shoot three. That was a deep three as well from now. 
Liv Forster with her second three and Clary inside. Great defense from Jana. I'm very here. surprised she didn't foul then. <laughs> Normally she controlled herself then. Coach Milligan. Forster again! Back to back threes for Liv Forster. The nuclear weapon, as Coach Nick Drain calls her. As Davids misses the mid range jumper, and now Al Shabli has a chance to possibly make it a one possession game. Walton banks in a three. And there is the one possession game. Timeout, <laughs> Team Clary and El Shabri leading the cheers. What a spell that was from Team El Shabri recovering from that slow start. Yeah, they had like, what, three threes? And yeah. Back to back, back to three back, threes. Yeah. And Liv Forster hit, hit two of them. And then Walton hit, got that last one there. I think from well. Coach Stanley, he's probably called that timeout to stop the, stop the shooting run. He um, is very much like that when you play against the team. If they go on a six, six to eight point run, he'll call the timeout straight away. Yeah, um, so he'll just right. be one of resetting uh, his team, now. Let's go. making sure they know their defensive right assignments. The he's very, he's very high on that. Defensive assignments are the most important thing to him. And I think Megan was yeah, on the here. substitution okay. bench as well. They do yeah, need Megan back as well because she was the one putting up the points. So, yeah. Yeah. Team El Shabri, 8 for 21 from downtown. Team Clary, just 2 for 7 at the moment. So Team El Shabri really favouring the three-point shot when you have guns like Liv Forster, Rache Walton in your mix, and Carolina Marquez, who of course led the WNBL in three-point percentage this season at 37.5%. Why not? And... One of the main things we, we briefly spoke about at the top of the show is you know, the, the extended promotion for the women's game, a near sellout here today at the Solent Sports Complex. Just under 300 fans here in attendance as a fan is saying hello to our very own <laughs> Annie Scanlon there. <laughs> That was one of our minis. Ah. One of our mini kids. And he coaching kids from reception class up to <laughs> year five, year six. It's organized chaos. That's <laughs> what we like to call it. It's organized chaos. <laughs> Ending back to Trillian with the run off the glass, oh. too strong. But on the follow, gets it at the second attempt. She gets her own rebound and she's putting it back up. First field goal for Elan Tullian. She now moves on to three as Goods are looking for options and finds it in Jana with 10 to shoot. Good idea from Jana. Still finds Goods. A shot clock down to four. Oh, good move. Oh, and nearly got the uh, shot to go, but uh, needs to put up something. And as the shot clock expired, Goods uh, missed the desperation runner. Ending, putting the moves on Goodzer. Finds Trillian, whose floater is no good. Still has the ball with nine to shoot. Here is Rawlings to Ending. Ending couldn't find Trillian, and away comes Team Blue with Jana. Coach Milligan just yeah. wanting them to speed up a little bit there. <laughs> and, Jana, <laughs> and Jana says, I'll do that then, coach, and puts it in for two under the basket. Coach Milligan, from knowing her as a player and as a coach, mm. loves the quick game. If you can attack the basket, that's what she wants you to do. And that's something that she's trying to get Jenna to do before she heads out to the States with Jen and Joey. And... Mick and Dorney's pass finds mm -hmm. no one but the volunteers' desk. <laughs> I think Chiara De Stefano is actually on that uh, on that desk. Of course, a former Solent player, head stuck in the in the uh, on her laptop. Of course, now a, a photographer, an incredible photographer of that as well. Yeah, and she she had a she was helping us in Reading, and she she trained with us and. 
I think she wants to come back and play basketball again. So hopefully we'll see her. In Absolutely. WBL yeah. maybe next season. You never know. It'd be great to see. What a fantastic three-point shooter for the majority of the time coming off the bench for the Kestrels. Yeah. Especially in the uh, lockout season. Here is Jana. Three to shoot. Jana misses everything, smacks the backboard, and Dorney says, thank you very much. Here is Rawlings oh, asking I too much him. of Lindsay Clary. And what's really fun to see is, e even though there's been a fair few turnovers, every turnover has been met with a smile and a laugh, which is, you know, even though it's a competitive spirit, that the fun factor is still there. Oh, oh massively. I think you'll see that in the men's as well later. I think the men's will probably be a little bit more explosive, um, but I think you will see the fun element in it yeah. as well. Like you have some very competitive players in the men's one, as we do in this women's one. So I think it will be fun and competitive at the same time. I mean, Jordan May did say that they all want to just come and have fun here. Yeah. They all like each other, and they're just gonna have another shoot around. I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. The game. So yeah, we'll see that later on. As Saruna Goodser of Ipswich misses the second free throw, here is Rawlings. Rawlings finds Clary for two. Clary now moves on to eight. Jana putting the moves on Dorney. Great defense. Great defense indeed by Dorney, and Jana misses both attempts. And here comes Endine for Team Clary. Endine nice. gets Goodser in the oh. air, but misses the shot. Dorney, though, on the follow. Oh, Jana thought she had a clean block. I wouldn't agree with that. From here, it sounded like all ball, actually, but... I think he's trying to say that she pushed her as as he, as he she came down to get the ball from, from what he's just mm. symboled there. That's not the right word for it, but <laughs> from what he's just shown, we he's got shown it. that she pushed, um, which I think she does not agree with at all. It's tough because you're trying to foul with one hand and the other hand on, on the hip, mm. and they always call that other hand on the hip and say, you, you did push them. As Megan Dorney now four for four from the foul line today is the first player from Team Pink into double figures. Davis on the catch and shoot, this is everything. And Rawlings has it. Dorney, ending wide open in the wing, gets the three to go. That's a home court advantage, I'm telling you guys. This is a home court advantage for them too. <laughs> Goods are looking to answer, and that just grazes the rim. Jana nearly stole it off Dorney, and here comes Bedoya. Cross-court pass to Endine. Endine with the floater off the glass. They ended on 11 points now. I told you she wants that other MVP. Yeah. She wants all of them this year. Joint leading scorer with Roche Walton, who are both oh. on 11. Anna Isabel Anderson looking for three, that's short. Good hustle from both players there. Jess Davis really trying to get off the, after that rebound. Great pass from by Bedoya, Rawlings in the corner, a three. Ganessa Bedoya, probably one of the best passers in the WNBL, and that was why. Walton, her teammate, nearly, her teammate at London Lions, and he stole it off of there, Bedoya, but she still managed to get the flow to the go. Here is Endy. Endine fakes, oh, but misses the layup. Here is Walton. Pace is just quickening up a bit, but it's getting a little, little scrappy as we have 44.7 seconds remaining in the first half as Alia Al Shabli will check in and Fat Mantajana and Saruna Goodza will take a seat. Carolina Marquez, the other player, back onto the floor. I think Team Blue needs to Calm down a little bit and just try and play more a team basketball. Well, he did have it to within two at one point, but are now trailing by nine. Davis, three, and that's money. Another timeout. Another timeout called with 40.7 seconds left in the first half. Timeout has been called with 
Team Clary up 48-42 and a second quarter that's been a little scrappy but you know still a lot of entertaining basketball has been played. Annie, what is coach doing now? Coach yeah, Annie, what is coach saying? He'll have called right. that purely right. because of how open right. she was and she was allowed Dribble to shoot that three with no contest Megan at all. Flash. That is what coach Hit will Megan be saying to them off. right now. Yeah. Um, Okay. I think for, Maggie, for try and get a bit Coach higher Stanley, than that, it's, try and get it's here. mostly about right. slowing them down. I think Team Blue Come are doing a real good job at being quick and getting yeah. the ball down the floor quick, but then they go a little bit chaotic. And, and I think and Coach out. Stanley will be Remember wanting the pink to team to slow out. that down. Okay, okay let them run crazy and into the half court, but then once they're in there, we have to stop them. We have to slow them down. Absolutely. And would you agree with that? Do you agree with that as well? I do, yeah. I do. I mean, you can't let them shoot wide open threes. We know those players. We've played them mm. for the whole season, so everybody knows players. So just put your hand up, girls. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Chrissy has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> of course, a great season for you, Chrissy, with uh, the Reading Rockets. Before you joined the Rockets, you know, they were almost as good as relegated, but you know, thankfully for them, staying in Division 1 as Stockport Lapwings chose to remain in Division 2. Yeah. But Ooh. you joined them and it was a good first season for you guys getting to a National Cup final and a playoff spot. And even though you, you, you know, in our conversations, you don't want to admit it, becoming you know, a bit of a mentor for the, the younger players on the team and a bit of a captain figure as well. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I've really enjoyed my season this year. And obviously having Lindsay there as well, I think um, that was a great great player to pick up as well and and to be honest they picked uh, Lindsay up last um, rebound game um, they were here <laughs> Candela was talking to her seeing if she wanted to play and there she you said go. yeah why not and yeah no it was a great season and um, almost getting to that second yeah. final as well just losing in the semi-finals against um, Soland it was tough but I really enjoyed it and looking forward to next season for sure final seconds of the half and ending being marked by Anna Isabel Anderson, almost shades of the playoff final. <laughs> Rawlings, what a, an attempt of a three that was, but it doesn't go. But that ends an entertaining first half of action here at the Solent Sports Complex, and it's only a six point game. Team Clary leads 48 to 42. They had a lead that was as big as 11 points at one point. But Team Al Shabri, who started slowly, have picked up the pace. And it's all to play for in the second half, much like we had in last year's All Star game, when obviously it went to overtime. And we all know how that ended. But an entertaining first half. Faye Endine leading the way for Team Clary with 11 points. In fact, it's a solo 1 2 with Endine on 11 and Megan Dorney on 10. Rache Walton leading. Al Shabri with 11 points, but a good first half of action right there. Oh yeah, massively. I think, like we've all said, we knew it would be a good first half. We knew both these both these teams would come out and compete, and they've done exactly that. They've shown why they are the best in their WNBL. And there are still tickets available if you want to get yourself down here to Southampton Sports Complex as. Chrissy's sources have told us that there are just less than 10 seats away from a complete sellout. And that kind of, that's just a fantastic accomplishment. And, um, you know, great to see. And, you know, you can still get your tickets, but final, I think, nine tickets are available. Yeah, this is amazing. Like, so exciting to see how many people there are. And then you can see how many young players there are as well. And I, I've seen a lot of uh, players from the Solent um, as well as um, Reading Rockets and it's, it's just so good to see how many young players is there. Absolutely, so it is half time here at the Solent Sports Complex. Team Clary leads 48-42 and the fantastic Solent University journalism students are just fixing their hair, getting ready <laughs> for the half time report. Take it away Kit, it's all you. Yep, so it's half time here, 48-42, thank you very much, uh, John. Yeah, me and Pierre have really been enjoying this game here, court side. And that's a ball that goes through my legs there. <laughs> it's absolute mayhem down here, but no different to what it was like during the game just now. I mean, 
48, 42, huge game. Yeah, definitely, it was a great start to the game. Team Ferry, I, 30 points in the first quarter, they came out firing. They were, and we saw the chemistry with their team re really early on with plenty of Solon Kestrel's players, quite a few Reading players, and they were gelling together pretty well. They, you know, the other team couldn't stop their passing, they were blowing the ball around. So it was, and we said that before the pregame, you know, these guys, a lot of them have got the top assists, they love passing the ball always. So, and that was happening because Team Sh Sharpery, they couldn't stop them. Couldn't stop them to begin with. And we also saw on the other side, with Team Sharpery, they kind of were missing a lot of their shots to begin with, but in the second quarter they were hitting those three, they were hitting those three pointers pretty well. Yeah, and if, if you look at, uh, you know, the, the, the score sheet, I mean, it's really evident as well that actually every player here today is, is getting some, you know, kind of contribution points-wise, which, I mean, it's to be expected. It's an all-star game. These are, you know, these these, these um, players are, you know, the best in the league, obviously. But, oh, yeah, yeah they're, all, they're all bringing their A game today, scoring, contributing, and that's why it's such a high score, 48-42 right yeah, now. Team Clary, they've only got one player who's yet to hit on the scoreboard, but... Man of the Mad is San Francisco, but she's still playing incredibly well. She's had a good game out there so far. They're all playing really well. And you got like two Kestrel players, they're in double digits already on their home court playing. Dean and Megan Dorney, we spoke about them pre game. And both of them have come and they're playing like they are. They have a home field advantage. Absolutely. And then, yeah, you mentioned Faye and Dean. Yeah, home court advantage obviously helping her out. What, what more can be expected? Yeah. from, you know, such a sensational player, which yeah. I lose count, honestly, yes. of how many accolades she yeah. has. Team of, team of the year, exactly. young player of the year, yeah. you know, finals MVP. They said it in the commentary box that yeah, she wants every single award this year. She's going for every single one of them. And at this rate, she's going to pick up the All-Star MVP as well, the way she's throwing the ball around, the way she's dropping the points. She's playing amazingly again, and you wouldn't expect anything less from her. No, absolutely not. And then on the other team, Roche Walton, also with 11 points, leading the story for our team. I mean, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant what she's uh, brought to this team today. And again, to be expected, one of the most efficient players in the league. Uh, you know, she's doing her job really well, such a veteran player. Yeah, 100%. And I think you, we did see start to see the comeback from Team Sharbury really in that second quarter. They closed it down to one point. Still one enough to take the lead, but they did close it down when they had Olivia Forster, young, just turned 18 in the previous week. I think she hit two free throws, two three-pointers back to back. And then Walton hit one. It was something, you know, game swung really quickly, but Team Cleary, they opened up that points gap again. But, I mean, it's all to play for. Anything can happen. These guys are all brilliant. They could suddenly hit plenty of threes in a row. And the whole game swings around and Team Shawbury in the lead. So. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned Olivia Foster there, you know, because as we said earlier on in the uh, three points contest, she was a little bit hard done by being given the uh, <laughs> being given the wrong size basketball. But then, you know, in this game, what did what did we say? We said she would correct that, yeah. and she's come here and, and she's like you say, hit back to back threes. Really impressive from her as well. Yeah, she had a good moment there, and that just moments like that are going to what's going to change this game. And, Who's gonna make? Who's gonna go and take home the victory? Every, everyone's got, everyone's got the caliber, and everyone has the potential. So who's gonna turn out and actually go and deliver? And all of them are putting in a performance, but it's who's gonna put in that best performance. It's, all of these are very good players, basically. It's gonna come down to who is the best. Yeah, but with the game so close, you know, it's, it's all still to play for, both for you know the, the win and also the MVP. So yeah. yeah. It may, be a six, it may be a six-point game right now, but that means nothing. We've got two quarters left, which are going to be packed full. There's going to be plenty of points. We're almost, you know, too clear, we're almost going to get to 100 point mark. So, and that is a, that's no, that's a big feat to reach 100 points. It'll be, so it'll be pretty impressive. We just see all the kids, they're all just coming back in. It's absolute chaos here at the Sunday Sports Complex. They've just got all the young ballers just throwing the ball around, showing what they're made of. We saw them have a free throw competition earlier and
They're all going nuts and they're all just coming off the pitches. We are about two minutes away from the second half be beginning. It's going to be an interesting one. A few fouls given, which is yeah, a bit surprising for an all-star game, really. I didn't expect many fouls to be given, but the refs have got a bit better. They've been fair about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're, um, you know, they are giving out these fouls, and I know that was actually causing a bit of frustration. I'm not sure if maybe yeah. you heard, but Famata uh, Jenna, especially. Yeah, very. Was she be was right in front of us here. She was very hard done by the commentary. Said it that they say sounded like she got the ball. We were sat on, like, almost underneath it, and it sounded like almost. But I did think she was very hard done by that. It, she had a right to be frustrated. And she was understand yeah, understandably not very happy. And yeah, she's right, it's an all-star game. You want a little bit of freedom. You want to kind of, you know, have it your way a little bit. And, but at the same time, the referees, I think it's an all-star game for them as well. Yeah. So, you know, they've got to do that. I guess, I mean, it's been a fantastic first half of action. Team Clary led by as many as 11 points. But Al Shabri's team, have, who have taken the lead on brief occasions, have pulled it back. And we have a thrilling second half in store here at the Solent Sports Complex. Team Al Shabri, 42. Team Clary, 48. John Hobbs, Annie Scanlon and Christina Karpova keeping in company. Ray at the Fury will be joining us a bit later from courtside. And a near sellout as uh, we spoke about at the half, just nine tickets left for this All-Star Classic, seating about 300 at the moment. It's likely uh, the last men's home game of the season. Mm. Me and uh, Anna turned around whilst commentating and we were like, oh, there's actually <laughs> people stood up because there's no seats left. The one game I'll always remember was the BBL Trophy semi-final here between Solent and Bristol, Bristol that first wow. leg, oh, when, that was, when no one could move. We were both in the crowd <laughs> for that one. That was yeah. an amazing game. Yeah, we were all sat like, all the players sat on this side. Yeah. It was just, yeah, no, it was definitely A game I was very proud to call that on that day and uh, I couldn't believe what I was watching at some at most stages of that as of course Solent reached the final narrowly missing out to the Newcastle Eagles before Covid struck and cancelled the rest of the season Goldsby inside and Al Shabri is within four points here is Neverson stolen by Janna Great awareness from Fat Man to Jana, and away comes Walton to BA London Lions players linking up there. And with Coach Milligan obviously leading the way with, with the Lions and Fat Man to Jana and Roche Walton, what seasons they have had, and there's Goldsby missing the two, and of course, um, with. Uh, with Jana going to St. Peter's and with Walton staying with the London Lions and is actually an operations assistant with the club, which is uh, quite a, a stressful role to do, doing the day-to-day -day action as Anna Neverson hits a three. But um, for Walton, definitely looking to her future, really, and doing it with the Lions, which is really cool to have. Yeah, definitely. And um, I know Roche from Charmwood times, so she was in Charmwood, yeah. and, and I played with her. and. Um, it's so nice to see that she's she went to university in America and she's come back and she's back in playing basketball and she had a great season this year for mm. sure. Of course, one of the standout performances of the season against Cardiff, 41 points, 11 rebounds as San Francisco hits her first field goal and now every player from Team Clary is on the board with at least a point. This is nice to see. Al Shabri. Ooh. Dancing away on San Francisco. So if you're keeping track at home, Sol Lamange and Anna Isabel Anderson are now the only two players yet to 
register a point in this game. So nearly there, uh, San Francisco picks up her first foul. So a three pointer at one end, a foul at the other. And Al Shabri makes the first free throw and you know, a player who will say goodbye now to Loughborough University, but leaves hopefully with a degree in uh, aeronautic engineering, or excuse me, automotive uh, engineering, wow. and was the only female in her um, class as Dawley goes inside. And what a degree to get though. Yeah, and highlighting the need for more female engineers and Ooh. Walton inside to Jana, that goes Ooh. off ending last. Oh, no, it oh, doesn't. No, it doesn't. From and here, she it... She knew that, too. Yeah, from here, it looked like it came off ending last, but... Definitely, yeah, that was... I think it just caught Jenna's leg, maybe. Um, but Faye knew it did not come off her. Mm. She was not having that one. San Francisco. Clary to Dorney at the top. And that misses everything. Oh, good save. Good save there from Clary. San Francisco picks it up. Ending. Shot clock down to one. Neverson a three. Strings it. Oh, there she goes. I must say, in her playoff run, Neverson's stepped up. Definitely. Next Absolutely. Next level. Yeah. Like, she had the game, probably the game of the season in the first playoff game. Mm. Then the second one, again, she had a double double digit game. And then even in the final, she she just outshone herself. Dorney, a short two, it's off to the right. And Jana almost caught in two minds whether the pass or lob, but decides to keep the dribble. Jana looking for options, decides to drive. Tough move from Jana, still has the ball. Stolen, yeah, by Ending. They Ending. Passes out, Neverson fakes Goldsby, goes inside, oh. blows the layup, and Jess Davis picks up the loose ball as Jana sportingly helps up Neverson. Turnaround jumper from Al Shabri, and. Why not take that three out? Absolutely, yeah. Almost a Euro step there from Neverson. I think knew full well she was going to miss that, but thought I'll go for the theatrics anyway. Oh, yeah. Goldsby. That's what I mean. Theatrics. <laughs> Theatrics. <laughs> Had a huge smile on her face, knowing full well that was going to go down. 6.24 remaining. And we are joined as well by Worthing Thunder's Hafiz Abdul, who we'll get a word with in just a second. Uh, Hafiz Abdul will be joining us for the dunk contest before suiting up for the men's all-star game, which will be due to tip off at around six o'clock as Kat Goldsby misses the first free throw. And Chrissy, you know, obviously Kat Goldsby, what a season she had with Thames Valley. Sorry to say, obviously in the National Cup final, really <laughs> came alive in, in the second half, you know, narrowly beating the, the Reading Rockets, but what a phenomenal player Kat Goldsby is and doing more than just playing, but coaching as well. She's you know, the assistant coach of the team and does so much for the Thames Valley team. Oh, definitely. I think the first half of the season, she was pretty much head coach in the team as well as playing. Yeah. So that's yeah, amazing that she managed to do that. And yeah, definitely great player. And just, yeah, her stats are looking good all the time. Absolutely. And she's always on the everyone's um, list to look, off, like look, look out for, for Averaged, sure. Average 16 points last season for Thames Valley. 16 points, eight rebounds, five assists in that cup final as Walton goes inside off the feed from El Shabri. Here is Davids. Looking for options, finds it in Trillian inside and just about gets the roll. And Elan Trillian moves on to five. Of course, a keen eye for art, Elan Trillian. If you follow her on Instagram, it's a very, uh, very professional page full of uh, artistic shots and graphic design as, as she does for a living. Ending all the way, misses the layup, likes to play in the open floor, but misses everything there and Forster's pass finds Trillian. 
I think she almost channeled that it was going there. <laughs> Ending short with her three as rebound. Davids skies for the rebound and gets it on the second attempt. I like watching um, Brent Bowles players because they're so tough and it's mm -hmm. just like playing against them. It's just like they do not give up. Like it's just, yeah. That's the uh, mentality of coach Toby Ali Balagan, who of course promotes women's basketball at all levels across the uh, Wembley area, of course, where Brent are based. And again, what, like we said earlier, what a first season they had in Division One as oh, San Francisco oh, gets it and a foul. No, she likes that. She likes going for that little layup and she gets her own one. Such a tough player, San Francisco, and does a lot of things that you don't normally see on the stat sheet every coach's dream isn't it yeah definitely and she's always like she's just she never gives up like even if she's injured and she's like hurting and she's always like you know what i'm hurting but i don't want to not play like i want to support my absolutely team. She's, she's yeah she's a beast for sure yeah, that was certainly one of the uh, key things to san francisco in january's cup final absolutely battered bruised but continue to play on and can't count how many times she fell to the floor in, in that game. She fought for every loose ball. Definitely. Goldsby putting the moves on Davids. Forster. Goldsby has a bit of room, drives at Rawlings. The floater is no good, but she will go to the foul line. That was an interesting foul to call. I'm going to just put that one out there. <laughs> I can't hide that one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, two players. I'm not going to moan at, you know, at that call. I'll... These are solely constructed. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> they are not associated with solely constructed. We are not doing this. They may live in the South. <laughs> But they are not Solent Kestrel's referees. Doesn't Peter Old live in Southampton? No, he lives <laughs> not in Southampton. <laughs> well, Tim Brown, one of the uh, lead officials for the National Basketball League, does reside in the Isle of Wight, so close enough, but he's not refereeing either, so it doesn't really matter. He I is think here. He's doing the men's game, yeah, though. he will be. <laughs> <laughs> Some place to live, the Isle of Wight. Here is Goldsby. Goodza on the spin. Oh, good spin. And Goodza will go to the foul line. There will be uh, a second foul on San Francisco. As Anna Isabel Anderson checks back in. And Solomonge takes a seat. Of course, a disappointing season for the Cardiff Met Archers this season. Just one win, that win coming against the Brent Bulls actually, but um, you know, a disappointing season. But from what Sarah Wagstaff has been saying all season long, it's a rebuilding year, gathering up the youth and you know, building them up and just rebuilding the side. Yeah, I'd say that's one thing that Cardiff are really good at from being there myself. They believe in their youth massively. They always have done. I think for them it was tough because Keris got injured very easy early, early in the season. Um, and then... Izzy was playing WBBL and yeah. if there was a WBBL game she went to that game rather than the WNBL. Mm. Of course Izzy Bunyan was due to play in the uh, in this uh, all-star game but couldn't. Her course, revision has come exactly, first. Exactly, absolutely. Come first. Yeah. That's why a few of the uh, Ipswich players actually didn't play um, in last year's all-star game was due to due to revision. One of those, I believe, was uh, Yasin Belenbay, who, of course, then made the way back down south to Solent. That was another good pickup for Solent this year. As Jess Davis comes back into the game. And, uh, as well as Lindsay Cleary. As well as Lindsay Cleary, yeah. Cleary back into the game as well. 3.34 remaining in the third, and it's a 12-point lead for Team Cleary. So, Al Shabri have struggled in this third quarter so far, here comes Davids. Trillian. Cleary finds an open Davids, a step back two is money. She loves that shot, I remember playing against her in D2 last year, that was her shot, the step back 
step back corner or step back elbow shot was one that she will make 99% of the time. Beautiful That's drive nice. there, yeah. Beautiful drive from Liv Forster. She's Great. not scared of anyone. She just goes for it. It's just, she's not. She's a small girl, small guard, and mm. she just isn't scared of anything, and she doesn't care if she gets blocked or not. She just goes for everything. Trillian all the way in a foul. Going back to the Liv Forster, her parents have made the way from Oldham to be here today, which is you know really good to see, and they'll be uh, dropping her back to Ipswich afterwards before heading back up to the, the northwest. And as we mentioned at the top, you know, a great 18th birthday for her, and celebrated it in style back home. And now the off season begins, of course, here at the Rebound All Stars. She'll also, I think, be taking. Um, place at the uh, Hoops Fix All-Star Classic as well, so busy yeah. summer for Liv Forster. She's also got GB to contend yeah, with and as, that well. as well. Yeah. I mean, I know her name's in the ring for uh, the initial training camps, and I have no doubt that she'll be in the main squad as well. Um, no doubt at all. Nice pass to David. Again, looking for the extra pass. And Bedoya will reset. But Doya again! Oh. As She's said, one of the players. She's playing with them. This as said, amazing. one of the best, one of the best passes in the league as Forster misses the long three. Clary driving at Forster. Oh, pass. And Bedoya will slow down. Instead now she'll drive and nearly bank it in. It just rimmed out and ball goes out of bounds. But uh, Ganessa Bedoya getting the crowd on their feet here at Solent Sports Complex. And the timeout <laughs> is called, I'm assuming it's on Team Blue. I it think is it is, yeah, Blue, Team yeah. Blue, yeah. It's just a little green dot over in the... Uh, Team Clary. ...on the scoreboard. Leading 71-57, 149 remaining in the third quarter. And Team Clary, you know, drifting away a little bit from Team Al Shabani, who have had just a couple of broken offences and right now it's kind of like, you know, Team Clary have taken advantage of that. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I think Team Clary, like we said in the first half, have got that more team basketball. They're yeah. passing the ball a lot more. I think Team Blue, they have elements of it, but then like we said, they, they get the ball down the court quickly, but then they rush that first shot. It's yeah. the initial slow it down, take your time and find the right shot rather than making the shot. Definitely. And Lindsay Cleary and also Megan Dorney, they both have goals. Absolutely, yeah. Well, it's the uh, trio of solo players that lead the way for Team Cleary at the moment. Uh, Megan Dorney has 12 points. Endine and Neverson both on 11. Liv Forster has 11, but for Shea Walton leading all scorers with 13. But as you say, they're there are a few double-double watches. Jess Davis actually has 10 rebounds to go with three points at the moment. And yeah, Faye Endine, who was one assist shy of a triple-double in the playoff final, has 11 and five boards. Dorney has 12 points, seven rebounds at the moment. I believe Lindsay has nine boards. And like Lindsay, yeah, Lindsay has points. nine boards as well as Marquez turns the ball over with the travel and Marquez you know, returning to Worcester from a, a spell with the Gloucester City Queens in the WBBL greater experience for her and obviously playing alongside close friend Inma Batista who is now playing in Durham as David's really rattled in the, uh, the long two and Threlian battles with it and Bedoya has it nice pass to David's Goods her with the rebound and now she pushes it for Team Blue in desperate need of points. Davis lays it up and in. Five points for Jess Davis. Bedoya. Trillian oh, against goes. two players on the follow was Rawlings. This is what the cup final was. She's got, she was going against <laughs> everybody and we were trying. We, we really tried. Again she, she goes up. Tough. That's her experience, like she knows the game, yeah. she's played at so many different levels. Definitely. I think experience comes into it there and she does love a little spin move. <laughs> I think Elan Trillian is now one point away from a double-double. I think that was her uh, double-double 
there with those two rebounds. 29.6 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Team Cleary up 12. Ball is stolen by Forster. Now Forster will slow it down. Finds Anderson a three, that's short. Again though, trying to make the shot, mm. like move the ball a little bit more. Clary, shot block turned off. Clary blocked by Goodser, Ooh. final seconds of the third. Jana has it, she's got a dance, and she does, but misses the layup. I think she wanted a foul actually, but uh, referees didn't blow, and that ends the third quarter, and Team Clary leads 71-59, a sizable lead, but you know, still all to play for, Chrissy. Oh, definitely, yeah. We've still got 10 minutes to play, and 12 points we And Annie as the fan club is trying to get your attention <laughs> over here on the commentary booth. Hey, it's an all-star game, who cares? It's fine. Just backing up Chrissy's you know, very good point. Team Al Shabli shooting just 27% from the field as opposed to 40% for Team Clary. They've been the more composed team and it reflects in the score, doesn't it? But still one more quarter to go, everyone's game. Yeah, definitely. I think the composure is the key element in this. Um, like we have said and like Chrissy just said then, it needs to be moving the ball to find the right shot. Not the shot or not trying to play hero because in this game you don't need to play hero ball. You're, you're all all-stars out there. So go and win it as a team. Absolutely. And Al Shabli, who trails by 12, actually has the top three scorers in the WNBL in uh, Fat Manta, Jana, Liv Forster and Rusha Walton. As Chris Hughes has joined us in the commentary booth for a second before he jogs off. Chris, thank you, by the way, for the food, by the way. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the biggest cheer of the day. Oh, <laughs> what have yeah. you made of the women's game so far, Chris? Amazing. Um, I've seen this year, first last year, I'll be able to catch a lot more. Um, yeah, no, amazing. And it's funny, at the same time, the pizza came out of five texts, either from players or volunteers, <laughs> saying, where's the food? I'm like, it's here, guys. I'm running around like a postman. But, and no, the game scene... I thought it was really close to the start of the game. Um, both teams played really well. Um, players seemed really happy. You know, played. Um, and the rest of the let a lot of things go. Like, there were two players who, who made their game start is that sort of type of game. And like Chris, you know, wrestling be that. So I was like, no, there's, there's quite a few other sports in the Again, great game. And it's going to be really hard for me to choose an MVP shortly. But it's, Few front runners for sure, and obviously a shout out Alan Neverson who's stepped in for uh, this but come on. Back. Absolutely, I yeah. See that. I was literally yeah. just uh, saying thanks. So she's doing amazing. Obviously, all my lead volunteers, um, with social media's graphics, and it's great to have a part of the All Stars sort of uh, injury to Emira Ebergrika, which forces sort of an NBL All Stars trade. Absolutely. Well, Chris, we'll we'll let you get off. I know you've got a, a lot doing. You're running like a a headless chicken, I think. So we'll let you we'll let you get off. Thank you very much for the food. <laughs> and we will certainly, if Annie doesn't start it, we'll certainly be devouring it in a bit. <laughs> That's right. More coming soon, and thank you guys for helping. And thank you everyone coming here. We're update literally just 10 seats short of sending out. I'm actually going to have to start sending the players' seats and then I'll have to find oh, maps excellent. to sit on because I do get missed tools from people saying, please see me see it. Like, I can't do every. I've had like 28. No, if you on WhatsApp, not annoying you, I'm just trying to... Just not enough hours in the day, Chris, oh, is there? I keep saying people, I need to be cloned five times. Anyway, <laughs> I'll let you guys run the show, you do amazing job. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care, Chris, as we are less than two minutes into the final quarter. Scorers remain the same. Team Pink with the ball. As Annie is 
Annie, both Annie and Chrissy are looking over the pizza and I'm trying my best not to. <laughs> <laughs> Here is never so I know, right? You really can smell it. <laughs> Here is Tillian to Rawlings, driving baseline, goes oh, over oh, two oh, players, oh, and a foul! No, we're thinking oh, offensive. offensive. They called call offensive. Oh. This was a tough... She was, in, oh, she was in the no charge zone. I'm going to argue that one too. She was in the no charge zone. I was not. I'm telling you, these are some against the I'm not having it. They're Real. not showing them every <laughs> I think I might need Hafiz Abdul back in the commentary <laughs> booth. <laughs> but a tough call, Rian Rawlings. That looked like a good bucket and a foul over two Al Shabri players. I think one of them was Saruna Gudza, but uh, yeah, either was way. A bit of confusion there with the table as to whether to count the basket or not. Yeah. What is the rule? Is it? It's not. You don't count. No, it doesn't. doesn't get no, it won't be counted. So uh, that bucket will not count. So the score remains 71-59, and another foul has been called. And oh, she actually and just hit Flory on the baseline. And yeah, bless Flory, her. Flory Cotterill gets whacked on the head as well. She won't be happy with that one. <laughs> She'll say something after the game. I can guarantee it. <laughs> and. It was traditional with all-star games. The final quarter just gets a little bit chippy, a little bit competitive. And, you know, sometimes tempers can start a little bit as well. Yeah, it's, definitely. I mean, Team Blue, they want to just come back and just get it under 10, and then they can just see if, where they're going to go from there. There you go. They got it to 10. <laughs> there it is. It's a 10-point game. Fat Manta Jana at the foul line. Here is Rawlings. Rawlings finds a bit of room and banks it home. Pretty from Rian Rawlings. She said, let me do it again. Yeah. Makes up for that basket from earlier that was waved off. Jana, catch and shoot three. Gets the backward. I think Team Blue here will just add the little bit of pressure in the half court. I think they're going to try and speed the pinks up. Trillian inside, off balance, Jana rebounds. Oh no. And Saruna Gudza came down hard. She on looked like she caught her keys yeah. a little bit. There was a collision between her and Trillian. And Coach Milligan is not happy with that there. Not entirely sure what that was about. Maybe shooting the three. But it was very I'm early in the shot the clock. Rebound. Yeah, it was very early in the shot clock, and Coach Milligan does pride herself on you know, offensive, methodical offensive play, long into the shot clock, but again, playing at a fast pace at the same time. I know it sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, but... It makes sense to us. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. again, it's good to see, though, that this is her... I'm pretty sure that's her first season with the Barking Abbey. Yeah, it is. Mm. She's, yeah, it she's is, a yeah. young coach and a female coach, so it's so nice to see Absolutely. a female coach doing so well. Yeah, and she's involved in the GB under-18s. She's assisting mm. Karen Burton there this this season again. And she's assisting the WB um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Absolutely, yeah. She's One of really good for Absolutely. Yeah. San Francisco just hit the deepest three we've had this, this game today. This game. <laughs> Goodza looks to respond and does. Saruna Goodza now moves on to eight points. Meg Dorney and Faye Ending coming back in for Team Pink. And Ganesha Bedoya and Rochelle Davids will take a seat. And then you just had Kat Goldsby coming back in for Team Blue as well. I think Saruna Gudza is taking a seat, as it probably you, know, you would expect, given that she landed awkwardly Ooh. earlier on. Here is Dorney. Cross-court pass to Goldsby, picks it off. Here's Al Shabri, the oh, extra pass, extra pass and the finish from Goldsby. Great link-up with play between the Loughborough Rider and the Thames Valley Cavalier. But that's what we were talking about, that extra pass. Giving that extra pass gets you the easy basket. Definitely. Tulian. Great defense, defense from Jana, and away comes Goldsby. Team Blue in a rhythm. There you go. And the score there from Lamorge. Just one player left to 
get on there. Come it's on, an Anna. Game now. This Ending. is getting interesting now. Almost deja vu from last year as Endine will go to the line. Lamont with the foul. That's her second. And Faye Endine, what more can you say about Faye Endine? MVP in the league, the playoffs. Under 19 MVP. Absolutely, yeah. An incredible season for her. And just, she just takes everything in her stride. And that's what's remarkable about a player so young that can be so mature and just take absolutely everything in their stride, not let the big occasion get to her. Yeah, I think this year she's really grown maturity-wise. Um, she's always been quite mature for her age, but this year she's really shown good leadership on the court, off the court. She's taken ownership a lot more this year as well. And it's so nice to see. It'll be interesting to see what decisions she makes about next yeah. year. I know that she's got a few options. So yeah, I had coaches messaging me asking about her, so I'm like, just really Oh, happy. wicked. Just nice. I just want to see her succeed. She's done so, so well. Absolutely. Like, from last season, losing two finals and like having a tough game, like tough, two tough games. And then this season, just like smashing that final. Like like you said, she was one assist away. Yeah, one, one assist one away. Yeah. Like, this is amazing. 18 points, 11 That's rebounds, amazing. nine assists. And an incredible And she's only effort. 19 years old. Yeah. She has a phenomenal career ahead of her, so it'll be... And she's come through the junior program. She's come all the way up. Coach Vicky Milner has had her, I want to say, since an under-12. I'm sure she'll text me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, but she's seen her through this whole this whole program, and it's so nice to have that end product in Faye. Absolutely. And also doing very well academically as well, away yeah. from basketball as well. So... She's very clever. Certainly, isn't the they? future is yeah, the future is bright for Faye Ending. We also got our first double double as um, Helen Trajan has 11 points and 13 rebounds. There you go. And you it came off. Was close to it, it came off. It came off that three-point play while we were talking about Faye Ending as San Francisco nearly got the layup to go. Just Davis with another rebound. Marquez gets Rawlings in the air and is long with her two-point attempt. That's Jess Davis's 11th rebound to go with five points. And here she is marking Ending. Ending finds Trillian. That's a mismatch there. And that is a mismatch with a El mismatch Shabri. But El Shabri will fight that. <laughs> yeah. Came off for Team Blue. Three to shoot. What a tough take. What a tough take from Faye Ending. So Faye Ending will go back to the line. We've seen that a lot more this season, that Faye, Faye is willing to go for those tough takes. She, last year, she kind of shied away from the contact ever so slightly. She still went in for the contact. But this year, she's like, hell no, I'm going for it. If I want that basket, I want it. And she's strong this season as well. Like, she's playing on defense. She is tough. Mm. So Lindsay Cleary back into the game for Team Clary and <laughs> Elan Trillian will take a seat. And a number of Thames Valley players here today supporting Goldsby and Trillian, most notably Faithful Quoza, who is here today with her, with her dog, one of the most adorable dogs you will ever find, <laughs> whose name I did not catch. <laughs> here is Goldsby. Davis. Davis puts in a two. Here is Ending. Ending dancing with Goldsby. Great defense there from Davis. And here comes Marquez. And Caroline. I was about to say, Megan got lucky she didn't get gold for that. And, and then she got gold for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carolina Marquez, who has already won an event here today, of course, winning the skills challenge off of Faye Ending, denying Solent two straight skills <laughs> challenge victories. That rebound history was tough. Trying to get that ball through the oh, yeah. small tunnel and then faded at first time. I was like, I don't think she can do it twice in well, a row. I, I will always remember the uh, video I got off Molly Danielson. Oh, no. That featured a certain Chrissy Carpover, actually. What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? Her... when we had to think of it. I know. <laughs> it was her against Lauren Dabbs. And uh -huh. that, that exact part, was, it is exceedingly difficult. And... 
I think it took us like around 20 times to do it before she <laughs> sent that video to you. <laughs> Molly Danielson enjoying life back home in Oregon, working with the Trailblazers. Oh, definitely, yeah. She's a living life right now. Dorney inside. Great defence oh, from Goldsby. Nice. Ball goes out of bounds. That was great defence. That was a good block there. I don't think Dorney was quite expecting that level no. of defence. So, Bedoya. And David's come back in San Francisco and Dorney will take a seat for Team Clary. 3.44 remaining, gap is eight. Clary leads by 80 to 72. Here is Endine. Endine, the runner on the shot clock buzzer and Goldsby and Endine fighting for it. What you like she to see it. in All-Star Game. <laughs> Both laughing on the floor to each other as they roll back over. Timeout called by Coach Stanley. So Coach Stanley, and let's also just give props to, to Ben Stanley, a player, a, player, a coach <laughs> that, well, he used to be a player, a coach that, you know, was named Coach of the Year for the Kestrels. And, we spoke, myself and Caroline spoke at the uh, playoff final about how so many have to adjust right away. The season with different coaches coming in and out and getting the job done, getting the, the uh, playoff final as well as the new title. And it's been tough for all involved, but such a rewarding season. And you know, I'm sure Chrissy can probably except this the probably one of the more deserved uh, yes, lead the playoff doubles we will see in the Soda Kestrels with what they've had to go through this season. Yeah, Matt, I think we figured it out when we were at playoffs. That was Coach Stanley's first ever playoffs, um, and he managed to take over the team that he wasn't officially the head coach for. Um, he, we also learned that he did over 80 games this season. Yeah. Um, that's with the men, the women, and Bucks. He did both Bucks, men and women as well. So I think hats off to Coach Stanley. He, he's done a phenomenal job with both the men's and the women's because we know the men's had a massive restructure. But the job he did with the women's and gaining the trust in all the players and actually the coaching staff he brought in, the girls, the girls adjusted so well to whichever coach they had on the day. Mm. And you, know, you can't argue with that, can you? Just a great accomplishment for, for Ben Stanley. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, he did that in Nottingham last yeah. season and coached both men and women, and he's just come here and done the same thing. Then. Absolutely. Well, he voluntarily took over the, the women's team, but obviously was contracted to the men. And upon getting the job, he was actually in Leeds at a, a basketball camp and... <laughs> he was, with he, me. Yeah, with you. I was going to just about say, with Matt Newby and a certain Annie Scanlon. And, <laughs> and um, Anna Neverson was there And Anna too. Neverson. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, we were both there. We're all going back this year as well, actually. Absolutely. So oh, good, good to fun. hear. Bringing the South Coast flair to Yorkshire. Of course, that is Anna Neverson's uh, home county as well, as Goldsby strips it off ending. Pulls up for two, and that's money. <laughs> to a six point game. Absolutely, yeah. This is getting interesting, guys. Three minutes left and three minutes to go. There's a six point game. Endine, a three. Money. And she oh, goes. Goes. They didn't give that foul to her. And she was like, let, let me just sit back three then. 36. 36% 36 for the season. Endine from downtown, actually second in the league behind uh, Carolina Marquez. Al Shabri will come back into the game for Team Blue. And we are getting to that important stage now where you can see the marking is getting tighter, the defense is getting more physical. As you can see, their goals be all over Rochelle Davids. Here is Rawlings. Ending. Going at Al Shabri. Bedoya, six to shoot. Pulls up for two. Ooh. And Davis again with the rebound. 14 rebounds now for Jess Davis. And only three points. Excuse me, tap to 12 rebounds, excuse me, as Jana goes all the way for two. And it is a seven point game. Final two minutes 
of the women's all-star game here at the rebound all-stars event clary in the elbow doesn't get it to go rawlings with the uh, offensive board that was clever basketball there she knew she knew jenna was right behind her so she just pumped it a little bit we see that a lot you love one of those, don't you? You love a little pump <laughs> fake and then, then going to score, drawing the foul, and she did it perfectly. That's eight rebounds for Rian Rawlings to go with nine points. And four of those have been offensive rebounds, and you can put up another one there. And as we mentioned, big shoes to fill for Angela Ruskin in the absence of Katrin Kuhl, but Rian Rawlings has certainly filled those shoes quite well and another playoff appearance for uh, Angela Ruskin this season. Yeah, definitely. And um, well, we played them and there was, we were four and five, they were fifth and it was... Oh, oh. good grief. Al Shabri and Clint, the two captains. <laughs> both of them are, are, both of them laughing it off. Well, Al Shabri not so much. I think Al Shabri wants a foul called there, actually. Al Shabri not so much, trying yeah. Trying to say she came over the back, but actually they have changed that rule, as I learned this year when I was coaching and I was screaming it. <laughs> they got told off. Goldsby a three off the back iron. And the ball goes out of bounds. But yeah, no, uh, again, just a great season for, uh, for Angela Ruskin. Again, another playoff spot for them. Yeah, definitely. And like, have, like when we played them, it was... It was tough, like we, we had a loss and a win and then we went and played that playoff game and yeah, we were, it was a shaky start for her but then we picked it up from the third third quarter and then just got to the semi-final but they are a very good team and they, obviously they've got a new coach as well. Yep. Um, so, yeah, the assistant coach. Ben Naylor, team, yeah. Yeah. Team Pink Today's today. assistant coach, yeah, absolutely. So having so many changes in a team, yeah, for them to get to the... Spot was really yeah, really good sure. with Coach Coach Lloyd obviously heading off to the London Lions as part of the assistant coaching team alongside Coach Milligan. And we have 125 remaining. And well, still anybody's game. Team Clary leads 83-76 over Alia Al Shabri, Team Blue, who I'm sure don't want to go 0-2 in rebound all-star games. And so far they have 125 to bring the bank game back to force overtime or even get a win. It happened last year. I think knowing Coach Milligan now, she's going to be asking for them to put all their effort on the defensive end. She needs to, they need to get the ball back. They need to be a little bit scrappy, but composed with it. They need the ball to then go down the other end. So she'll be asking a lot from the defensive side here. Definitely, yeah. And they've been pressing for a few minutes now. So and they're up they go again. Oh, or is that their ball? It is their it ball. It is their ball, yeah, yeah. yeah. Knowing Coach Milligan, they'll be looking for a three off this one, or an and one. 125 remaining, here is Al Shabri. Walton, a three. That's long, and that came off Goldsby last. Faye Dean was looking for it to go out of bounds anyway. You were right there, Annie. They did go for the three-pointer. Straight away as well. I'm lucky to nearly got the steal. For years. <laughs> <laughs> Davids on the floor as Goodser and Goldsby were all over on. I think a travel has actually been called. Oh. Jumble. Jumble, sorry. Jumble, yeah, jumble. Yeah. For some reason I thought the possession arrow went the other way. It didn't, did it? So here is Goldsby. Oh, Gets oh, a fadeaway oh, to go. Yeah. Five point game with one minute and two seconds remaining. Bedoya. And Bedoya is fouled. That's probably one player you'd like to have with the ball in the final minutes. A very composed point guard, Ganessa Bedoya. And I'm a good sure three throw shooter as well. She's going for those free throws, guys. No player played more minutes for the Barking Abbey London Lions than Ganessa Bedoya last season. And has showed great flair here today. She was giving the crowd something to look at with some of her passes Absolutely, today. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I got a message from one of my players saying, number 12, she, her, <laughs> her passes are insane. So, yeah, she is very good with the ball. Absolutely, and... 
bit of a commentator's curse, a very good foul shooter, but Bedoya misses the first and misses the second. But the offensive rebound from Rochelle Davids, big rebound for her and for Team Clary. Rawlings, Bedoya, they will slow it down. Four to shoot though, so they've got to put up something. Rawlings puts it up, puts it in! Huge from Rian Rawlings. That was a great shot. A clutch bucket for her and for Team Clary. And a three second violation has been called on Al Shabri. And you've got to believe that huge basket from Rian Rawlings might have just done the trick. Uh... Yeah, I would say so. You can see Coach Milligan just bringing Foster back into the game now. They're going to look to... If I was the coach, I'd be looking for Liv to get the three-point shot yeah. off right now. We know she's we know she's hot on those today, hitting two back-to-back. -to -back. Definitely. Three overall today for Forster. Rawlings. Did that come off of El Shabri? I thought it came off of foot. I thought it came, off, it came off of foot. Al Shabley was really uh, colourful with that and let Pete Terrell, the ref referee, know about it as well. I think all three of us agreed on that one, though. <laughs> Ending. Rawlings. Davids. And Rawlings again with the offensive rebound and now the fouls are coming in. That was a jump ball again. Jump ball called again. Good grief. It's like, it's like a junior game. How many <laughs> jump balls can you have in a game? Well, while we're, we're here, we're actually going to bring in Worthing Thunder's Hafiz Abdul, who has just joined us in the commentary box. Uh, Hafiz will be joining me for the dunk contest. What have you made of this uh, women's game so far? It's been entertaining, hasn't it? Uh, yes, very entertaining. <laughs> um, each year it's picked up, I guess, so it's really been fun to watch. Um, go watch it from the uh, players room upstairs and there was some pizza too so I uh, appreciate that. Oh that reminds me actually yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. just a, a quick thought on today's men's all-star yeah. game your second one it's mm -hmm. going to be an absolutely thrilling out. contest as you uh, mm -hmm. You know, joining up with your teammates as well, we've yeah. got Andre Arasol, yeah. Ronald Blaine. Yeah, yeah, definitely going to be a lot of fun. Um, um, playing uh, against the other guys too, it's really lined up to be kind of like a north and south. So, yeah. again, you know, a lot of pride in the line. And, um, you know, you definitely want to show that um, it's going to be a good competition. Make it fun for the fans, make it uh, make them a part of it. And, um, yeah, man, it should be a great atmosphere. Absolutely. And good to have you on board. Of course, first you'll be watching the dunk contest that will be taking place at the conclusion of this game, provided, of course, that uh, it doesn't go to overtime. 12.5 seconds left as Team Clary leads 85-78. Rawlings. It's just a case of hold the ball now, really, just for Team Pink, isn't it? Yeah, keep possession <laughs> of the ball, no silly passes, I mean, move the ball around. And I think that oh, will do it. And they've got it. <laughs> <laughs> As Bedoya and Jess Davis fight over the loose ball, but that ends a enthralling <laughs> women's all-star game here at Solon Sports Complex. Team Clary getting the job done, 85 to 78. Faye Indeen leading all scorers with 16 points, seven rebounds, three assists. And Megan Dorney following close behind with 14 points and 10 rebounds. A double double for Megan Dorney. And of course for Team Al Shabri leading the way for them. In fact, leading all scorers was Kat Goldsby, excuse me. It wasn't Faye and Dean, it was Kat Goldsby with 17 points and Roche Walton with 13. Yeah, can we get a team under the hoop, for the great mate? advert for the WNBL and, and for, for British basketball, what a game we, we've just witnessed. Yeah, massively. It, it shows how much this league has grown within the past two seasons. And hopefully from this, we can keep growing and we can keep showing the games next season with more, more commentary and more live streams throughout the league. Absolutely. And uh, Chrissy. Who are your, who's your early thought for MVP? <laughs> there you go, I'll put you, on, I'll put you on the spot. You know what, I think... Um, I want to say 
very Faye ending. You You're going say, Faye ending? Yeah, Faye ending did really, like, she had a great game. Okay. But as well, Helen had 14 rebounds and 11 points. That's Ooh, a really nice. good stats as well. So, And she had her three fouls at really early at the start of the game. So she missed, like, the first half of the game. Um, so I'm not sure who's Chris going to pick. Well, Chris Hughes has the all-important decision as uh, selected media members taking pictures with Team Blue and Team Pink will follow and Alia Al Shabri in the traditional right at the front <laughs> pose. <laughs> Huge smile on her face. But unfortunately for her, 0-2 in uh, rebound all-star games. But it's not about the win, win, losing. Megan Dorney gets MVP. Yeah, she does deserve it. She does deserve Absolutely. It. Well, Faye Endine led the way, but Megan Dorney, what a performance from her 14 points, nine rebounds it was, not 10. That's been taken away. And Chris Hughes now <laughs> posing with Megan Dorney. MVP, Megan Dorney of the women's all-star game following in the footsteps of Katrin Hulme. And just like Katrin Hulme, this will be her final performance here in this country before she heads back off to the States or on to pastures new wherever she may end up. I think she is going back to the States, but then I don't think she knows what her plan is when she gets back there. Or if she has, she hasn't shared it with us yet. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations to Team Clary, who ran out 85, 78 winners over Team Al Shabri as Kat Goldsby led all scores with 17 points for Team Al Shabri but it was Megan Dorney who got MVP 14 points and Faye Endine with 16 points. Congratulations again to Team Clary. My thanks to Chrissy Karpova and to Annie Scanlon who will no doubt enjoy the men's game coming up. It is due to tip off at around six o'clock, but it might be a little late, late running, just in case the uh, dunk contest overruns. I think Ray Akbafuri is waiting to get the uh, MVP, Megan Dorney, in just a second. But just finally, uh, Chrissy, you know, the end to a great WNBL season, we can now officially say, this was the final game of the WNBL season, and what a season it has been. Yeah, definitely. This has been just so nice to see how much um, each team has grown. Like we just said earlier about how the media is starting to get so much better, like the Instagrams, the Twitters, Facebook. So it's so nice to see how each team is just up in their game. And it's, yeah, it's been a great season, and we're looking forward to it. Sure. Absolutely. So. Ray is courtside. He does not have Megan though with her. It's it's Faye Endine who has decided to join the party. <laughs> so Ray just having a quick word with Faye, but Ray, it's all yours. Take it away. Faye is with Faye Endine. Hey, I'm back again. I'm here with Faye Endine. Talk me through that game. How was it for you? Okay for our team, as you can see, this score. But then they started coming back, and uh, we put the game, put the game to bed in the end. So it was good. Yeah. How about your performance today? How did you feel about how you played today? Uh, yeah, I feel like we played quite well, but it's always good to um, everyone get in touch with the ball, everyone get their points. That's, that's what this game's about. Of course. And how about the atmosphere for the day? Like, how does it feel being around all of these people, just showing you love the way that they are up in today? Um, also, especially for the women's game, it's like really good for women's basketball in this country. Like, to see this many people and like the atmosphere is pretty great. Coming again next year? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. That's the plan. Okay, cool. Year, all right, cool. All right, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> Faye, absolute pleasure. Thank you good job much. today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, to Ray and Faye, the Ray and Faye connection there. Post game as uh, both teams <laughs> posing for pictures, Faye Indy not included as she uh, was with us. But uh, my thanks again to Chrissy Karpova and to Annie Scanlon. Team Clary getting the job done, 85, 78. We'll be back in just a few minutes for the dunk contest to join us in just a few minutes. But for now, it's down courtside. All right, so we're back. It was a victory to Team Clary.
What a game that was, Kit. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. As Mayo like you said in the interview just then, you know, they were running, they were running away with it just after half time of the game. At half time, it's a fairly big lead. And then, uh, you know, the other side, they started to make it a little bit closer. And, and we can feel it down here. You know, yeah. We said this would happen. It might be a little short game, but fourth quarter, yeah. if the game's on the line, it was going to give them a little bit. A little bit and we definitely yeah, definitely, and it was brilliant performance by all the women. We had Megan Dorney ended up with the MVP. Could have been any one of them, really, because they were all fabulous out there. And Faye and Dean, she could have been her. It could have been a lot of them. The slam dunk contest is starting soon, so we'll try and wrap it up as quick as possible. But yeah, just what a performance it was by all the girls. They didn't let out the whole time. It, I think it got a bit scrappy at the end because they're probably so tired because they put in so much effort to begin yeah. with. Yeah, exactly. I guess to a point where you know you just lose, even if it's our game, they just desperately cannot lose it. Um, but what a great show as well from the two Sony and Kestrels uh, players, Megan Dorney and Faye and Dean. Of course, Megan Dorney getting the MVP, then Faye and Dean the highest scorer. Yeah. You, so you could see that connection between the two. You could see you could see the Kestrels connection when they were playing. And you can see Stanley trying to work that and there was a few Reading players on that theory team. They were coming together. You could really see that they had a, I think they had a bit more chemistry than Cheryl Reese team. And that was the difference, I, I think that there was a bit on Cheryl Reese team, a lot of them letting get calls going their way. And it was a bit maybe a bit more moaning, a bit more, you know, oh why? Rather than, you know, just sort of getting on and playing a bit. <laughs> Definitely, and then we have to give a mention as well to um, Kat Goldsby as well, who's the highest scorer uh, yeah. for, for our team. Incredible game. Yeah, absolutely brilliant game, yeah. And, you know, I, I feel like we didn't maybe build her up enough heading into the game, but she definitely showed us today yeah. just she how much she was. out on call why she deserved to be here and that she is an all-star. So, yeah, it's an incredible performance by all the women. It, it's an all credit to them. We see the men are just warming up. They are getting ready to do their slam dunk contest. It's going to be, it's going to be a pretty good show. And I can't wait to see what these guys are going to about to do. Yeah, this is going to be really good. Like you said earlier, like this dunk contest, that is pretty much the ultimate show of kind of yeah physical ability. Yeah. You know, and I can't wait to see it. This Hopefully, well athletes come out. This is pure athletes. I could never do this in a million years. <laughs> Whatsoever, what these guys are about to do. Yeah, you, you yeah, could absolutely. add a few inches to my height, and I still probably could never touch the rim either. You know, I just don't have that in me. But yeah, it should be brilliant. Hopefully, we see some really flashy dunks yeah. today or something. You know, they're warming up now. I'm just and oh, it's gonna be. I'm good. liking what I'm seeing already. I'm liking what I'm seeing already. This is what you can see on your screen right now are the highlights of the women's game. Plenty of three points to go about. The women, they put on a show. Some slick passing you see there. This was an incredible bit. A great steal. And laying it up. It was pretty awesome. They did disappoint. The crowd was in full attendance to witness it. I think Chris said during the game and the commentary, they had, they had, they've had to go and sell the players' seats. Yeah. Because there's too many people coming up to watch, <laughs> to watch this game. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them because, you know, who wants to miss this? Uh, as I was saying about Kat Goldsby, it's quite a surprising performance a little bit. But she was so dominant because, you know, I mean, first in steals on the season. Brilliant, defensively. And then sixth in points per game, which is obviously really great. You know, and she, um, you know, she really brought it out today. So, yeah, really. I think she had one of the highlight plays of the game. Yeah, you saw absolutely. the highlight a minute ago where I said, yeah, the steal down here and just going up and just went straight up the pitch. Played the first and got the layout. It, she had one of the plays of the game. It was, it was an all round brilliant game. Yeah, and those are the players that make the difference, aren't they? The ones that can do it both sides, offensively and defensively. Uh, yeah, you know, she really, really showed that today. And one person who just walked past us, Neverson, stepping in just today. She ended up hitting a few free points. We didn't really talk about her pre-game either. She came out and another casual on that team for Cleary. It made a big difference. That, she made a big difference. Hitting a, hit a few frees and she had a great game as well. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I, I believe she's also heading over to the uh, to the states for uh, to, to play college yeah, basketball not. very soon as well. Yeah, it's so, unfortunate these girls are leaving us, but it just shows how good they are because. They're going out to the States, almost the home of basketball, kind of. Yeah. So, you know, it's unfortunate that they're leaving us, but it's because they are so talented and they are exactly. playing at such a great level that they are heading out there. And, you know, their success over across the pond, you know, that only is going to benefit the game here in Britain as well, on, you know, home soil. we got some players checking out the rims yeah. behind us. Yeah. That's getting real. Now they're ready for this dunk contest. Yeah. Yeah, that was just Tyro of Castro was just almost touching the top of the backboard when he was jumping there and just getting ready for his dunk contest. He looked like he was surprised how low it was. <laughs> I think he's wanting more, a bit more of a challenge or something. Oh, I did, we are almost getting ready. We are just a few minutes away. I think we can hand it back up to the commentary, up to John. John, we're getting ready for this, going to be a great show. Oh, absolutely. Dunk contests over the years in any era like NBA or NBL, BBL have always been incredibly well received across the world. And uh, we had a great dunk contest last year with uh, Cameron Hildreth of Wake Forest, one of the uh, judges, Kai Walker, coming up with the win there. So. John Hobbs back with you again and I'm joined by Worthing Thunder forward Hafiz Abdul and it's going to be a lot of fun this isn't it and it's something that you're certainly looking forward to. Yes definitely <laughs> looking forward to this um, having played against a lot of these guys I know uh, what it can be like to be on the receiving end of uh, these guys driving down the lane and it's not fun not fun to be a part of but <laughs> at least here I can admire it and you know be a big fan of it so for sure can't wait to see. So the contestants for the uh, dunk contest Eilis Taiwo or Elias Taiwo, Victor Oleron, Jacob Staniel Tatey, and Zach Powell will be competing here today. Of course, Victor Oleron, a last minute replacement for Worthing Thunder's uh, Veron Ezzi, who. Uh, a great replacement, by the way. And a okay. great replacement, yeah. indeed, and a, a bit of a score to settle from last year as well, as he was in last season's dunk contest. Mm -hmm. As the uh, players just warming up now and. It's been a fantastic event. You've pretty much been here from the start, as most men's players you know, competing in the men's all-star game have, just wanting to just get involved, watch the entire day, watch the women's all-star game and just be part of a great spectacle. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, seeing how it's grown from uh, last year to this year, even last year had a great crowd, had a, had a great atmosphere, um, everybody was, felt involved, you know, even the dunk competition looked was, was as fun. And um, yeah, I think this year has only gotten better. Looking at the crowd now, you can't really see uh, yeah. anywhere to sit down and, and man, it's going to be it's awesome, these guys are going to put on the show. Absolutely, and we joked that uh, this was almost like the official, unofficial start of the summer, even though there's still a week to go uh, for the domestic season. Of course, the WBBL and BBL is still in, in progress, but uh, this is pretty much the end of the uh, National League season, the uh, rebound All Star game. So. Jacob Staniel Tatey of the Westminster Warriors will get us started in this dunk contest. Having seen him throughout the summer as well, a couple of three-on-three tournaments, knowing that you know when he gets that chance to, the way he can, he, how quick he can get up the floor is, is crazy. And a high flyer. Yeah. Indeed. Just wondering what he's going to do for his first attempt. And oh there's the first one. Goodness. Little pump fake. Wow. <laughs> and he double clutched at the top. That's crazy. <laughs> to start with. So it's going to be crazy to see what he ends with. And the one issue we have here, and I must say, is we can't see the scorers. <laughs> oh, right. From the. <laughs> right. I know Kai Walker, who's one of the judges, gave an eight for that. Oh, thinking even more than that. So wow. hopefully the scoreboard here will tell us what uh, what's happened as Victor Olerin now prepares for his first dunk. And 
it oh, goes man. for wow. the almost like almost a 360 wow. reverse. Crazy, crazy. These guys are starting off very strong, very strong. I'm impressed. I know he didn't have much much time to prepare, so no. it's going to be interesting to see how much he's gonna he's he's got in his bag right now, or how much he's just going to do as a freestyle and go for. So knowing him, I don't think there's much he can't do up there. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a great watch. So Zach Powell up next, and Zach Powell can get up as well. And oh there you my go. Goodness. And what's, inc like. what's incredible is they're all doing it first time. Right? This, this is, they haven't had much of a warm-up here. They really haven't. Maybe two, three minutes. Literally a couple jumps. Ilias is, is, yeah, he's got something sinister. Yeah. Prepared. He's Ilias, really a showman too. Ilias Taiwo will be up next. Oh, I think they got the name wrong. Yeah, they have got the name wrong. I... <laughs> Elias is uh, up next. Well, I accidentally called Kyron Martin Tyler Martin once, so <laughs> mistakes happen on live broadcasts and on live TV. Here is Elias Tywo going for oh! his first dunk. <laughs> wow. Switch hands to a windmill. Oh, my goodness. Almost reminiscent of Blake Bowman for the Leicester Riders. I, I don't think I've seen that in person. That's, Ooh. yeah, wow. I think that's nines across the board. Has to be. Has to I be. I think there's a 10 in there as well at the last minute. Has to have the last 10. How high you got on that as well? Punched it. I'm pretty sure the ball hit the floor before he did. Yeah, he's got a lot more left in the tank. As Jordan Whelan and uh, Ben Stanley exchanging words amongst the uh, people at centre court as... A second attempt now for Jacob Staniel Taiti oh, misses. Had our first miss. I know he'll recover though. <laughs> it's all good. What else has he got in the bag? Oh, Goes for the windmill. Wow. wow, yeah, really punched it. Seemed comfortable doing that as well. I was going to well. say, not much of a, of a run up to that yeah. one. Something you can do in your sleep, I'm told, Hafiz. <laughs> <laughs> As Andre Arasol joining in the fun, and a guy who, you know, your teammate at Worthing Thunder, a guy that uh, is just the life of a party, isn't he? As I'm telling you, and it's, it's, you know, like you can, you can wonder if it's just an act he puts on, but he's really, honestly, he smiles like that all the time. Oh, oh my goodness. Ollerin with the. One step. Going across the baseline and windmills at home. I told you, yeah. He's, his freestyling, oh wow, man. Not much he can't do up there, and he's showing us today. These guys are putting on a great show. Smooth as you like, only one Absolutely, attempt. Absolutely, yeah, one attempt missed so far. It's <laughs> Ronald Blaine and Seth Haller. They're definitely talking I mean, about who, yeah. who their money's on. <laughs> Zach Powell. Seeing the first round. Zach Powell's second attempt. Lobs it up, goes Ooh. for the windmill, and almost catches his hand. Wow. On the rim, yeah, on the he's, net, even. He's risking it all right now. Oh, lacing them. He didn't even have them laced up. up. He didn't wow. even have them laced up. Get those Kobe's laced. All those KDs, actually. Sorry. There we go. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Zach Pal. <laughs> I think was just chucking it to uh, everything Chris there, the, uh, the micro blogger on Instagram who's here today. And here comes Zach Powell for his next attempt. Uh-oh. You can kind of forgive the players. They've been so successful with the dunk attempts. And they're all smoking each other up. Yeah, look at this. Everyone getting together. Everyone cheering him on. We all just want to see a show. Oh. There we go. involved. Let's go. So Zach Powell and Jeremiah Jenkins hey, and Zach Powell off the work. lob. Always makes a dream work. Yeah, so you love to see that, though. You love to see that. Absolutely. It. And uh, Jeremiah Jenkins of the Reading Rockets helping out teammate Zach Powell. But it looks like sevens across the board. Nice. There's an eight, I think, in there as well. I agree, yep. 
I think next year we might need to get the uh, judges facing us. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. Elias Taiwo coming back for his second attempt. For a minute there, I thought it was going for two. Would have been insane. That would have been nuts. Elias Taiwo then with his second round attempt. Bounces it off the backboard. Oh. Oh. Head on the rim. Timing right for that. His head was nearly at the rim. Honestly. Goes again. Oh yeah, he's looking. I think he's looking for that honey dip. I think so. He wants one more attempt. And if he is going for what you're saying he's going for, especially with a bounce pass off the backboard, that's exceedingly difficult. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. My goodness. <laughs> But he succeeded with confidence at the third attempt. Honestly, it's so deceptive how quick he gets up and how high he is at the rim. And I think that's three nines. And it is 28, I heard that, and yep. that's the highest score of this dunk contest. So Elias Taiwo with setting the bar, it would seem. Really is, really is. Honestly, and uh, the crowd obviously know what he can, uh, what he can do, mm. this being his home court. So you can only expect him to put on a show for them. Oh, Victor. Okay. So Victor Oleren and Elias Taiwo, I believe, will be competing in the final. This is going to be a really good final. So each player had two, just to set the rules out, as, as you probably know, each team, each player, excuse me, had two rounds to do a dunk, had three attempts to do it. Or four, really. I think four was the maximum. Mm -hmm. And whoever got the highest scores, the first two with the highest scores, reached the final. These guys are not going to hold back, too. And exactly. <laughs> That's Ron Blake. Ron doesn't miss a thing. <laughs> <laughs> he saw it. Oh, he's, he's pointing at me as well, yeah. Creep. <laughs> I'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it. He's uh, mic'd up, so yeah, he's definitely. Uh... Fun one. He creates so much content, man. He's such a good guy to watch. I swear. Of course, that mic'd up content will be on the Rebound social media channels, no doubt about it, throughout the Victor, week. Because oh Victor Olerin. Yeah, holding nothing back, going for the East Bay. Olerin of the Thames Valley Cavaliers. Something I've seen him make, yeah. And the guy's cheering on the crowd. Everyone getting involved, you know. There's really no teams today. Oh. And there it is! Oh! Feet oh as well, goodness. and then he took his hat off. Wow, yeah, definitely raising the level. Definitely raising the level. So, the bar has been set a few tens. I think there was even a nine in there. No one, Victor, he's, he's not in anything to lose, always in it to win it. So, yeah, these guys, same with Ilias. I know he's gonna go crazy right now. He knows that the bar's been set. Go hard or go home, Elias Taiwo. He's got some big shoes to fill here. He's got to jump out of the gym for this ne next dunk. Goes oh! through the legs himself! First attempt, and he's making it known. He did it on his first attempt. Oh! Crown him, he's making it known. Yep, yep, he's saying Three stop Three tens! Him. Yes, let them know. <laughs> Elias, yep. Three tens! A perfect score Never for Elias Taiwo. Off two feet as well. Casual as you like. And Elias Taiwo has won the 2023 Rebound All-Star Dunk Contest sponsored wow. by Kent Baller. And wow, yes. That was <laughs> huge. That was crazy. That was a, <laughs> I knew he was going to do it. He had to match it. He knew it. He knew it. My goodness me. Man. It was a huge... Huge ask, especially after the dunk that Victor Olleran got. But Elias Taiwo was literally like, yeah. it's all right, I've got this. Yeah. One attempt. Didn't, didn't doubt himself Hammered for a second. Up. Not much of a run up to casual as you like. Absolutely. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like the camera might have missed how little of a warm up <laughs> these guys had just to be in there and flying like this. So. You see the replays wow. of an incredible dunk contest there leading up perfectly to the men's all-star game due to tip off at 6 p.m i don't think we'll have too many issues 
with that. It's 20 past five at the moment. Yeah. And hopefully Ray has got Elias Taiwo as well. Oh, oh, it there's is, a that's final. something else planned. Okay, oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. Elias Taiwo was going for the bonus. Wow. Just showing you guys what he has. <laughs> Just showing you guys what he, what he had planned and how far he's willing to go. He had a bonus round there. My goodness. Expect nothing less from him, yeah. <laughs> but what a dunk contest there and sets it up perfectly for you Honestly, guys coming yeah. up at six o'clock. Keeping a level high, the women's game was great. Mm. That dunk contest was great. Three-point competition was great. So now, yeah, hopefully the men's game has to follow. Absolutely. And for you, you know, just missed out to Team Johnson in points last season. You had 34 mm. points, actually, in um, last season's uh, All-Star event. Mm -hmm. You know, 5 of 12 from downtown, but mm -hmm. of course Taylor Johnson coming up clutch in the final seconds. Mm -hmm. As you'd with expect, that three, yeah. yeah. With that three. Big time baller, yeah. Absolutely, in the final seconds, winning it 112-111. So mm -hmm. And you just, again, you know, a great occasion and just something great to be a part of. Honestly, honestly, last year was like, you know, same as you we thought, oh, you know what, we're just going to have a bit of fun. But then, mm. you know, you get out there and everyone on the floor likes to compete. So, you know, there's that bit where it's like, ah, we could chill, but it's not in us to, to, to relax, you know. So Absolutely. Doing that, just put on a show. And then it went down to the wire, obviously very unplanned and just it's just how the guys are. This year is going to be exactly the same. Yeah. You know? And ending a... a Good season with the Worthing Thunder for yourself. Obviously, you know, disappointed not to mm -hmm. come up with any trophies. Heaven mm -hmm. Storm, you know, surpassing any any expectations you could think of, going 41-0, winning mm -hmm. all the trophies. But regards of that, you know, a good season. You've mm -hmm. got, you know, finished runners up, got mm -hmm. two two finals. Yep. Nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and it just says, uh, you know, about the league, you know, we had some great competition and, and um, even teams doing uh, better than expected, um, teams uh, rising to the occasion, you know, there wasn't really um, as many nights off as you would think in the D1, you know, the relegation teams were given battles and, you know, didn't go uh, didn't go with any um, down without any wins. And, yeah, it's a, it was a great league this year, honestly. Absolutely. Great league, great competition, fun to be a part of. I feel like the the um, exposure of the league has done nothing but grown, especially lot, um, this year. Year, so I feel like I expect the same next year. Should be uh, even more competition. Should be even higher. And um, yeah, man, making these events just just as more fun. Just absolutely way more fun. So well, I'm gonna let you get off and uh, warm up with your teammates. Of course, representing Team Pink for mm -hmm. today, Team Johnson. Uh, good luck today. And thank you so much. Thank you for having it's, me. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure having you. So Afiz Abdul, everybody, great to have him on board for this dunk contest. And it sets it up nicely for our final event of the day, the men's all-star game here at the Solent Sports Complex in Southampton as Team Whelan goes up against Team Johnson. Of course, Team Johnson won this event last season as Taylor Johnson had 37 points and the game-winning three-pointer in the 112-111 win. It was a thrilling game, a thrilling conclusion to a great National League season. And we are roughly 25 minutes away from tip-off here in our final game of the day. If you've joined us on the Rebound Basketball Blog channel on YouTube, welcome everyone. Great to have you all on board here on a sunny day on the south coast of England. And such players as Hafiz Abdul, of course, Sam Newman, co-MVP Taylor Johnson, Orlan Jackman, Elias Foreman, Raheem May Thompson, Troy Cracknell, Jordan Whelan, Jace Harrison, Jordan May will be suiting up in our game amongst others suiting up in what will be a fantastic conclusion to the day's festivities and the basketball season for the national leagues as of course next sunday all eyes will be on the iconic o2 arena 
as the Women's British Basketball League and British Basketball League playoff finals will end the domestic season and the fun of the summer time starts when of course we'll have three on three events hoops fix all-star classic national team camps and friendlies and tournaments it'll all be coming to your screen as we continue our incredible push our incredible promotion of this great sport in our country so roughly 25 minutes until tip-off here. And in just a few moments, we will be taking it to our game day presenters. And as for me, I will be taking a very short break, but I will be with you for the men's all-star game in just a bit. So the next prize is a signed, is a signed captain's replica jersey. I'm just waiting to be told which one we're doing first. We're going to do. This is for a signed Jordan Wheeler uh, playing vest, and it's a yellow ticket. Make sure I get it up the right way. It's number 68, yellow 68. And we are back again with the one and only legend, Elias Taiwan, dark champion, all star. Talk to me, man. How'd it feel? Uh, it feels great. It's great to be here, be a part of the D1 people here. I'm enjoying it a lot today. Yeah. Talk me through your dunks, though, man. What were you thinking? Um, I was just thinking, get through the first round. That was the most important thing. Have a nice first dunk so you can relax in the second round. And then just make sure you don't miss a dunk. If you don't miss a dunk, you have a high chance of getting to the final. And luckily, because I uh, had the highest score in the first round, I got to go second. Which meant I got to see what my opponent done, and that made me know what I was going to do. So when you saw Victor go between the legs after, you know, a couple of attempts, yeah. how, what, what was your thought process behind that? My mentality was, initially I was going to pick a different dunk, but I realised if someone's missed two dunks, and they've only got one dunk left, and they make it, I can do that same dunk and get a higher score if I make it first. So that was just, it was just a play on words and it worked out for me. But knowing you personally, I know you got more in the locker though, so... Oh, I did. I definitely did. But oh, like, I was just waiting to see if anyone could bring that out of me. Tease the people. What did you have, man? Um, I was going to go between the legs over someone. Ooh. Oh, I was going to jump over someone. Ooh. Let's finish it with two people. <laughs> nah, I didn't get a chance, but we'll see. If, if I'm here next year, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see, man. We'll see. But what about what about um, how do you feel about you know just the event in general? Pardon? How do you feel about the event in general? Just it's been great. There's a lot of people here. It's almost sold out. Uh, everyone's cheering for everyone. It's very a community based thing. Enjoying it today. Yeah. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for being around, man. Always love seeing you jump over, jump, jump up and down, and do whatever it is you're doing, man. Hope I see you around soon, man. Thank you. More jumps in the future. <laughs> I appreciate you.
in the SSC house. Have we got any fans that make the trip from Florida? one 
seen these boys, they've done the three-point contest, they've done the dunk contest, they've showcased those skills, they were mightily impressive, and now we get to see them put it all together in a match. But I think they're going to show off their skills, I think there's going to be a bit of flair going on. I, I get that feeling as well, definitely, yeah. I mean, we just seen Tywell, unfortunately, not playing in the actual game. Yeah, we do have the three-point champion, Jordan May, who will be in that. He did say in his interview earlier after his three-point victory, he was maybe going to go for a logo shot here and now. He may have a bit of fun and he's saying how good the vibe is and that everyone's going to be trying to show off their skills a bit. Yeah, yeah, I think I heard him mention that he was going to try a, a three-point from the logo. Yeah, yeah. Like that. So that could be interesting to see whether or not he makes it. You know, it's another thing, but I'll, I'll be back him. I'll, I'll back him. I'll back him on a local shot. I'll be very impressed. The way he was shooting nice. earlier, I'll back him doing that definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but you know, guys, a whole lot of great players. We spoke earlier on Team Johnson. We've got what three? Oh, sorry, two Hamilton players and three Worthing Thunder players. Yeah, I think that Hamilton matchup with Johnson and his teammate Sam Newman. Sam Newman, best assister in the league. I think he's gonna. We saw in the women's game, having people that can pass the ball around and assist is so crucial because it brings that team together and that chemistry. And when people haven't played each together much, which these guys haven't, as they've just been <laughs> gelled together in the last couple of days, someone like Sam Newman is going to be really important just to fire that ball around, find someone open and get a clean shot away. Yes, it's no coincidence that Taylor Johnson decided with his first pick that he wanted to bring you know, Sam Newman with him, yeah. as you say, is, you know, the leading assist on that team. And then, as for the Worthing Thunder players as well, we've got Andre Arasol in the game, who's, you know, one Defensive Player of the Year, so now two-time Defensive Player of the Year. Somebody who's very well-known around Sonnen as well, so he used to play for the Kestrels. So, yeah, I, I, I think I'm, I'm liking Johnson's team personally. I, you also got the Kestrels pair, Kai Walker and the Kestrels captain, Elias Borman in that team. They seem to be... I, I th we won't know until we see, but I'm seeing maybe a bit more chemistry in that team than there could be over the, over Whedon's team. But across the board, everyone's a fantastic player here. Yeah, and you, and you talk about chemistry. Obviously, you know, Worthing Thunder did lose. I don't want to maybe, yeah. maybe hit a nerve, but they did recently lose in the final to Hemelstorm. I know that a lot of their, uh, a couple of their players, you know, congratulated Hemel on their win. But it's going to be interesting seeing how those those two sides, obviously top sides, but how they click today after only a couple of weeks ago playing in the most important game of the season 100%. against each other. Yeah, hundred percent. There's, there's always a bit of rivalries, but they've got to be put, put to one side and they're going to play together and go ball out. And I think they mentioned earlier it's the way that the teams have been picked as well. It's almost been split as a north versus south. Yeah. It has. If you, if you look at the lineups, if you look at where they're all from, it's almost a north versus south, and that may add to the tension almost against one another, kind of. It's yeah, definitely it might do. And, you know, we, like I said earlier, we wouldn't want it any other way. We, we don't just want to come here and, obviously, yeah, we want to see the players having fun, smiling and laughing, but we also want to see them bring their A game. We, yeah. we want to see them being competitive. That's what they do best, and that's why they're in this game in the first place. Yeah, I don't doubt them them bringing their A game. They, we've seen them warming up now. They've been warming up for maybe the, since the dunk contest, the last 20 minutes, and they've been hitting even more three points and even more dunks because they are getting ready to put on a show. It's going to be pretty awesome. And, um, yeah, I'm look, really looking forward to this one. Yeah, we, we've spoken a bit about Taylor Johnson, his side. Now let's talk a little bit about Team Whelan. Because as you mentioned, they have Jordan May, who won the three-point yeah. contest earlier. He's going to be feeling good. But then also another guard on their team, Josh Gademi, who had four 30-plus uh, point games this season. So yeah. he's going to be, you know, he's, he's going to be battling him for that big, you know, the top scorer. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, 100%. Kind of, well, I, 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 I think the way I see it is maybe, maybe similar to the previous game. And I think just looking up to the commentary box, 
John may be ready. Yeah, I got the thumbs up. So, John, it's going to be another great game. How are you feeling? Well, at the moment, um, I'm feeling full because I've, I've just had uh, some pizza. But either way, it's going to be a fitting climax to the National Basketball League season, no doubt about it. And it's going to be an absolutely fantastic game here today. John Hobbs alongside Hemel Storm assistant coach Michael Darlow. Michael, welcome. And this is going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> To my allegiances are with the purple, obviously. <laughs> um, straight away. Yeah, I'm going to put that down straight away, but really looking forward to a very talented All-Star game. There's stars all over the floor. Absolutely. And this is almost a North v South game, isn't it? As, you know, Hemel and Worthing are, are pretty much joining forces for this game against uh, Team team Whelan, who have you know, Manchester players. There's a few Reading players in there as well. Team Newcastle. It's just all just you know the best celebrating the best of, of British basketball, the best of the, the National Basketball League. You know, two weeks ago we had the uh, playoff final, which was a fantastic spectacle, and now it culminates in an all-star game, you know, with an all-star cast. Absolutely. When when you saw the um, interview when Taylor was picking his team, I couldn't believe he was pulling out Worthing names. So I was like, what is going on? Um, but yeah, it does make for an interesting team. I'm interested to see how Dan is going to start. Is he going to go with the two Hemel guys and mm. the three Worthing players? I don't know. But either way, there is going to be stars on the floor. Absolutely. So we are getting ready about three minutes away until tip-off here. And it, as you say, it will be interesting to see who the starting fives are. We've been tinkering with who our, who our starting fives are going to be. So for Team Whelan, it'll be Joshua Gademi, Troy Cracknell, Raheem May Thompson, Jordan May, and of course, Jordan Whelan leading the way there. And for Team Johnson, it'll be Andre Arasol, Hafiz Abdul, Sam Newman, Taylor Johnson, and Orlan Jackman. It's a Hemel Worthing starting lineup pretty right much here. just as you predicted i actually thought seth hall might have snuck into that starting five so as usual the coach beats the commentator <laughs> as the teams are being uh, introduced and as the teams are being introduced you know the season ends and for you guys you know history the second team in the national basketball league to finish the season unbeaten scooping all the trophies in the bounce but you, you did have your, you know, your, your rough parts, your stumbles. Teams have pushed you all the way. Loughborough took you to overtime, of course. Worthing pushed you all the way in three of the four games played. It's been an exciting season, but 41-0, what an accomplishment. Yeah, it was a truly amazing season. And uh, Drew used uh, an analogy for towards the end of the season about it taking a village. Mm. Um, and it really was all about that. And the group of guys we had this year were the most collective group of players we've ever had. Um, and that really did put us through the tough moments. But for a way, I thought it was done. I really thought it was done. I thought, that's it. The, uh, the streak is over. Hakeem's uh, girlfriend actually turned the tail off because she thought we lost. <laughs> and texted Hakeem saying, uh, oh, good luck in the next game. Um, so that kind of sums up what situation we're in right there. But yeah, a great year. And so pleased we could thank all of our incredible volunteers and fans. Mm. Of course, uh, league MVP Aaron Rye unavailable for this game. Of course, he jetted back home to Canada as soon as this game, as soon as the season ended. David Moyer for Worthing Thunder also unavailable as well as uh, I think there was a few others as well. But uh, it's either way, it's about who we've got here. Seth Suave was the other one. Yeah, that was yeah. the name I was thinking of. Excuse me. It's been a long day. So as Team Blue gets uh, introduced and on paper, probably the underdogs, you would say, due to the fact that Hemel and Worthing, the top two in the league, are all on the same team and in the starting five. But there's a lot of firepower in there. There's a Reading 1-2 combination, Jeremiah Jenkins and Troy Cracknell, that lead the way. Jordan Whelan can score anywhere on the floor, can't he? Um, and then you've got Victor Ollerin, who you know, can jump out of the gym. <laughs> Yeah. All of them had 
huge impacts for their own individual clubs. Jenkins and Cracknell, unbelievable for, mm. for the Red Inn throughout the season. When we played him in the semi-final, unbelievable performances from the pair of them. Uh, You're a big fan of them. <laughs> May Thompson led the leagues in blocks this year. Uh, great teammate and uh, does the little things that the stat sheet doesn't mm. really realise. Uh, been around the game for a while. Yeah, it's going to be a great matchup for sure. And six all-star, six two-time all-stars appearing here today: Hafiz Abdul, Ronald Blaine, Andre Arasol, Taylor Johnson, Victor Olerin, and Jace Harrison all making their second rebound all-star appearance. Of course, Safis Abdul went for 34 points, five three-pointers last year, but he was bettered by Taylor Johnson's incredible 37 points, including a game-winning three-pointer from the wing, just right where Kai Walker is right at this moment. And Victor Ollerin, of course, he chipped in with 12 points on five for seven shooting in the first All-Star game, but um, it's just you know, a thrilling climax to a great season. We're two minutes away from it and should be a lot of fun. But one thing we have to mention, and we mentioned it earlier on, a near sellout crowd, yeah. but it is officially now a sellout crowd for this All-Star game here at Solent Sports Complex. That is an incredible achievement. Yeah, it's great to see, and Chris has done a fantastic job to make this event happen. Um, you look around right now, everyone's here supporting British basketball, mm. but it's also nice to see a few people wearing their home colours as well. Seeing yeah. a few red in tops, seeing a few hemel tops. It's really nice that we've all come together at the end of the year to celebrate a great season, and, and what a showcase to finish it off. Absolutely. I'm just fascinated to see who are going to take the shots. <laughs> <laughs> takes the shots for their team, so who's going to take the shots today? That was one of the uh, key points that uh, the one-time rebound All-Stars head coach, Julian Stanley, actually put last year. He was trying to balance who will actually take the big <laughs> shots and who will take uh, the, who will run the offences, and it just ended in a conundrum of different rushed offences because each player just wanted to take it all in themselves. But, um, Great atmosphere here at Solent Sports Complex as you see the team blue getting their last second instructions from what is, has been a very busy head coach on Ben Stanley today. Dan Watts of the Nottingham Hoods, the other end, and Ben Stanley um, assisted today by Plymouth City Patriots guard LBC Dusha, who is here today. LBC. There's a few BBL players in attendance um, here as well today, but uh, also a lot of WNBL and uh, NBL players from uh, across the league. I see a few Hemel tops in in the crowd as well, which is awesome to see. It's all the kids at the front. Absolutely, they're all having a good time, aren't they? Really enjoying themselves. That's what it's all about. And yet we're focused on the players on the screen. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. see Ben Stanley drawing something on his board. I'm interested to see what Dan and Ben will plan for this game in terms of what what stylish play. Yeah. Yeah. Very first offense of last year's uh, all rebound all star game was Taylor Johnson drilling a three really. <laughs> within the first five seconds. So maybe that might happen, I don't know. But um, all star games traditionally all across uh, Europe and the world are fun spectacles, you can say, but towards the latter areas of the game, you know, particularly in late in the fourth quarter, the action does get a little more serious, a little more competitive. It's was a very competitive women's all-star game late earlier on today where Team Clary defeated Team Al Shabri. So I've just seen Sam and Taylor do the little, look, see they're talking to Orlan as well. So he's telling Orlan <laughs> to tip the ball to him and Taylor will run by the, behind the back of Cracknell. Look, that's right there. That's brilliant. I love to Our see that. first play has already been done. I'm annoyed they've told Orlan about it, but yeah. <laughs> I reckon all I will tip it to Sam and Sam will run it and uh, Taylor will run in that layup. They've, they've had Straight the away. Hemel's main <laughs> offensive set has been has been broken. 
Jesus. <laughs> you know, you spotted it as that well. was the that was the actual that was the reason for 41 and 0. Really, yeah, it was that right it here. was that one play. <laughs> Drew's gonna kill me. Uh, yeah, here we go. So Tim Brown, veteran official, getting ready, and Orlan Jackman, Raheem May Thompson will jump it up, and straight away. Oh. It was going to go to Sam Newman, but... Taylor gone, he was gone. <laughs> Taylor just, yeah, he was off to the races, wasn't he? But uh, no opening score for Taylor Johnson in back-to-back -back rebound All-Stars yet. Certainly not in quick succession. So here we go. Well, there's the lob. There's the lob and Cracknell <laughs> with the finish. Ben Stanley's well happy with that. Look at him. That's brilliant. Ben Stanley with a big smile on his face. As Jordan May with the assist. So is this another drawn-up play? Can't do plays in all-star games. Lob, two lobs, two lobs back here is Gademi, and here is Whelan pulling up for three. And Johnson with the loose ball. And here comes Team Johnson with Johnson. Newman right in the corner. He shot so well from three this year. One of his standout performances, especially from the corner as well. Mm. The attention that Taylor, Aaron and Akeem got, and then he was able to knock down the shot, was a huge part of our success. 40 and Troy Cracknell Absolutely. Doing what he does best. Pull up jump shot. 44% from downtown this season for Sam Newman as Arasol puts up three. Of course, a former Solent Kestrels man. Played on this court many a times as Johnson nearly stole it. In fact, does get the ball as Raheem May Thompson lost the ball. I wonder how these refs are going to call this game. What a difficult game, because you want to you want to create some highlights. You don't want it to be stop start. It's a difficult one to manage. But. Absolutely. It was a conversation myself, Annie and Chrissy had in the uh, women's game. Of, okay. You know, how do you how do you referee it? Do you let the play go or do you, you call it as you see it? And referees did call a lot of fouls in that women's game as Abdul puts up a three from the wing and is off the back iron. Troy Cracknell to Whelan. Whelan, good defense there from Abdul. Gudemi for three, misses everything. Newman <laughs> says thank you very much, and here comes Sam Newman. Jackman. Jackman a three. Jackman gets it. Of course, he knows these rings very well. Another great year, shooting 42.5% from three. He is not going to hesitate. When he has that much space, it is going to go up. Cracknell, no hesitation himself, but misses everything with that. So as you would expect from an all-star game, it's quite loose, you know, it's both teams chucking up some threes, getting to know each other a little bit early doors. Six to five in favor of Team Johnson. Here is Johnson, good defense from May Thompson, but Johnson with the finish. That's classic Taylor Johnson. Hesitated a little bit on the trap, waited for the defender to separate, and then he drove again. Jordan May with the miss two, and here comes Abdul, who had 34 points last year in the All-Star game, as Orlan Jackman with a <laughs> scoop layup and gets it to go. <laughs> I think a young Orlan might have, uh, might have dunked that one, but still a stylish play. And a steal there as Whelan's pass finds no one. This is good. But Andre Arasol, Newman, a three, gets yes. it. Yes, Sam Newman. Second three for already. Sam Newman. Two a two from downtown, and a quick timeout has been called by coach Dan Watts, Team Johnson, up 10 to four. <laughs> and a few of the Hemel fans looking at you and you giving your <laughs> nod of approval. I didn't celebrate. <laughs> I'm here for both teams. Of course you are. A great, end, a great start, though, to the game for Team Johnson, up 13 to four, actually, with 7.14 remaining. And as said, both teams just getting loose, getting you know, to know each other a bit. And so far, Team Johnson has been fine. On the field, I think it's a bit worse than that. Actually, I think the live stats might be a little bit behind. But uh, hell alive! Now the uh, scoreboard has actually changed. It's not 14 to three. But well, either way, I think they originally had cracked the second shot. Yeah. That was a three, but it was actually a two. So that's how it should be. Still, should be four yeah, points. it should be four. So Cracknell's on four, so it should be four for Whelan. Yeah, it should be 13 to four. Look at this lot. Look at this lot on the floor right now. They're scheming something. What's being drawn <laughs> up? So we have three Worthing players, two Hemel players on the floor. I mean, that starting five alone would...
cause some major damage, not just in the uh, National Basketball League, but it could also do some damage in the British Basketball League, you have to say. <laughs> so, Team Johnson leads 13 to 4. The scoreboard is correct, the live stats are correct now, and away we go with 7.09 remaining in the first. Here is Cracknell. Gudemi drives at Jackman. Step back two. And Johnson tips it to Abdul. Abdul straight away a three. And that misses everything. And Team Blue get the ball. That's Gudemi's bread and butter, what happened down there. I hope he doesn't come away from taking that shot again. Isolation on the wing, he got that a lot for the hoods. Hope he, hope he continues to take that shot. Here we go. And Gudemi gets it again. And misses again off the feed from Whelan. Here comes Arasol. Can't go under Arasol, Arasol for three, and that misses everything. And as you say, yeah, you know, when you go under a screen with Arasol coming up, he's always going to shoot that three. Yeah, he's got no hesitation. And absolutely, 34% three-point shooter for the season, Andre Arasol, in his first season with the Thunder. He does so much. He did so much for the Thunder this year. His offense, his defense is superb, and rightly got some recognition in the end of season awards. Inside Taylor Johnson again. And that's the problem you have when you're guarding Taylor Johnson. A lot of teams try and face guard him, and then the backdoor cut is always wide open. So they've got that easy two from the feed from Newman. Absolutely one of the best off ball movers in the game, Taylor Johnson, as Raheem May Thompson misses the fadeaway jumper. Newman, <laughs> big three for Sam Newman. And Troy Cracknell comes up with it, and away comes Here we go. Whelan. Whelan with the finish. The first. You could say our first dunk of the game. Yeah, that would be, that'd be <laughs> Looked good. like a layup, right? <laughs> that would be good for Team Whelan because Team Johnson want to get out in transition. So if they can make it a half-court game, they might limit some of the easy shots they've had previously. So like this right now. Here is Abdul driving, going glass, gets it to go, and a foul. Bit of a continuation of play, but referee Tim Brown judges that to be a three-point play. So Afiz Abdul will go to the line. And Afiz Abdul was actually going to be subbed out by teammate Ronald Blaine. Instead, Orlan Jackman will take a seat. And Ronald Blaine, who didn't play at 100% in the playoff final, but uh, still you know, managed a good game uh, against you guys at Hemel. So both Jackman and Gademi have come off the floor now and been replaced by smaller guards. So it's Jace Harrison you see there and yeah. Jeremiah Jenkins into the game. Yeah. So you might see a bit more space under the basket with no bigs occupying that. Of course, Jeremiah Jenkins, a clutch three-point shooter, especially in the corner. And there he is now waiting for the pass, but Raheem May Thompson doesn't need him. Here is Blaine. I can't believe Blaine, <laughs> Blaine is playing after that kick king final where he dislocated his finger. <laughs> Sums him up as a person, really. Absolutely. Turned it up and got playing again. And as, play. as said, wasn't at 100% in the playoff final either. You know, it was only at 50% after spraining his ankle in the semi final win over Derby. That's what he gives to your team, though. Dives on loose balls, doesn't mm. really matter the environment, doesn't really matter how he's feeling, he'll give it his all. And into the game for the first time, Seth Hall of the Nottingham Hoods, and what a season he has had. 20 points, five rebounds, four assists, shooting around 44% from the field. And even though Nottingham didn't get to the playoffs, you know, not uh, an improvement on the season before where they were in the top four, but you know, what a season he had under Dan Watts. Yeah, and he had the license to shoot, and he really did shoot it. As soon as he stepped over that halfway line, we had to pick up and find someone, mm. and I think the same thing will happen today. He really, his reputation alone creates so much space for the Hoods to attack. And I'm sure the same thing will happen with these boys. And here he is marking Jenkins, Whelan. Stolen, nearly stolen by Newman. And Whelan misses everything with his three-point attempt. Here is Newman. Back to Johnson, the Hemel 1-2 punch. And I think we need to shut Taylor Johnson misses everything. And <laughs> we need to shut that fire exit. That's two air balls now. <laughs> and Ronald Blaine, Worthing Football Club are actually competing in the Vanarama. <laughs> Southern League uh, playoffs today and uh, I know Ronald Blaine was uh, a bit of a supporter there as Jenkins hits a three. <coughs> Here is Newman, finds Johnson a three, gets it to go from pretty much the same <laughs> spot 
where he won it last year for, it was Team Blue he was for last year, so now a switching of allegiances. 22-11 in favor of Johnson. As Cracknell misses, there and here go. comes Seth Hall. And Seth Hall, it's a good idea from Seth Hall, and Sam Newman couldn't read the pass. Sam Newman had altitude sickness. He's normally the one bringing the ball up. He's never out there that <laughs> far in transition. He's normally hovering, waiting for the ball to come back. And here is Jenkins. Right, a fantastic season with the Rockets, along with this man, Troy Cracknell. He loves that pull-up. And there's a fair few Reading Rocket fans in attendance here today. It's only about a 50-minute drive as Blaine goes inside. He was looking for the dunk. Harrison, of course, had a great season with the Trailblazers. Here is Jenkins driving at Hall, blocked by Abdul. And here is Blaine for three. And Harrison with the rebound, and here comes Jenkins, <laughs> who is deciding not to drive at Blaine. Blaine eyed him up there. <laughs> here is Cracknell. To May Thompson. Both teams really scrappy at the moment as May Thompson gets it back again and misses at the second attempt. Yeah, they've got to be careful a little bit here, Team Whelan. 13 points already. There's so much scoring on the pink. They could push this lead even further. Entering the final three minutes as that will be a foot violation as Sam Newman's bounce pass to Taylor Johnson missed its mark as Elijah Bailey, Elias Portman and Kai Walker come into the game for the first time. Newman, Abdul... Elijah Bailey had a great year for Loughborough this year. Johnson comes out. And yeah, Elijah Bailey, what a season he had with Loughborough. 20 points leading the Riders to a, a very solid 15 and 11 season, despite, mm -hmm. you know, their injury woes. And there he is. There's Elijah <laughs> Bailey and the foul. And he had success in the Bucks competitions as well. Absolutely, yeah. Was just about to touch on that as well. You know, a great success away from the NBL as well. And, you know, Really good season in the Bucks League as well for Bailey as he now will go to the foul line. As Elias Pullman just lacing them up before the free throw. And Bailey makes good on his first three points of the game. Here is Olleren. Team Whelan got really small, so no, no obvious big on the floor. So let's see how that changes the way they play. Uh -oh. Walker, Walker yeah. with the finish. That's last year's dunk champion, right? Yeah. Reminded everyone he still got it. Olleren oh. doesn't get it to go. Whelan was nearly close to dunking it home himself. And there's Seth Hall for three. Off the bank. Nearly banked it in. He was shooting that in the, in the and, beginning. Yeah, and Hall again. goes again. <laughs> he was going for back-to-back -back banks. Olleren stolen by Poorman. And now Elijah Bailey with all the time in the world. And we go to our final two minutes of the first quarter. Jenkins, blistering speed, lays it up and in. Reading Rocket fans loved that. He had a great start to the year, but in the second half he showed just how, just why he's been selected as an all-star. Bailey a three. Six quick points for Elijah Bailey. Well, eight points, excuse me, for Elijah Bailey. Here is Jenkins. Trying to put the moves on Hall. Hall not buying it. New um, Harrison a three. And Seth Hall comes up with it. And Blaine, in transition, <laughs> decides to just lay it up and in. His <laughs> <teammates are> <laughs> and um, getting some boos amongst the Silent Sports Complex fans and his teammates. <laughs> As Walker with the strip, and here comes Bailey. Bailey, a pull-up three, and that goes straight to Andre Gale into the game for the first time. Gale, of course, for the Manchester Magic. Olleren putting the moves on Hall, fades away and misses the two. That's Gale, a three, gets it. 
Whelan's done that so many times already in this game, getting after offensive balls and getting second chance opportunities. He was great at the, for the Bradford Dragons doing that, and he's doing the same thing again right now. Here is, well, Hall was going to go for it, but he missed the ball completely. Here is Gale in transition, looking for Ollerin for the lob, and here is Bailey, final 17 seconds of the first quarter. Shot clock is turned off, and Elijah Bailey now putting the moves on Gale. Gale driving, uh, stolen away by Whelan. And Harrison, final seconds, that will count, and it goes! Victor Ollerin on the buzzer. That should count. I think the referees are just going to confer. In fact, they're actually going to the table. That should count. Basket and there gets. you go, there's the confirmation. <laughs> the crowd are happy. <laughs> and that ends the first quarter here at Solent Sports Complex. And Team Johnson leads 34 to 18 over oh, real, but what? Uh, Team Whelan. And I mean, you know you can't the see the, the comments yeah. that are coming onto the rebound YouTube feed, but I will say that they are dominated by two particular people. Is it Aaron Ray? Aaron Ryan might be one of them, <laughs> and Seth Suave is another one, yes. And Aaron Wright is a firm supporter of Team Whelan, I must say. Shots fired. <laughs> so, comments aside, um, right now, Taylor Johnson leading the way for his own team with nine points, and right now, Jeremiah Jenkins has five to lead the way for Team Whelan. An entertaining first quarter, but one where, you know, it's the Hemel and Worthing one-two <laughs> punch right now, isn't it? I like the way I like the way Chris has decided to do this at the end of the season. So you see like the NBA All-Star, they do it during the year, and yeah. the guys aren't really competing. Whereas this is the end of the season, we're coming into the summer. And guys are competing hard, which is really good to see. Mm. Always going to be very limited defense. <laughs> we, we already knew that. But they're playing hard. They're trying to get the highlight plays to the fans. That's all we can really ask Absolutely. for. Absolutely. But uh, at the same time, yeah, as you say, still very competitive for an all-star game. Ronald Blaine talking to a few of the fans in attendance. Of course, fans and players and coaches from... When is Around Ronald the country. Blaine, when is Ronald Blaine not talking to the fans? <laughs> He's a man of the people. Here is <laughs> Bailey. Bailey with the lob was looking for Abdul, and I don't think Abdul was going to get that with three blue shirts around him. Of course, Abdul nearly broke one of our chairs during the dunk contest uh, a bit oh, earlier on. He? <laughs> <laughs> Here he is on the ball now, backing up Andre nice. Gale. The feed... And Horman misses the dunk attempt. Here is Ollerin. Ollerin pulls up for three, and that's in and out. Newman. Newman was looking for options, but slows it down. Beautiful pass nice, to Abdul, nice and Abdul move. misses the oh, finish. Lucky. I thought he got fouled a little bit there as well. Unlucky. Andre Arasol certainly thinks so. Here is Harrison. Jenkins. Reese Pinnock into the game for the first time for the Reading Rockets. Ollerin a three, and Ollerin misses everything. He'll keep shooting that though. He's got the confidence at Thames Valley. He had the confidence all year to do what he wanted on offense. And it's great to see him have such a breakout year. And some people might, if you're eager-eyed, you might see that uh, Elias Pullman is wearing a jersey with T-Rose instead of his second name. T-Rose was uh, a dedication to a friend of his that got him into basketball. It's Jeremiah Jenkins. <laughs> Shoots and scores from downtown. That takes Jenkins to eight points. Taylor's leading all scorers with nine, though. <laughs> Didn't even recognise he hardly scored. Had to get in the, the, Hemel, no, no. the Hemel thing again. No, no. Well, you did say from the start, I'm going team pink all the yeah, way. Yeah, I was so. honest. I was honest. <laughs> Here is Newman. Hafiz also has a bit of a lesion with Hemel as well. Oh yeah, no, a he former played, Hemel he, player he, in his own right, especially he did half during the season with us. Yeah, especially during the lockout season. Here is Newman, shot clock reset, and here is Blaine for two.
He loves it, Blaine, doesn't he? This is Jenkins. Literally... That is his favourite spot, but misses it. And on the follow was Olleren. This event is for Ronald Blaine, isn't it? He's getting the crowd involved. He's getting his teammates involved. I it's also it. it's also for Elijah Bailey as well. He's getting a bit flashy at the moment. That's what we like to see, and that's what we want to see. I think that's what the fans want to see as well. And Jackman comes back in, and Fiz Abdul will take a seat. So Johnson's gone big now with Orlan on the floor. Team Whelan are still quite still quite small with their mm. lineup, so I reckon they'll start pumping it inside to Orlan. Jenkins, from Jenkins, big three. No good on the follow, Ollerin. So Andre Gale's guarding him. Let's see what happens. Here is Newman with Suave and Rye booing from back home. Here is <laughs> Pullman. Pullman gets it nearly got it to go. That'll be on Reese Pinnock. That'll be his first foul. You notice how, since I commented, they've not commented once. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Have you blocked them? That's good. <laughs> I can't do that. No, that's a shame. <laughs> they were like it all year. Did it on Instagram. <laughs> did it on Twitter. Of course, Aaron Wright, a deserved league MVP this season. Just an incredible campaign for him. And co-MVP alongside Taylor Johnson, who swooped you know, three of the four of their MVP awards available. As... He was a pleasure to have around, Aaron. Uh, it's yeah. a shame he's listening right now, and I'm going to say some nice things about him. But he was an awesome player, but an awesome person. Absolutely. Uh, and a huge reason for our success this year. Incredibly humble as well, is what I found about him. In the uh, it might have been to brief, you. brief might times. Have been to you. <laughs> I, I, only, I didn't speak to him. I spoke to him briefly a few times during the season. Here is Newman. Finds Bailey. Bailey fakes Pinnock that's, and gets in a mid-range jumper. That's Sam Newman at his best. Coming off a pick and roll, looking to pass to an open teammate. That's beautiful basketball right there. Jenkins, Jenkins loves it. Jenkins with the step back gets it's it to fire. go. He's Jeremiah Jenkins on fire right now. The Reading fans down below enjoying themselves. Three for six from downtown so far for Jeremiah Jenkins. They pulled it right back, Team Wheelands. Only an eight, yeah, eight point game now. And it's Johnson coming back in and Arisol. Jeremiah Jenkins leading all scorers right now with 11 points. First foul on Victor Olerin and Elijah Bailey going back to the line as so Andre Arasol comes back into the game and Elias Poorman takes a seat. I always find this interesting, especially in an all-star game. If Bailey misses this free throw, he can't come off. <laughs> so does he miss Yeah, no, it? exactly. Does, does he, he miss, miss on, on purpose? purpose? <laughs> Let's see. Otherwise, he's getting subbed. He's oh, he it. did. <laughs> That's smart. He knew what he was yeah. doing. Oh, and, <laughs> and, no, there's, the, and anyway. there's the turnover. <laughs> they knew, each He's team, they, it's like they planned it. As Taylor Johnson comes in, and as you mentioned, Elijah Bailey will take a seat. You see as, Jordan May stepping on yeah, the floor Jordan as well. Yeah, Jordan May of Team Newcastle checking into the game. He shot a deep 40% of the shot from three this year. Absolutely, Off yeah. nine attempts a game. He was, li he was literally had the license to shoot as soon as he crossed that halfway line. A fantastic uh, shooter this season, a native of Troutdale, Oregon. And what a season he's had under Mark Elderkin at Team Newcastle, a team that were, you know, effectively rebuilding with the loss of mm -hmm. David Moyer, Ronald Blaine and uh, Brandon Frederici and Nazobu Ramadan as well, if you want to include the Fab Four. <laughs> and uh, Jordan May has certainly stepped up for Team Newcastle and there is veteran play personified oh, there from Orlan Jackman. And Josh Gudemi fell, was, <laughs> fell hook, line and sinker for that. He did. That's something you as a coach, you can see it in your face. Yeah, you're not a fan it's of that, are you? Jackman. Like, <laughs> get your hands up, come on. <laughs> I say that, Hakeem fell for it twice when we he played him. He was going to say. Oh, yeah. And that, yeah, I wasn't happy about that. Use words I can't repeat right now. <laughs> Of course, Akeem Silla, uh, another player who couldn't uh, be with us today at the Rebound All-Stars. Uh, his wife gave birth, actually, back in December, mm -hmm. and Akeem Silla travelled between London, Hemel, and Paris. Everywhere. So he was, a, he was certainly a, a, a good traveller this, yeah. this season. Johnson, Team Johnson put a bit of a press on here. 
Olleren, the extra pass, May for three. And Blaine with the rebound. Uh oh. And Tim Brown, I don't think, is playing for Team Pink. And <laughs> and Ronald Blaine, the first person he is blaming is Orlan Jackman, yeah. who was the other side yes. of the court. <laughs> I think Arasol gave him a little remark there as well. I'll bring <laughs> the ball up next time. Pinnock to Gudemi. Nice. Gudemi oh, and another turnover. Back to back <laughs> the communication has been priceless so far <laughs> in this first half. It's an all-star game. I'm sure we can let them off, but if you were a coach... You'd be absolutely screaming right now. Well, I spoke to Dan and Ben before the game. I was like, how are you going to coach this game? And they were like, you don't really. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you in the fourth quarter they might. I think that's when they have their most fun is sort of after a timeout yeah. or stoppage of play where they can draw something up, get some back screens, get some lobs to the hoops, and that's when we, we can have some fun with it. I was just about to say Taylor hasn't scored in a while. He's due to at least take a shot. He had a back, he had a post yeah. up there. So I'm expecting a Johnson shot coming soon. Well, only one player from the women's game didn't register a point, so it okay. was fairly well spread out. We're down to just the final four in players that haven't scored so far. That is Andre Arasol, Hafiz Abdul, Josh Gudemi, and Jordan May. So with their scoring prowess, I'm sure they will register yeah. at least a point sooner than later. Gale, a three. Yeah, it won't take long for these elite scorers to start stepping up. Dre Day in Southampton. Newman looking to respond. And Gudemi <laughs> with the rebound. That miss will delight Aaron and Seth, I'm sure. <laughs> uh -oh. All the way. Oh, oh missed dunk. <laughs> By Reese Pinnock, probably one of the quickest players in the league. Johnson. Johnson a three. Nice. And inside it goes, and Blaine again with the finish. Great find from Orlan Jackman. And a few of the <laughs> players on the bench again wanted a dunk. I think that's what Orlan hoped for when Blaine was bringing the ball up the floor, but <laughs> quite the opposite happened. <laughs> 4.22 remaining. Team Johnson leads 43-36 as Andre Gale and Victor Olerin take a seat. Raheem May Thompson, Troy Cracknell come in. Fis Abdul and Seth Hall into the game for Team Pink. And Blaine and I think Newman take a seat as <coughs> there he the is. floater there from Johnson. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Right on cue. First field goal since the first quarter for Taylor Johnson. Cracknell. And that came off a foot. From here, it actually looked like it came off uh, a bit higher, but I'm not an official, I don't know. <laughs> I just got word that officially every seat in the house has been taken up. All 450 seats have been taken up and now using extra seats along the baseline near where the media table is. So what a fantastic accomplishment. And we had a near full house for the women's game as well, which was brilliantly received. Here is Johnson. Tough move from Taylor Johnson. Doesn't get the layup to go. Here is Cracknell. A bit of room in inside. Uh oh, here we go. And here is Jackman. Jackman chooses not <laughs> to dunk it home. Oh, <laughs> and who led the booze? It was Ronald Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the booze were actually from the Worthing end as well. And the Worthing fans down here as well. Yeah. Oh, dear. Uh oh. Cracknell, or excuse me, Pinnock. And Reese Pinnock, who had a great season with the Rockets, as Johnson with a burst of speed. He's so good at that. He's so good at attacking off the move and finding those little narrow gaps and finishing at the rim. Season high, 41 points for Taylor Johnson this season in the National Cup final in an incredible display against Derby in Manchester. Nice. Arasol with the reverse. That Mottis hasn't called a timeout yet. I wouldn't be surprised if he calls one soon to have a bit of fun with a play or something. Cracknell with the up and under. Play really increasing and really getting quick. And what a year he had for the Reading Rockets. Oh, fantastic. Hall. And Gudemi with the rebound. They started off very slow, did the Reading Rockets. They lost, well, I think it was one of their first five encounters. 
before really rebounding well, no pun intended, obviously being an all-star <laughs> game, and got to the playoffs. Of course, an absolute classic against the Hemel Storm in Hemel. What's that? On the follow was there's that, Jackman. There's that block from Raheem May Thompson. Averages two a game. What an unbelievable defender. And there is May Thompson at the other end. Final two minutes. 51-42 in favour of Team Johnson. Arasol. Abdul likes to shoot at the top. And Gudemi with the rebound. Shoot May, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he wanted to shoot that. Gudemi will shoot it. In and out. And Seth Hall and Hafiz Abdul fighting for it. Stolen, though, by Gudemi. And Jackman oh. gets it back again. Uh -oh. And... <laughs> oh, Taylor Johnson with the miss layup. <laughs> Arasol walks back for three and hits. <laughs> We're just missing Afis, Seth, Josh and uh, May now, and that will take all the scorers off. That's been the, the really plus point of this rebound, All-Stars. Everyone has been involved. Everyone's gotten after it. Cracknell answers for three. <laughs> Final minute of the half. Andre's laughing. He knew he knew he shouldn't have given him that much space. <laughs> Johnson dancing around. Here is Hall. Oh, nice. Hall with the fake and May Thompson with the rebound. Ball is batted around. May Thompson still has it. And a foul has been called. And nearly, it's actually, I think that's the first team foul on Team mm. Johnson compared to four from Team Whelan. We've got an interesting sort of opportunity here. Because team, team Whelan have the ball 44 seconds on the clock. Do they go for a quick shot, try and get a two for one? Let's see. They've got to. Here is Cracknell. 20 second differential there between shot clock and game <clears throat> clock. There's Cracknell there for is. three, but he misses it and it'll go out of bounds. So now that question can be reverted back to Team Johnson. Still a lot of time left. They're trying to get Seth that bucket coming off a stagger. <laughs> Here is Kai Walker. Beautiful move. Nearly got it to go. And Kai Walker will go to the foul line. And you know, for players who have like massively improved this year, Kai Walker certainly won them. Of course, played predominantly for the Div 2D team the season before playing sparring minutes on a, a stacked Solent team that year and has really stepped up and become a leader for this year's Division One team. Yeah, absolutely. Madison, Madison and Paulman got a lot of attention and Bessard. But Walker did the little stuff that other people, um, other people who know the game really well appreciated. Offensive boards, great defense and always guarded the opponent's best player. So here's Sefo on the ball. Will he, so will he get final, his first points yeah, of the game? We're down to the final seconds of the half. Seth Hall slowing it down. Are they trying to try? It's like a big moment, this, as <laughs> Seth Hall almost being oh. double teamed by Whelan and Gudemi. Abdul, the extra pass. Johnson, oh. not, not enough time. And the... <laughs> That, that cheer came from the Worthing fans, but that's no, no comment here. But either way, the end of a really entertaining first half. Team Johnson leads 55-47. Taylor Johnson leading the players with 13 points. A couple of players on 11 points. Uh, Elijah Bailey off the bench for Team Johnson. And on Team Whelan's side, 11 for Jeremiah Jenkins. I think it's everything we asked for. High scoring, highlights, lots of different people mm. getting different touches and players when they do come on the floor are able to show their talent. So I don't think we could have asked for much more. As a coach, probably have asked for a bit more defence, but we already knew that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, expect to see another high scoring affair in the second half. Well, you could see, might see that in the second half, I guess. You know, it gets a little more competitive, a little bit more physical as, as the game goes on, but you never know what will happen. So it's half time here at the Solent Sports Complex. One love for the two university students who work so hard. Um, Kip, it's all yours, 47.55 in the favour of Team Johnson. Yeah, you said it, 55.47. Uh, two Team Johnson here in Great Hat. Yeah, it was uh, pretty awesome to see. Man, these guys moved that ball around. 
so fast. They are flying up and down the court, just putting on a show. Like, they seem, seem to uh, like be a bit scrappy at times, missing a few shots, but the scoreboard doesn't say, say that at all. No, not at all. I mean, almost every player, just like with the women's game, almost every player has yeah. posted points of some kind, whether that's, you know, even free throws or, you know, some mid-range, whatever it is. Yeah, 100%. Everyone's contributing. And two of the guys who I'm shocked that haven't scored are uh, Jordan May and Seth Hall. Two three-point specialists who we saw in the three-point contest earlier. Jordan May won it, set home, narrowly missed out in the final, but it was awesome as well. Both of them haven't hit, hit yet. They've been having their three-pointers, but I think they used them all up earlier. Yeah, maybe, maybe, you know. Uh, yeah, maybe they, maybe they burnt out a little bit or something, yeah. but hopefully they have a, what, another few minutes of their halftime break. Yeah. So if they make the most of that, maybe they'll come out shooting in the second half. I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm sure, I'm sure that these guys are too good not to hit. At least one three-pointer. <laughs> yeah, like we were saying earlier, there was a reason why they were chosen for exactly. the three-point contest. Like, yeah. Come on. But now, it, yeah, it's been awesome. Johnson, Johnson's team got out to a massive lead at one point. I thought it was maybe the start, of the end of the first quarter, start of the second quarter, and I thought, wow, okay, this could get uglier. It was, I think, it was 31-13 at some point. And I thought, oh, okay, we're looking on a blowout, but. Credit to Whelan's team, they've come back incredibly well. Jenkins has led the way with Cracknell. Cracknell's here a few threes. They've played really well. But it, Johnson's team early on, they did get out pretty fast. Yeah, they did. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. They, like you say, I thought it was going to get a bit ugly. I thought they were maybe pulling away. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then we saw, like, like we said earlier, you know, if, if it got like that, then it would bring out the competitiveness. 100%, you know, whether yeah. it's, if it's If it's too big a gap or too close, it's going to get competitive. Yeah. You know, you don't want to get shown up at an all-star game. I think as soon as that point has starts to go, the losing team always goes, all right, we're not just going to be throwing three pointers on fun now. We're going to close that gap, and then we'll suffer an air battle again. And that's how it's kind of worked, because Johnson's team did get out a bit, and they were like, oh, OK, let's have a bit of fun now. Um, the, you know, the gap is now down to eight points. We don't seem how they have closed it. So. Yeah, like you're saying, you know, the, these guys are here to have fun, but what they consider fun is shooting threes, is, you know, making dunks. They want to win. Winning is fun for them. So yeah. we've, we've got to expect to see more of this in the second half. Although, speaking of three pointers, I think, you know, we have been somewhat surprised to see, like you say, Jordan May and um, Seth Hall yet to score. But still, even the rest of the players, the three points have, you know, not really been dropping just yet. No, no, but they, they will come. And what, I've, and what we also said pre-game as well, we're going to see that chemistry from Johnson's team, and we've seen that throughout this whole first half. Sam Newman and Johnson linking up pretty, very well. We, we said that pre-game. We've seen it on the court. Newman's been throwing that ball around pretty well. He's, He's got some pace on those passes. It, like, I'm not sure how their hands are even how to control that ball when, when the ball is flying around that fast from some of those passes. These guys, they're pretty talented to be able to keep it under control while moving at those speeds. Yeah, yeah, very talented. And uh, I mean, Kai Walker as well, last year's dunk contest winner, throwing down a dunk. Uh, in, I, I think it was the first quarter that he did that. Yeah, I accidentally missed that. The uh, pizza arrived and I was uh, <laughs> scoffing my face and, and then I heard a big cheer and it was Kai Walker there. It was in his home court he's doing a massive dunk. Yeah, he was, he was definitely showing, you know, why he was chosen as a judge for this year's yeah. dunk contest. Yeah, because he, <laughs> he think he'd show it himself. There's been a few boos when the, the, some of the lads haven't gone for a dunk. Some of them have gone for a layup and said, we want to see those dunks. And, the crowd has been booing, the DJ has been booing, the, it's even the teammates have booed when sometimes a dunk hasn't hasn't gone ahead. So I think that will probably maybe be in their half-time team chat as well, going, hey, go for those dunks, because that's what we're here to see. Absolutely. And, and also something we mentioned earlier about Hemel Storm and Worthing Thunder on, on Team Johnson, it's yeah. kind of that, you know, that big split with the two Hemel players and the three Worthing players. Well, they're leading 55-47, so yeah. I guess any worry about them maybe not getting on so well. Yeah. That, when, that when, that, when that five was on the court, 
they were unstoppable. There wasn't any stopping them. John said that as well in the commentary. You know, when those five are on the court, there's almost no one in the, there's not another five in this league that could stop them, or even in the British Basketball League, they would go well in there. So, you know, when that five is on the court, it's going to be hard for Whelan's team to stop them. But it's an all-star game, rotation is happening, so Whelan's team, they're in, they're in with a shot. Shot. What do you think might happen in the second half? Do you think Johnson will pull away with it again? Or do you think uh, Team Wheeler will keep it tight? I, I hope Team Wheeler comes back a bit, but I can see Johnson's team running away with it a bit. If, if they come out with their starting five again, it, they could start to fill a gap, and then maybe they will start having a bit of fun again and the gap will close again. I don't, I don't think it will be a blowout, but I can't I can see jo I can see Johnson's team losing this. No, no, yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, but like you said, I, I really do hope that Team Wheeling continue to make it a big game, big close game. Yeah, so we are just a couple of minutes left. We've had all the kids back out on the court, showing what they're made of again. It's, they've been here all day since about one o'clock, crying basketballs around, cheering on all men and women. They've, I don't know if there's a ball here that isn't signed now, but everyone's been getting their, their basketball signed. So it's been pretty good. Players are back out warming up. This is two minutes before the second half begins. But yeah, what a show it's been the whole day, really. It's been pretty awesome. Yeah, it's been fantastic. We were speaking earlier about how Solon won the, um, you know, the award for best game day experience for the WNBL. And I mean, they're showing that today because so many great supporters, I mean, granted, some of these people might be coming from around the country, some of them are their favourite players, but, you know, this is a great crowd here in South America. No, I really can't wait for it either. So I think we're going to throw it back to John in the commentary booth at this point to take us through the second half. Stein group, fellas. Stein group. John, how do you find that first half? It was. Well, first, first off, we're in the commentary box here, and I swear I think the crowd, the uh, the viewers have just seen me scoff a pizza. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. That's why I sat down. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> However. It's been a great first half, absolutely. <laughs> Team Johnson leads at 55-47. It's been entertaining. The crowd have gone. Oh, no. Team, you're going to stack up. That's fine. That's fine. And we have uh, double staggered. Our co-commentator today, Michael Darlow, completely destroyed. Two individuals who are going to remain nameless. We are told, I am told, it's not about the certain contracts. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> but right. it's been a, a very hey, entertaining first half. And as you said, do it. before we went to a break at the half, it all promises to be a really hey. thrilling conclusion hey. to what has been a really great day of uh, all star basketball. I think what we're going to see now, we're going to see the competitive juices of these guys come out. Like they've had their fun in the first half. Mm. At the end of the day, all of them want to win. And I think we're going to see some high competitive Absolutely. Uh, plays. Just going to say the um, group chat as well. It looks like it's a Hemel storm party. <laughs> oh, grief. Keep the comments coming. It's great to have you all on board. And whoever you're following, if it's a player, if it's a team, wherever you are across the world, get your comments in. Let us know where you are, what you're doing, how you're watching this game, except for uh, Aaron Ryan, Seth Suave. <laughs> Here is. I'm kidding. Get your comments in, guys. Here is Gademi to start the third for Team Whelan, down eight. Make that five. As your captain, as your captain, up captain Whelan comes good for, for three points there. And Jordan Whelan, you know, had a long conversation with him at the start of the year, just says he's, in, he's back enjoying basketball a little bit no, more. No disrespect, of course, to his playing days in the British Basketball League, but 
you know, mixing work and basketball is, is never easy, and he had to do that himself, uh, working in, uh, in Manchester, living in Warrington, and obviously driving to Bradford Dragons training twice a week. So it's tough for him, isn't it? But he's, he says he's enjoying his time with the Dragons, and he's enjoying being back in the National League. And it's just another example of this league growing. Mm. We've got players of Jordan Whelan's calibre um, competing on a weekly basis. It's fantastic to see him being in this all-star event. There's that Newman-Johnson connection yep. on the backdoor cut. And there is Whelan again. And you see on the first play where Orlan was uh, guarded <laughs> by Gademi. Gademi's arms went straight up. He's not falling for that. <laughs> Johnson off the back iron with his three. Taylor Johnson gets another bite of the cherry. Round the back pass. Finds no one but Seth Hall on the other side of the bench. Taylor Johnson, five for 10 right now, five for 11, excuse me, from the field for his uh, 15 points. And Johnson steals it off Gademi. And now Johnson off to the races and he lays it up and in. And Sam Newman nearly stole it off the inbound. Just scores so efficiently, Taylor Johnson. Leading all scorers, 15 points. He's going for that MVP again. Here is Jackman. Jackman decides not to go inside, pulls up for three, and connects. Just two players away now from everyone scoring, Josh Kademi and Seth Hall. <laughs> and and there's Jordan play. May from downtown. He was joking with Dan Watts um, before the game about in the university competition they had, Dan Watts pretty much face guarded Jordan the whole game. And he said he's looking forward to a bit more space today with the other talent, <laughs> with the other talent on the floor. Here is Cracknell. May. Whelan. Sort of half-hearted defence from uh, Taylor Johnson oh, yeah. there. Thought we had Gademi's points there. Yeah. Even Taylor Johnson wants Josh Gademi on the board. Here is Newman. Johnson. Play a little bit more methodical here. Tend to shoot for Taylor Johnson. Taylor Johnson, a step back three over May, hits it. That's the exact spot. He had a four point, had a four point play here against Solon. Cracknell responds in kind. Right back at him. Now it's a case of let's see what you've got. Here is Arasol. Will he respond? Decides to kick it to Abdul inside. Abdul to Arasol, Arasol nice with fake. the runner. Nice fake. Here is Cracknell. Cracknell a three. That's off the back iron. May Thompson with the board and fouled by Newman, who didn't look too impressed. When another, does he ever look impressed? another, yeah, absolutely. Another <laughs> veteran play from Raheem May Thompson. And you know, we talk about Sam Newman having a, a great season, led the league in assists with uh, just over seven assists a game and averaged 12 points. And one, one thing that we've not mentioned with, with Hemel and with Sam Newman this season, one of the most underrated guards, but actually deaf in one ear as well. So a lot of the plays that are run for him uh, have to be hand signals. And that just illustrates the skill set that Sam Newman actually has. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people would see it as a sort of a detriment to his play. He, he, it doesn't bother him. He, he just gets on with it. Yeah, so a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the plans that Drew and I had at the beginning of the year, one of the key things, we wanted to make sure all our players had a signal, um, which made sure two senses were ticked off. Mm. Uh, a sight and a sound. So it helped Sam and helped the rest of the guys as well. Would explain why he ignored me in Manchester. <laughs> if that's the reason you want to go with, we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, do you know what? I, I, I'm not going any further there. <laughs> here is May. I'm giving it, he's giving me a lift home, so I've got to be, <laughs> I've got to be nice to him. Okay, this here is, is Walker. Oh, I thought we were about to get his second one. It was good defence from Cracknell, much to the fans' disappointment. Yeah. I think they wanted Should Walker. The yeah, I think they wanted uh, Walker to elevate and detonate, but. Here is Johnson under the basket over Cracknell, a turnaround on and the follow. Kai Walker, again. Offensive Kai Walker is battling, and there is huge Johnson, fan. a huge runner off the glass. Rainbow-like floater for Taylor Johnson. <laughs> He's moved to 22. 22 points for Taylor Johnson. 
Well, I can now say that no player in rebound all-star history has won back-to-back -back all-star <laughs> MVPs. I can now say that as it's the second annual. <laughs> yes. So Taylor Johnson might win four MVP trophies this season. He's certainly in line for one. Gudemi nice. rattles in a mid-range yeah, jumper. There's Gudemi's two points, just needs Seth Hall now. Get to Seth Hall so on now, the floor. So now everyone from Team Whelan has registered a field goal. Arasol. Arasol. <laughs> that came off Troy Cracknell's foot in a, in a big way. What's incredible is it's a sellout crowd, but there are actually still people still coming back and coming in, which is absolutely phenomenal. And a few of the uh, is that, players. Is that Chris on security now? <laughs> <laughs> He's done all the jobs Chris today. is, yeah, Chris is actually a doorman. <laughs> Give that guy an SIA license. Here is <laughs> Olerin loses the ball, oh, no. as does Walker. <laughs> Here we go, Seth Hall's on the floor. This is what we wanted. So Seth Hall and Ronald Blaine come in. Arasol and Newman will take a seat. So for those of you that are not aware, you are going to be made aware, Seth Hall is the only player that has not registered a field goal or a point in this game so far. So once Seth Hall gets off and running, that's everyone accounted for. Blocked by Blaine off the uh, layup attempt from Cracknell. Good sportsmanship there from Blaine and Cracknell. Acknowledging that. I'm sure Seth will come up good soon, Seth Hall. He's an elite scorer for uh, the Hoods this year. It was a key part of their offense. Ran the show, hit big shots when needed. And here it's he only is. a matter of time. Here he is on the ball, but gives it up. Here is Blaine. He's open. Blaine to Johnson, oh, the up and under. Oh, oh. That was pretty. And he's cheering to the crowd. That, that got the fans on their feet as Cracknell goes the other way. I can honestly say I did not teach him that. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with me, that play. Come on, let's get set for that. Look. Your your key was the uh, the corner three pointer, wasn't yeah. it? There's Blaine. I my foot on the line, so we gave it to Here is Whelan. Whelan driving at Hall. Whelan going inside, count it, and a foul. Two captains, back-to-back -back plays. Jordan Whelan, who averaged 21 points on 44% shooting for the Dragons this season. Of course, actually a former Manchester Magic junior back in the day. Played 35 minutes a game as well. Yeah. Five seasons in the British Basketball League. Three of those were for the Manchester Giants. And the brother of Patrick Whelan, who plays, of course, for the Leicester Riders. I think they're playing right now. They are playing right now against the Bristol Flyers, yes. Shameless promotion when this game is going on. <laughs> <laughs> As a whistle has gone, Elijah Bailey of the Loughborough Riders going back to the foul line for Team Johnson. That's a second foul on he's Jordan Whelan. He's given it baseline. Oh, he's given a baseline. Everyone was getting ready for foul shots there, but OK. <laughs> this is the game we wanted, though. It started off very heavy scoring for Johnson. Whelan are back now. Here we go. Oh, well, I got excited there. Ollerin did not want Kai Walker <laughs> to dunk that home, so Walker with the fake and the score. Jenkins, Harrison. Of course, Harrison, a two-time rebound all-star. Oh, nice. See, Walker, there he is again, dude. Yeah. I mean, keeping, the, keeping the ball alive. Johnson got the ball. He could have easily have lost that. Fair play. Kai Walker, if there was an unsung hero award in this uh, all-star game, he'd probably be a front-runner for that as well. Here is Hall. I think the fans, yeah, the fans <laughs> want go. it as well. Hall with the oh. layup misses it. <laughs> Come on, Seth. Seth Hall now zero for six from the field. Jenkins a three. That won't bother Seth though. He recognizes right. that not shot will come down. And pointing right in your direction as he hit that as well. Oh. And at the other end, Elijah Bailey from downtown. What have you been saying to Jeremiah Jenkins? <laughs> <laughs> Cracknell a three. They're all flying in. This is what we wanted, the crowd again. And a more. steal from Ollerin. He'll spot up for three. And the cold streak there we go. hits, Shoot and it. there is Hall. <laughs> Shoot it. Come on, Seth. 
We're getting all I've, excited. What's going to I've never known a commentator to be so <laughs> wanting a player just to score. I might text Dan. It's a three-point well. game as well, actually. So. What we want? Yeah. Have this and a blowout. <laughs> 76 73, and there's Jenkins. It's the summertime. Well, it's getting there. It's a sunny day in Southampton today. Here is Jenkins again, nine on the shot clock. Pretty sure this is going to go. Oh, I expecting that to go up. The extra pass, wheeling a three. Big rebound for Kai Walker. And here comes Taylor Johnson. Taylor Johnson almost went round the back but lost the ball. Here is Pinnock, the lob. Oleren couldn't finish. Hall. Yes. Hall will put up a get three it. and yes. get it. <laughs> and the fans happy. on their feet. <laughs> Seth Hall with a three. It was only a matter of time. Jenkins connects at the other end. So Ooh. now everyone is at least registered a point. The two Reading players leading it for Whelan. Cracknell on 19, Jenkins on 17. And here's the man on 24. Taylor Johnson, here's Walker. Oh, nice pass. Walker looking for Blaine. Blaine wanted it to go. Of course he did. <laughs> Has that wry smile on his face as well. He knew that was uh, not his ball, but he was challenging Tim Brown, the referee. <laughs> so Johnson off the floor a bit now. I'm expecting Bailey and Seth to try and take over the scoring responsibilities for Johnson. Here is Jenkins. Jenkins. Feeds Gale. Ollerin all the way and misses the dunk. <laughs> Bailey. And Bailey goes all the way. And Elijah Bailey, who's really got after it in this game. 12 points so far for Elijah Bailey off the bench. Only played 10 minutes so far. And he will go to the foul line. 156 remaining, and that's a third foul on Thames Valley's Victor Olleran. As Elijah Bailey makes the first. And of course, uh, former Loughborough assistant coach and now Div 3 head coach. Of course, one coach of the year, Liam Jefferson in attendance today. Here is Gale, Gale driving. Here is Ollerin, Ollerin with the floating layup, you can say. Bailey's feeling it now. Bailey in two minds though, whether yeah, to go for the three or to drive. Ball. Hall. And he's got his abilities though, he's right to, he's right to have that scorer's mindset. Oh, Pinnock got excited there. Yeah. <laughs> As did Pinnock. Here is Oller in a three, that's long, and here comes Poorman. Poorman driving, feeding Walker for two. Jenkins, Jenkins down the lane. Cheering <laughs> Zach Powell, he's running and teammate. Zach Powell, yeah, right there, courtside as Seth Hall misses the oh, three. Nice or Sack Powell in the dunk contest earlier. 53 oh, nice. seconds left in the third. Bailey, <laughs> Kai it's Walker. On Five on the shot clock, Blaine off the back iron. And Pullman collects and scores. <laughs> Jenkins going to run the shot clock down. He's going to go for a quick one. Well, there's, 12, there's a 12 second differential between shot clock and game clock. Here is Pinnock. That's going up. Andre Gale a three. It is Dre Day here in Southampton <laughs> for Andre Gale. You've been waiting for that, have you? <laughs> My good friend Adam Masters was the originator of that. Okay. I have to let him take the oh, plaudits oh, and oh, Elijah straight. Bailey. Six seconds left. Out of his mind. Final seconds of the third. Who's shooting Gale. Shoot they oh. all want a piece. <laughs> Jenkins, Oller in. They all wanted it. <laughs> right 
by the Reading fans section as well. Matt Johnson right front row with a shaking of his head. He wasn't happy with that. But either way, it's all to play for in the fourth period. 88-83, a good third quarter for Team Whelan. They actually took that 20 to 33 to 28. So not too bad. In fact, actually, they haven't taken that 33 because the... <laughs> The live stats is not updated, but they have taken that by a good margin. So all to play for in the fourth quarter. And Taylor Johnson leading all scorers with 24 to the players. Elijah's going to go one-on-one on one every time he gets the ball. Well, they're gonna keep and he's not going to pass unless he gets stopped. To showcase what they can do. Right? So stop it. Come on, young fella. <laughs> take the chart. I know it's an all-star game. <laughs> take, take one. Take one. He'll get pulled yeah, yeah, yeah. out. Well, right? thankfully, they, they're not they're actually showing it right now. So now. Otherwise, okay, uh, OJ's going to look to make something happen. The table's going to keep cutting. We've got to talk it up the whole time. All right? Let's go. So if you've joined us on the Rebounds Basketball YouTube channel, welcome everyone. Great to have everyone on board today celebrating the best of the Great to have fans from all across the country from reading from bradford manchester and uh the infamous let's go storm <laughs> run by good friend of mine fraz watching on from home as well and it says here that you're bossing it on the cocom so at least you're someone at least helping. someone loves you you're helping me a lot <laughs> <laughs> i need all the help i can get right here is newman See that, Arisol. see that Newman behind the back there? John <laughs> Bunnell, if every turn the ball over on a behind the back, John Bunnell find him five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Only if he turned the ball over, so he stopped doing it as the season went on. <laughs> John Bunnell, who I think is now back from his holiday in Spain. He's probably on another one. He's probably, yeah, I was going to say, he probably is having another one, isn't he? <laughs> With a good friend of mine, Graham Hiscock. Oh, wow. As Crab Bailey, Bailey of three, another one for Elijah Bailey. 20 points He's going for, for the Loughborough Riders star. Only four points behind Johnson now. Jenkins. Gale. Gale stolen by Jackman. And away comes Arisol against oh. the much quicker Jenkins. Bailey's going to pull that. Bailey of three. Wow. Oh, nearly got it. Feast. Abdul. Yeah, Feast is going to pull that. <laughs> Well, if He's right to shoot that though, what, he yeah. five last year? Five, yeah. five, three points, 34 points. He's a good three-point shooter, yeah, Afiz really Abdul. 35% for the season, Ah, Ollerin, up and under. I had the pleasure of coaching Afiz at the University of Hertfordshire for a bit. He was an absolute pleasure to have around and helped us get to where we are today, so very grateful for his service. Abdul Newman. Back to Abdul. Six on the shot clock, here is Newman. Out of time. Yeah, got a dance here, and Jackman misses the Six the runner. Here is Harrison Jenkins straight away for three. Ollerin with the <laughs> offensive rebound. Gale a three. Right now, Team Blue getting all the looks they want. Ollerin again, and Jackman with the rebound. All and Jackman who. Average nearly a double double last season. 16 points, nine rebounds for Worthing. And uh, had 18 points, 14 rebounds in the playoff final against the Storm. That's another caliber player that we have in this league that we should be very proud of. Mm. Someone like that competing for, our, for Worthing Thunder on a weekly basis. And fans get to see that guy in, the, in our league. We should enjoy it. Absolutely. Whilst we have it. Commonwealth Games gold medalist in the 3x3 competition in Birmingham last summer. And he's actually promoting the 3x3 as a turnover there. Jace Harrison couldn't quite find Andre Gale. And as said, though, Orlan Jackman promoting 
the 3x3 tournament and the 3x3 brand alongside um, many players for or many people alongside for Basketball England and going all across the country as Afis Abdul puts in a three and a header from Andre Gale to Victor Olleran. <laughs> But yeah, the transformation for Orlan Jackman from the traditional five and five <coughs> on five to three x three, and now really going and promoting it is absolutely fantastic. And of course, it is coming to three x three season now with with the off season. Many players will be taking part. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Team Willen needs to be a bit careful here. Johnson got up by uh, twelve points, not long left. Need to make sure they stay in this game. Absolutely, the momentum is all with Johnson at the moment. A second foul on Reese Pennock, so Elijah Bailey again at the line. Both both coaches have got their captain sat on the bench. They'll probably finish the game. So let's see when they come back on the floor. Should be a nice end to the All-Star game. Yeah, well, both uh, both captains have been here pretty much the entire day, taking in all the action here at the Solent Sports Complex. And another turnover for Team Blue this time as. Jeremiah Jenkins couldn't hang on to the pass right in front of Team Johnson. One thing I am looking forward to when this uh, wraps up is the on-court mics. Of course, uh, a few coaches and a few players are all mic'd up and okay. there'll be the results on the <laughs> rebound uh, social media pages. That should make for very interesting viewing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that, actually. <laughs> So what Ben Stanley's wearing one right now? Yeah. I think Ronald Blaine's got oh, if Ronald Blaine's Ronald wearing Blaine, one. If Ronald Blaine <laughs> has one, then oh goodness help us all. Dan Watts, I think, has one, but the beard is kind of hiding it. <laughs> it's probably in the beard. <laughs> Here's Jenkins driving at Newman. Inside to Gudemi. Jackman rebounds. Here is Abdul. Abdul to Jackman, and the Worthing one-two punch connects. I think if Whelan failed to score in this possession and Johnson ran in another one, I think Ben Stanley might need to call a timeout here. Well, that's a 14-point game, yeah, so... Calm things down. Harrison. And Pinnock misses the three. Another rebound for Jackman. He's bringing Cracknell on instead. Bailey wide open for three, and that's off, and Jenkins with the rebound. Stanley, Here is Stanley, rather than calling a timeout, is actually trying to bring all his big guns back on the floor. And here comes Taylor Johnson. And Taylor well. Johnson, yeah, right on the money. <laughs> Taylor Johnson will come in and Ben Stanley putting on his big guns, as you say. Raheem May Thompson, Troy Cracknell and Jordan Whelan will okay. check in momentarily. Abdul and a foul. I think it, once he was going for the spin, you could sense that Abdul wanted the dunk, but... Uh, Instead was held on to for dear life and he still finished. And that's the risk Whelan had on the floor. They had a bit of a smaller lineup, both Orlan and Afis were on the floor. Kademi's guarding Orlan, so some so a smaller guard would have to guard Afis. Mm. And they exploited that mismatch there and got the M1. But they've gone back bigger now. So Cracknell, Whelan, Thompson and Kademi, much bigger lineup to potentially finish off the game. I don't think anyone's in foul trouble. Um, apart from Olorari who's sitting down. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's on four. Down anyway. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Here is Arasol. There's so many things I had to bite my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey, an offensive foul, I think, is going to be called. Or has it been called? It has, yes. <laughs> I'll try Arasol. Having a joke with Elijah Bailey, of course, uh, Arasol, a former Loughborough man himself. See, Taylor picked up Cracknell there. I think about two months ago, he'd never have done that. He would have left him on the floor. <laughs> Five fifty-five remaining, and it is 101.87 in favour of Team Johnson. Here is Gudemi putting the moves on Abdul. I'm sure a few of these boys have got MVP honours in their mind as well. We've got Taylor on 24, Elijah Bailey on 23, and Cracknell on 19. Gudemi for three in the corner, and Troy Cracknell had an open lane there as well, but decided to pass it out. Abdul to Johnson. Abdul the three. And Jackman another points. rebound. Here is Johnson under the basket and gets it to go over Whelan. 
Here is Cracknell straight away for three. Money. Oh, Troy Cracknell's come to play today. Troy Cracknell now on 22 points. Arasol for three. And Gudemi rebounds. Here is Cracknell. Cracknell again. Again. <laughs> 25 for Troy Cracknell. And Ben Stanley's just cancelled his timeout. <laughs> That's all you needed. Well, it's a 10 point game. You know, it's still all to play for. More than four minutes left. Jackman putting the moves on Gudemi. Jackman backing him down. Good defense from Josh Gudemi. Arasol a three. And away again come the Rockets with that man again, Troy Cracknell. Will Dan call his first timeout if they score again, will him? Well, the defensive player of the year, Andre Arasol now marking Cracknell, but Jordan Whelan now hits for three. Come on, Dan, call that timeout. Let's have some fun with a play. <laughs> That's all you want, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> and pink to win, obviously. Here we go. Johnson a three. Taylor Johnson going a little cold at the moment from the field. Orlan Jackman at the top. Here we go. Ball bag Whelan around. Another stop for Team Blue. Oh, Whelan. Right. Oh. And Jermaine Thompson <laughs> couldn't hang on to it. I think he thought about letting it in before he actually caught it. I think, yeah, I think he thought that Jordan Whelan was going to shoot the three, and I don't think he was expecting the pass. <laughs> Now as Ronald Blaine checks back in, Hafiz Abdul takes a seat. 3.46 remaining in this game. Johnson, quick change of pace, and here is Blaine, a mid-range J, that's money. Jordan Whelan putting the moves on Blaine, goes right past him, misses the layup, bit too much English on it, he wanted a foul. <laughs> Bailey, round the back, Jordan Whelan looking for a cheeky steal, and I think that was a travel from Johnson, but a slight bit of worry there for uh, assistant coach Michael <laughs> Darlow there, even though it is the off-season. Yeah, we've got four months, he can recover. <laughs> Hopefully in those four months he can get a haircut as well. <laughs> there was a joke that uh, went on social media that he should become an an official ambassador for Slazenger. <laughs> of course, he's been wearing Slazenger armband, uh, headbands all season long. And he's wearing one today as well. Yeah, Hemel, Horman inside. Hemel's local JJB. <laughs> uh, their sales went up quite a lot. Sports Direct will thank him later. Has a timeout has been yeah, sorry, called. There are other providers, obviously. <laughs> I didn't think JJB were in business. Oh, yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. I used to work for them as a kid. Anyway. That's probably not why they're in business. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, jokes aside, 256 remaining and Team Johnson leads for 107 96. It's been a game where the pace has broken down quite a lot, but it's gotten a little chippy and right now. Absolutely, it's nothing, yeah, a lot of time. Biggest lead of the game was 21 points for Team Johnson. And with uh, the BBL playoffs still in, in action, it's great to see Plymouth uh, City Patriots guard LVC Dusha here assisting Ben Stanley today. Of course, Mark Elderkin of Team Newcastle unfortunately couldn't be with us today. So LVC Dusha, ambassador for Always Balling, has stepped in and it's great to see him here today. Dan Watts just went to a 2 3 zone. <laughs> well, I'll be. And there's a zone here as well. It's a 2 3 zone here as well. As Bailey misses the three. And now it's back to a man. I'm trying to get Taylor on a post up. Taylor wants the ball. Seven to shoot. Taylor on the spin. 
runs into trouble. Bay, uh, Blaine a three, rattles it in. Shot Ronald Blaine. A clutch bucket at this time. stage for Ronald Blaine. Inside, beautiful pass to May. Finish. Pretty pass from Jeremiah Jenkins. And a great finish under pressure from May. Johnson, a tough shot and Elijah Paley will go to the foul line, joking with Troy Cracknell, who commits his first foul. Troy Cracknell, 25 points. Is he going to miss the second one again? So he stays on the floor. He's got MVP honours up for grabs. A lot of MVP candidates you have to believe, actually, right now, with uh, the one-two punch of Reading with Jeremiah Jenkins and Troy Cracknell should... Team Blue get the job done, but right now it's looking like Team Johnson is getting a bit comfortable and Taylor Johnson has 26, Elijah Bailey has 25. And an outside bet maybe is Orlan Jackman who has 13. Final two minutes. All the way was Cracknell, misses the layup. Great defense there from Kai Walker. Here is Blaine, big three, gets it! Ronald Blaine from downtown. And that's a clutch bucket, a dagger bucket. As Jenkins goes all the way, on the follow, May Thompson. Running out of time. And now for the second straight rebound All-Stars game, both teams have hit the 100 mark. And the ball goes out of bounds. And it will be a Team Whelan ball. Is Dan going to use a timeout today? <laughs> he didn't use one in the first He didn't half. use one didn't in the first. In the <laughs> I don't think he's going to need one now. He's sitting there scratching his beard. He's fine. <laughs> I think he uh, he just wants these players to have fun. Obviously, he wants you know, the game to be competitive have, and to win it. But uh, I think... Uh, <laughs> he's, just told, he's just told Kai Walker to face guard Jordan Miller. <laughs> Inside to Whelan. Whelan gets it to go under pressure from Walker. Jordan May's having flashbacks. <laughs> Less than 90 seconds remain. Johnson to Walker inside to Poorman. Is that Solent connection? That's Solent connection in full flow here as we enter the final minute. And, and gonna give it. May goes all the way, and it counts. It's just too late, I think. Bit of a continuation a bit of play, and Jordan May goes on to nine. That's a first foul on Kai Walker. But it looks like back-to-back -back successes for Team Johnson, who was repping the blue last year and is now repping the pink this year. Of course, had 37 points last year. It's... Not quite that amount this year. He's, get, he's trying to get the ball. <laughs> he wants the ball, there though. There it is. And there it is. He's got it. And he's... <laughs> Jeremiah Jenkins tried to foul, but Jenkins... But uh, Johnson puts it in anyway. That could be his MVP right there. Him and uh, Elijah Bailey having a little contest. Elijah Bailey is uh, on the bench. I don't think he'll take any further part now. <laughs> I think from the time you said it to now, I don't think Dan Watts has actually stopped stroking his beard. <laughs> I'm just jealous. I would never <laughs> have anything like that. So a first foul on Elias Poorman. Here is Jenkins nice driving take. all the way. That's nice tough. Oh, Unfortunately, didn't get it to go. Here is Walker. Walker keeps his dribble alive. Taylor's going up. And Taylor Johnson again! <laughs> Takes him to 31. 31 points for Taylor Johnson. Whelan from way outside! Well, they're all having fun now. Elias Poorman round nice the back. Oh, and there wow. is Johnson! I could be playing a game right there. That was nice. <laughs> Whelan again from way outside. Cracknell with the offensive board, goes for the corner three. <clears throat> Is the ball going to be dribbled out? I doubt it. There's I doubt it as out. well. Seth Hall. Oh. And 
but Taylor Johnson will say thank you, I'll take that, and then another. And Jenkins with the final possession, in and out, and that ends the rebound all-star game for the men and for the day as the team Congratulations to Team Johnson on their win. They defeat Johnson Team Wing and 126 to 100. Must be said Every lady and gentlemen, boys and girls, you've been an amazing crowd. We hope you've had an amazing game. Two short years number from last season. A deserved win for the team the MVP is. an entertaining but you know good natured game, should we say? You could and, uh, by the sigh you just gave, you're yeah. not a fan. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. Absolutely. And it's, it's not a surprise, but Taylor Johnson has just been both named team. MVP. So that is four MVP <laughs> awards <laughs> this season for the one, the only Taylor Johnson. I'm sure Rusty Johnson is back home in the States watching on very proud of what his boy has accomplished today. But what Kemmel Storm have accomplished as well in, in a fantastic season led by Aaron Rye, Taylor Johnson. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thank you very much, sir. And, uh, Thank you. It's been a fantastic year for everyone involved. Thank you. Um, it's been an honour to be a part of Thank and you. to create history Thank with such you. a nice group of people and Thank a you. family that goes beyond the people that you see on the court is really nice to see. Only a certain, only a certain few will realise the amount of time and effort that people put into it and it's and so great that we could reward them. Absolutely, and uh, we will grab Taylor Johnson in just a moment for a post-game. I know Ray Apafuri is uh, trying to grab him. And Taylor Johnson's a very hard person to attract when it comes to post-game interviews. No one knows that better than me. But... Um, <laughs> But um, as the kids now take to the floor and enjoy the basketball court before we uh, shut the place down, it brings an end to a fantastic day of basketball here at the Solent Sports Complex. And you know, we've been treated to seven hours of fantastic basketball from start to finish. It's been absolutely magnificent today. It's everything we could have asked for. The, the three-point shootout, the dunks previously, the women's game, and then the men's game right now is everything an all-star event uh, should be about. And then it's great to see all these kids on the floor shooting right now, hopefully be inspired by what they've just seen. And I think also the credit needs to go to yourself. Oh, no, 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 no. And your team, <laughs> a huge thank you to you and your team for putting this on so everyone can be able to tune in no matter where they're from. So, and the Pro-Am as well. Mm -hmm. However, you know, Chris Hughes wanted to join Sam in you know, promoting the best of the National League. And he's doing that with this rebound at all Star game, much like what Sam is doing. Help making people make aware of what is going on in this country mm. and the opportunities fans have to go and watch high-level sport. Um, they, can, they can literally go down and watch a very high level of basketball no matter where they live around the country. Absolutely, and um, I'm trying to find where Ray is actually, but you know, for a guy that's wearing a, <laughs> yeah, a hat as big as him... On the far baseline. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I see him. Hopefully we'll get uh, MVP Taylor Johnson in just a comes. second. But, um, I'm disappointed Chris didn't go on his tiptoes on that picture. <laughs> he crouched down. Why did you crouch down, Chris? He was, he was channeling his inner Alia Al-Shabri. That's what he was doing. <laughs> so 
we are moments away and the man with the hat, the legendary Ray Akpafuri, who will be in Division 1 next season, we hope, is with MVP Taylor Johnson. Take it away, Ray. Back at it again. Yeah, it's been a little bit. Did it, though? Yeah, well, or maybe not. <laughs> I think they're having a joke. What's that? You enjoy the season. Oh man, it's so much fun, man. Yeah. So much fun. Let me know when you're ready, man. Let me look at the camera and we look at you. We are back again and I'm here with the legend himself. Emil Taylor Johnson, how are you feeling, man? I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. A little sweaty, but I'm feeling good. That was a lot of fun. So much fun. Talk to me. How, talk to me through that game, man. How, how did you feel throughout that, man? Oh man, I, I felt, I was confident. Felt like I did a good GM job picking a good team. And my team made me look really good early on. And then blue team, they got hot. They got back to us. It was a close game, um, but it was a lot of fun. Felt good. But what was that like as a spectacle for, you know, British basketball? Right? Oh, it's awesome, man. Having the having some of the best players out here, the top players all in one place. Like that's a competitor. That's like really cool to be around the best. And then it being after the season, an all star game, just so much more fun hanging out, having fun. And talk to me about a historic season for you guys. What oh. was that side been like? It's been uh, amazing watching it from the sidelines. You know? Man, it's just starting, just starting to sink in a little bit now that the season's over. Um, just having a little time to reflect and really enjoy it. Um, so cool, such a cool thing to be a part of. And I'm really grateful that uh, the season went the way it did. Really grateful. Another MVP to add to your collection. What are you gonna do with this one? Oh man, that's that's cool. That's really cool. That's fun. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe try to get a shelf or something and <laughs> put it on, I don't know. Cool man, hey, always, always nice to see you man. MVP, Taylor Johnson. Appreciate it man. It's all good man, see you soon. Yes sir. He's talking. And the rebound, all star classic. And it will certainly go down for Sorry. a very long time in what it was a fantastic performance from him. But for now, on the south coast, from me, John Hobbs, take care and enjoy the rest of your summer. So there we go, that's our event for today and what a final game that was. Absolutely brilliant final game, yeah, lived up to expectations. What a way to end this absolutely awesome rebound all stars event. 126, 107, yeah, yeah. I was right, 126, 107. Big scoreline. Big, big, big scoreline, and yeah, really good. <laughs> Yeah, re really, really great thing to be a part of today. Yeah, sorry, I'm just getting hit by basketballs that are flying around <laughs> everywhere. It's on but the no, first yeah. time today. No, but yeah, awesome. An amazing performance by everyone here. Johnson, he really he put the points up early and then was maybe a bit cold in the third quarter, but in the fourth quarter where it mattered, where he had to come clutch, he started hitting, dropping threes everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And Troy cracked him, man. Yeah. What a player. I mean, yeah, he, he kept the Blues in it. He kept he kept Team Whedon's team right there in it to the end. And we, we said they closed the gap. It was a two-point game at some point. We, we said they wouldn't go away, but yeah, they, they weren't able to just bring it back or, or take the lead at all in the game. But all credit to them, they still came out and played really well. Yeah, I think he, he, he really did a credit to himself and his team. Um, yeah, I mean, like I say, you know, uh, Team Johnson, full of Hemel players, full of Worthing players. So really, should be quite understandable that uh, you know it was, you know, you know, it was their day and it was their win. But absolutely, you know, a great showing from all the players on the team. Yeah, 100%. I think Johnson summed it up in his interview. Then Ray, he 
said he was a good GM. <laughs> I think he picked him. I think he drafted and picked himself a good team to get the I, win today. Yeah, I don't I think, think he picked a better team. Yeah, I think he thought a bit about the chemistry and he thought what he could do. But it was a great event today. Cheers to Chris and cheers to Sonar Events and that's us done for the year. That's you done for uni. <laughs> that's done for uni sweet. Yeah. So and that is our events for today wrapped up and well done to everyone involved. Cheers.
Pressure's on today. Why, what's happening today? So we're up for an award. For today's game? Yes, for the board cup. So we're kind of making sure everything's... everything's How are we doing, Nasta? OK, the next award is the Sport Award. Now, this award is given to the station with the best coverage of a sporting event. It's just a fact, a Premier League game has nine camera sport, typically. Sona, Trump bat, and they have uh, double digits, I think it's about 10 or 11. In about 45 seconds, um, it's going to be half time. So we've got this 10 minute half time coming up in literally 20 seconds to get up and do the hoop cams and just hope to God that they work. So I hope so. I, I really, I think we've done it to be honest. I don't want to get too confident. No, but no, if, we, if we look at our competition, yeah, I think and what they're producing yeah, we're, compared to what you're producing. Yeah, I think we're, you know I mean? we're ahead, so. And the winner for best sports. Sonar Events. <laughs> This is Sonar's first ever, like, proper NASA. Proper NASA. So, yeah, wow. Thank you very much. All the crew have put in so much work, so well done to all of the crew. You've all truly earned this. Wow. The next award is the Directing Award. Oh, yeah. Now, this is awarded to an individual and a station that showed an outstanding piece of directing in a single production or episode. Now to present this award is the creative director for BBC News. He's a big deal. It's Chris Cook. Hello everyone. And the gold award goes to Sonar Event. No, seriously, I, I wouldn't have done it without everyone over there. To look at where we've come in a year, it's been incredible, and um, I'm shaking, I hate this, but oh my god, um, yeah, no, genuinely, thank you to every single person over there, everyone at the Kestrels, um, everyone at the uni, thank you, no. and people are genuinely surprised. That is the best. You're totally clear. We're up there. 